Brothers and sisters, settle, settle. I come to you this day with great news. My starry disciples, our search is nearly complete. For decades we've toiled and scoured and fished about this wretched continent for that ever-elusive tome, the Grimoire Eternus, the book to end all books, the storied and long-fabled... The Necronomicon! Yes, Sister Halo, that's, that's the one. Next time, maybe you let the actual cult leader speak its eternally horrible name, yeah? Thank you. The, uh, <clears throat> the Necronomicon! Yes! No doubt some among you have questioned its very existence. Our search has been wide and our labor great, with as yet no return. Well, brothers and sisters, it may be that we have come upon its actual location. Uh, Brother Bright. Gregory. Gregory! We talked about this, man. This night, brothers and sisters, our men... And women? And women are on their way to retrieve that tome as we speak. Is this not what we've been looking for since our establishment is a legitimate death cult? Yes! Is it not in our official membership charter? Yes! Is it not we who should be the first and only to lay our hands upon it? Yes! Shall we let the abominable butcher or other lesser cults get their stinking paws on our glorious bounty now that it is so closely within our reach? Yes! No! No! no. And with the Necronomicon finally in our hands, nothing will stop the Haunter from regaining his true form. No end to the work! No end to the work! So, where is it? We have found him, brothers and sisters. The man who will lead us to it. We have found him, and we watch. We watch. Read all about it, sir! Hurricane Herbert! Storm of the century! A storm? Hmm. That's the least of my worries. Change. Everything's changing. Always changing. What's a Joe supposed to do? You take a new case and it's all you can do to be prepared for whatever it throws your way. The only thing you can know is whatever it's tossed at you won't make any kind of sense but up against the last thing. It's the change, you see. I've been hired to locate some kind of ancient book. Supposed to have inside of it the kind of stuff makes the Joe's guts turn salt and sallow. Real type mystical mumbo jumbo, which I guess explains the weirdo cults popping up all over Darkham. You know something's left to center when the folks hiring you want to keep themselves all secret-like. Cash is cash though, and I could really use the milk. That something doesn't change. I put some weight on my man in rare and forbiddens. The kind of pressure makes a Joe's stomach jackflip, and he points me at this dark and ancient library. Dark and ancient? Huh. What's not dark and ancient in Darkham? Damn. Most times, the new is just as bad as the old. Sometimes worse. Well, here it is. Miskatonic Library. Not the, uh, friendliest place in town. And this town and friendly ain't even in the same zip code. Darkham. Horrible hellhole. Never thought I'd stick around when I came here, 23 years ago. She was local, young and unstable, and I was probably too much to handle. Then she left me with an empty bottle of 81 proof and a broken heart. Uh, my gut instinct was telling me I could look at everything a second time, glean extra information that might be useful, or not.
Not nearly as badly lit as the name would suggest, but more than compensating on the creepy scale. Surprisingly colorful here and there, but I didn't let that fool me. The town had been bubbling with occult activity for a while, and I was about to look deep into it. Looks like some kind of gargoyle, swallowed almost whole by those dead vines. If my detective cylinders aren't misfiring, that's gotta be the librarian. Evening. Good evening, sir. So, how's things in the library business? Uh, you know, can't complain. It's a living. Those uh, electronic books hitting you folks hard these days? <laughs> nah, not really. People don't tend to read much at all anymore, so uh, it's all the same to us. Hmm. Interesting library you got here. Is it old? Yeah, pretty old. It's old, huh? How old? Like really, really old. You might even say it's ancient. Ancient, huh? How ancient? Well, it was established by one Jeremiah Orn in, uh, let's see, um, 18... Uh, a really, really long time ago. Huh. Thanks for the info. Sure. The name's Katype. Don Archetype. Here to see about a book. <laughs> well, you've uh, come to the right place. Yeah. It's called the uh, Necronomicon. <laughs> Do you have it? Oh, that book. Yeah. Uh, uh let me check. Yeah, they're all lent. All versions of it. There's more than one? Why, sure, you've got your... Oh, wait, you're talking about the real Necronomicon, aren't you? Yeah, no, sorry, that doesn't actually exist. Doesn't exist, huh? My employer seems to think otherwise. An ancient grimoire full of arcane writings that could summon powerful demonic entities and potentially fold reality onto itself? We don't really carry that kind of stuff here. Chances are, it's nothing but a myth, Mr. Katype. You, uh, wouldn't happen to be intentionally trying to conceal it from me, would you? I'm just a librarian, sir. As far as I know, the real Necronomicon is a myth. Sorry to disappoint you. You haven't been the first to come and ask about it, and you probably won't be the last. Definitely our most popular, inexistent book. Who else has been interested in it? Everyone, from excitable teenagers to these freaky cultist types that seem to crop up everywhere in the last few months. Just when you thought Darkham couldn't get any weirder, these clowns come along and prove you so wrong. What can you tell me about these cultists? Well, they come in all shapes and sizes, can't really tell them apart. I mean, it's not like they waltz in here dressed up in ceremonial robes or anything, but you can tell from the way they speak, they're not all there. Hmm. No such thing as the Necronomicon, you say? Mind if I, uh, snoop around your collections a little while? <laughs> I don't mind, personally. You'd have to talk to Mr. Orne about the rare books department, though. At the moment, he's really busy with some new arrivals upstairs, so you'd have to wait a while. But, sir, waste of time, really. That book is just a legend. An ugly, ugly legend. Aren't you a bit young to be a librarian? <laughs> Look, I can tell you come from a, a different era, but between you and me, that's straight up ageist. Oh, really? And that uh, different era business ain't? 
<laughs> Touché, Mr. Kadipe. I'm a student, it's a job, it's quiet, it, it pays the bills. Aren't you a bit too old to be a student? <laughs> I like the cut of your jib. That's something your type would say, right? My type? Now look here, son. <laughs> there it is again! Ugh. I didn't catch your name, Mr... Kerwin. Buzz Kerwin. That's an interesting surname and an accent that I can't quite place. Yeah, I'm, I'm half Romanian. My mom was born in Transylvania. I kept her family name because it sounds cool, you know? Never get teased because of that? <laughs> no, no. For Buzz, on the other hand? <laughs> Plenty. All right, Mr. Kerwin. I guess I'll have to wait. It's a dusty old book. Its title is really hard to read. It's the popular book section. Apparently, all Daniel Maroon novels. You know, Vatican mysteries and all that. It's like that strange tentacled beast is watching me. That's where folks get strange, ancient diseases by flipping the wrong pages with their bare fingers. Rows and rows of moldy old books. For some reason, they seem particularly unattractive. They really went out of their way to make this place as creepy as possible. There's a thing on the doorstep there. Looks like a package. It's this thing I found on the library's doorstep. Looks like a package of some sort. It's this thing I found... I found this thing on the doorstep. Were you expecting a package? No, not really. Let's see it. There is a note here. Oh, it's for you. For me? What, what does it say? Too long have you meddled in our business, Katype. Here's your chance at a bright future for a change. <laughs> is it me or is this thing... Ticking. Mr. Katype! He's gone. Was that you making all that ratchet current? No, Mr. Orn, sir. Someone set off a bomb in here. I was about to call the police. Nonsense! You call this a bomb? You should have seen Dresden, son! Now that was some firepower right there! Clean up a little, will ya? I... Uh, okay, sir.
It's Mr. Katype's shoe. Well, I feel like I should call him Don now that we've been through this together. It's Don's shoe. Well, at least that thing took some damage. I think it's a little loose now. There's a weird glow emanating from behind it. What the... I just realized how long I've actually wanted to do this. Don sends his regards, ugly. Is... Is this what Don was after? This looks nothing like the other editions. Creep factor just went up 200%. Who would hide it up there? And why? You're coming with me, weird book. Well, I never thought I'd actually say this, but the Necronomicon feels weird in my pants. Oh boy, what an evening. Think, boss, think! Don's been kidnapped. The police are a bunch of corrupt and incompetent tools. What do I do? Well, Orn can close up for the night. Things are way too messed up to stick around. The best thing to do is retreat to the bus cave, clear my head, and see what this strange book is all about. <sighs> okay, safely home. What? What the hell was all that about? Is this really happening? Am I really talking out loud to myself? What is this book? God, I need to stop talking to myself. I sound crazy. Kitty, should I open this thing and see what's written in it? What do you say? <sighs> You're a lot of help. Okay, might as well take a peek. Ia, Ia, Kashaptu Zidinjir Kampa, Per Adonai Methatron. What the? This is genuinely becoming really scary now, and I'm all alone. What do I do, Kid A? God, I wish you could talk back for once. Okay, I know I've been saying everything felt weird before, but that was really, really weird. Something feels very different now. As much as I hate agreeing with you, something does feel very different now. I know, right? Maybe reading that out loud wasn't such a good idea, huh? It sure seems so. Right? I mean... Whoa, 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 wait! Are you actually talking back to me? Took you a while, huh? <laughs> I feel like we were in a much more productive place a few moments ago. You know, analyzing the situation. Maybe working toward a solution? You talk! I stand corrected. You seem to have a firm grip on the situation. But how? You just read an incantation and then wished out loud that I could talk back. So... This is wrong. This can't be happening. This is wrong! Wait, I know. I'll just find the spell or whatever it is and reread it and, and reverse this. That should work, right? You're not really expecting any kind of relevant answer from me, are you? Right. I mean... Oh. Oh, what the... It's gone! I can't find it anywhere! I had... This was definitely the page I read it from. But there's different text on it now. What the... Should I read it out loud? Wait, sorry, I wasn't considering your point of view here. Do you want to be a... Talking cat? Please don't take this the wrong way, but that's a resounding and definitive no. I just don't want your kind of problems, man. My deal is sleeping, eating, and generally being decorative. I can get behind that. Okay, here goes.
Shunu li mutuma anaku lu ublui. Zi dingir anakanpa. I wish Kitty would go back to normal. Did it work? Meow. Uh, ma. Darn it. Can't even meow right anymore. I think it's safe to say it hasn't. Oh boy, this is a problem. This is a problem. Um, by the way, Kitty, nice to meet you. We've known each other for years, dude. Kitty, is that what I call you? Uh, haven't you been doing it for years already? Dumbest name possible if you ask me, but I don't care either way. I don't need one. So, are you gonna um, stick around? No, I'm gonna rock the earth like Kane in Kung Fu. You'll stick around and undo this. You really think I want to be like you for the rest of my life? That's gotta be racist or something. We're not even the same species. We need to find a way to reverse this, so get to thinking. Yeah, you're right. I'm on it. It's Kitty, my cat. She talks now. Your cat? Um, just a figure of speech. Gonna grab this for a while. That's been there since Lemon left for that esoteric retreat. I'm frankly afraid to touch it. That's our tiny fridge. Hey, it's not completely empty. It's a can of Dr. Fisher, produced exclusively with fish materia water. That ensures my lips will never go anywhere near it. Gonna grab this. It's our oven. I'm deathly afraid of it. Long story. I'm not sure I can bring myself to open the oven. I'm a weak, weak man. My tablet. It's been charging for two days now. No use. It's dead. That's Kitty. My, uh, Kitty. Yeah, I know. Not the most imaginative name. Totally understandable. Really? Yes, really. If I were called Buzz, I'd be reluctant to get creative when naming anyone, too. Touché, pussycat. Nah, I don't need it. They're not toys, okay? I don't play with them. Well... I don't like this new situation at all. Completely useless right now. Scenic Transylvania. That's where my roots are. That's Ron Dilbert. Ron can't help us now. Beyond this impenetrable portal adorned with god-awful decorations lies Lemon's Shangri-La. Lemons locked the door when he left for that esoteric retreat, and of course he has no phone signal or internet. Great. Kitty, I'm a little stumped here. I have no idea what to do next. We're clearly in over our heads. Maybe we should reach out to someone who knows more about this black magic thing. You've got a point. Hmm. Wait, what about my roommate, Lemon? He's my roommate too, remember? Yeah, he does know a lot of people. A lot of suspicious people. They're really into his homemade cookies, for some reason. Suspicious people is definitely who we're after. I've seen him write down names in this little notebook. Maybe we should look for it. 
He's away on that esoteric retreat thing, though. No way to reach him. We're gonna have to find a way to get inside his room. Lemons locked the door when he left for that esoteric retreat, and of course, he has no phone signal or internet. Great. I can squeeze under doors. Lemon knows that. He made this door particularly unsqueezable under, remember? Oh yeah, he did do that. It's the dreaded Necronomicon! Kirei, this might be a weird thing to ask, but remember when I brought lady friends home? Yeah, those were rare enough occasions that I can remember. Oh, I see where you're going with this. I have no interest in that. All the kissy-kissy sounds are just... ugh. I tune them out. Whew, <laughs> good to know. What's a bit harder to tune out are the audio olfactory clues to how your digestive system works. Or rather does so poorly. What? Ugh, just don't fart around me anymore, okay? Oh, right, yeah, sorry. Kitty, any idea where Lemon would hide the key to his room? Probably the last place you would look, dummy. Like? I don't know, man. Search your fears or something. I'm not sure I can bring my- Hey, Kitty, think you can open that oven for me real quick and take a peek inside? Sure thing, boss. As soon as I grow opposable thumbs, you're gonna have to man up and do it yourself. Come on, Buzz. You can do it, dude. I, I can? Yeah, it's just fear. Stupid fear. Yes, and fear is the path to the dark side. Fear leads to anger. Anger... Open the damn oven, Kerwin! Yeah, yes, yep. I did it! Hey, and there's Lemon's key. Oh, and there's a cookie in here. A suspicious one. Yeah, I think I'll take it. You know, for sustenance. Ugh, I would not recommend you eat that. Yeah, I'll take it either way. I have a feeling somewhere inside this horribly over-decorated piece of furniture lies what we're looking for. It's locked. I know it's locked. It's always locked. It's one of those lick... Uh, ooh, 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 tiny cute guitars. Oh no, my band days are long gone. Oh, that's gaudy. Hey, looks like there's something under this. What do you know? A pair of scissors. Of uh, all things whose purpose is to be lit up, this one scares me the least. I can't just snap my fingers and produce fire, unfortunately. I think it's supposed to be a fertility idol. Kinda scary if you ask me. We thankfully have no need for it. It's a book Lemon left open. Let's see here. 
page on the left says, a compass is a magnetized pin floating in a solution. It's not the 1700s anymore, Lemon. Jeez, what a Luddite. The page on the right says, Invisible ink. Use lemon juice to write secret messages on paper. Only you will be able to then read them by bringing the paper close to a source of heat. Note, make that a source of mild heat, not open flame. Hmm. Yay! It's lit up and stinking up the place. I don't want to burn my delicate fingertips. It's a book Lemon left open. Let's see here. Page on the left says, A compass is a magnetized pin floating in a... All right, Kitty. I have a feeling the notebook we're looking for is somewhere inside this locked closet. I can't really think of a way to open it. Couldn't you just randomly combine some household items into a makeshift key or something? I'm sure I could, but I was thinking maybe you could shoulder this particular burden. <sighs> Let's not make a habit of this. Ugh, this patchouli stink is giving me dizzy spells. Oh, here it is. I haven't done that since I was a kitten. Still got it. Hmm, the pages are all blank. What am I missing here? Let's moderately heat this baby. Yes! It worked! Lemon, one too many cheesy detective novels. All right, kitty, now let's see this list here. <laughs> Woo! I think I got it. How's VG for all your supernatural needs sound? And there's the address, we're practically neighbors. It's the best option we've got so far. Uh, there's something I'm not sure I mentioned before. This detective that was looking for the Necronomicon, Don, got kidnapped right in front of me. Oh right, you've mentioned it, let's go. But we've gotta try and rescue him. <sighs> Alright, do you know who kidnapped him? I guess we have no lead yet. Lead? Sam Spade over here. You know how you humans always stereotype us as being selfish? Uh, sorry about that? Don't be, because in my case, that's exactly how it is. I'm sorry, but I could give a kitten's fluffy tail about your detective friend. My main worry right now is my own predicament. Why didn't you call the police or something? Oh, Darkham PD, only the most corrupt and despicable organization in town? Makes these cultists look like fuzzy bunnies nibbling on baby carrots by comparison. No, we're on our own. Interesting imagery. Anyway, your friend Don's on his own too. It's a catty cat world out there. How about we keep him as objective B, all right? Whatever makes me A works for me. Let's roll, Marlo. All right, kitty. Looks like we're on a quest together. Any cool battle cry like words before we embark on it? I'm a little hungry, and I'm afraid my fur's going to get all matted in these filthy streets. Sorry, you were saying? I was thinking more like time for, you know, whatever adrenaline-pumping music kids listen to these days. Time for Bossa Nova! Let's get on with it. <laughs> Rare. A weird-looking kiddo in the middle of the street. Hey, little girl, what are you doing in the street by yourself this late at night? Hey, big guy, what are you doing disturbing peaceful citizens for no good reason this late at night? Let me try that again. What's your name, kiddo? If you must know, it's Basilla. 
Are you sure you don't mean Priscilla? Do I look like the kind of person who can't correctly pronounce their own name? It's Priscilla! What's your name, smarty pants? Um, Buzz. Buzz? My dad really loved his electric shaver. Hey, I was just genuinely concerned. Well, don't be. Drop my fishy and that's lying up there, and Grandma let me come out on the screen and try to get it. But I can't reach it! Aren't your mom or dad around? Mom and dad moved to Fishmith last month. And we'll move there too. Soon. Not until I get my fishy! All right, all right, settle down. Can't Grandma help you out? Grandma's been taking her bath for quite a while now. Grandma says we'll go to Fishma soon. We're just waiting for this big bathtub we ordered to be delivered. Grandma can't go traveling without her new bathtub. All right, weird enough. You know, this just feels wrong somehow. I'm a dark-haired little girl, standing in the middle of the street at night, holding a doll by the hand. Scared yet? Scared? Nope. A little bit creeped out by how irresponsible your grandma is, though, I'll give you that. So, you're just standing there, huh? People tend to do that in this kind of game. Yeah, I always wondered about that. I just like to watch them, sitting there. In their little lies away. Okay. That ominous tower belongs to the local waterworks. Used to be you'd absentmindedly open this door and the whole of Darkham would be flooded. Back then, door. Now, wall. That sign keeps popping up all over the place lately. It somehow looks old. Wouldn't know what to do with it. Who has a fish doll? I think it's that little girl's fish doll. I can't reach it from down here. Hey kitty, how about you climb up and get that fishy for me? Well, you gotta ask yourself, Buzz. What do we stand to gain from me exerting myself in that manner? Uh, nothing for now, I guess. See? Don't anger me, feline. Come on, Buzz. You're embarrassing yourself. Don't you want to do it just to put a smile on that little girl's face? You mean that pale abomination? How about we have nothing to do with her or her face? How's that sound? Your heart is the tip of a glacier that was accidentally bitten off by a blind, evil old sea monster, kitty. Don't try to flatter me. It won't work. If they're trying to keep people away from Fishmouth, it's working. Ugh, never could stand fish. It's the door to the fishery. It's closed and locked. Christopher Valiant Street. Never heard of him. Man, that's one attractive dude. This picture of a male model? I feel like I need... I need to have it! Just to be clear, I am not picking this up for personal use.
It's that weird kid, Priscilla. I'm not scared or anything. I just don't... You, you talk to her, okay? That's Steve the Gargoyle. Oh, we go way back. He's down with the vegetation, son. He's into the herbs, bro. He's all about them weeds. Steve is the silent type. They wouldn't like each other. Mr. Orne really likes his library covered in spiky vegetation. A very intriguing looking book. Maybe I should take a closer look. A very convenient treatise on the order voodoo magic ingredients should be used in. Whoa, convenient to say the least. Mental note, sometimes examining items several times really pays off. I don't think I know what I'm looking for. Wouldn't help here. Not a clue why I'd do that. Void Smoker Alley. Never heard of him. That's Jeremiah Orne, Old Man Orne's ancestor. He's practically the father of the Miskatonic Library. It's a nice-looking blonde lady. Yep, definitely a nice-looking blonde lady. Hey there! Hello? Approaching the only women on benches at night, are we? Not interested. I'm sorry, miss, but I feel this strange urge to bother everyone I meet and ask a lot of questions. I have no idea what you're talking about. Uh, sorry, let me start again. My name's Buzz. Oh, that's just preposterous. I... I have a B-shaped birthmark. Nice uh, evening we're having, huh? Really? Why don't you just keep it original and ask for the time? I think I'm misrepresenting myself here. Oh, sure, sure. Gotta run. So run. It's really weathered, but I think it says park gate removed due to blasphemous activities in the area. Hop fence at own peril. We do not refund garments or pay for hospitalization. That's some ominous looking flora right there. I'm not a weeds guy. Thanks.
People really love plastering eyes everywhere. Did you know that the mere graphical suggestion of an eye can unconsciously make you more apprehensive? Can't. Don't wanna. What do you mean, some d who? Just Wikipedia, it, you slacker. The Baron's not to be trifled with. Aw, look at the cute voodoo dolls. Who would just leave them here? These dolls are probably already voodooified and best left where they are. No idea who this guy is, but his beard looks real tentacly. Is that a nose or a beak? Man, Darkham City Council is all weird when it comes to statue choices. I want nothing to do with this guy, whoever he is or was. Big D Street. No idea who this guy is either. Unless my eyes betray me, it's a taxi. A yellow one. Evening. It sure is. Do you know anything about this mysterious building you're parked next to? Look, kid, it's a taxi, not a guided tour bus. Get a lot of customers tonight? Not if you don't move out of the way, I don't. There's that blonde lady over there. Oh yeah, brought her here a while ago. What can you tell me about her? Man, that sounds creepy as hell. You an investigator or something? Nope, I'm just a friend. I'm a little worried about her, so I watch her from afar. Oh, friend. Right. I happen to have overheard what her name is. You know, taxi stuff, nothing creepy. Surely you know it too, since you're friends. I'm, I'm having a t temporary memory lapse. I'll get back to you on that. This small window somehow communicates with the interior. How cool is that? A warm reddish-orange glow emanates from its tiny opening. Um, hello there? Password? Password. Nice try, buddy. Even she can't squeeze in through there. They say the guy in charge is a real joker. I hear they've been having a bat problem over there. Anyway, I was wondering if you're waiting by this mysterious door. Oh, did he give you the boot too? He told me I just have to sit for a while and rethink what I wished for my husband. He told you? The gentleman, dummy. Oh, of course. So, what do you wish for your husband? Why, his untimely gruesome death, of course. Of course. I'm Margot, by the way. Nice to meet you, Margot. Can I ask what your husband did to make you homicidal? Oh, I'm perfectly convinced he's trying to murder me to get my money. Ouch. Wouldn't it be easier to just divorce or write him out of the will? Yes, I guess it would be. But what better way of responding to murder than with, well, murder? I'm never getting married. Say, 
You wouldn't happen to be a gun for hire, would you? I'm a librarian. Oh, all right. Yeah. Ahem. I happen to be an anything for hire. Want to make an easy buck? I, uh, sheesh, I really, I really can't this week. I have this cursed ancient tome and a talking cat to take care of, so... I get the feeling you're pulling my leg, Buzz. Oh, you'd know if I did that. I'm an undercover cop. Put him up. Psh. Yeah, right. Let me see your badge, officer. I left it in my investigating pants. Uh, we've got different pairs for different assignments, you know. Return in those pants and you're free to arrest me. Cleaners said they'll only be done by Tuesday. They got bad shining services too. I walked right into that one. I'm a... Uh, never mind. So the gentleman wouldn't help you off your hubby, huh? Something about not doing any literal harm and using the forces for good to balance out recent events. Blah, blah, blah. Did you try marriage counseling? That's where I got this address. Okay. Gotta run. So run. So about the blonde girl. Yeah? What she to you? I'm a friend. I'm a little worried about her, so I watch her from afar. Oh, friend. Right. I happen to have overheard what her name is. You know, taxi stuff, nothing creepy. Surely you know it too, since you're friends. Sure, it's my friend Margot. Huh. Guess you weren't lying. Well, might as well tell you. She dropped something on the back seat when she left, but uh, she was out of sight by the time I noticed. She's literally around the corner. Oh yeah? How'd you feel about returning this to her? Looks like a letter. It might be important. You can't get out of the car, take a few steps in that direction and return it yourself? This is a business, kid. I might lose a customer. I don't feel like playing the, the courier right now, sorry. All right then. Gotta scoot. Gotta run. So run. About that letter. Yeah, wanna help give it back to her? Yeah, sure. Let me have it. Good man. Say, you won't open it, will you? Do I look like the kind of fella who'd pry into the opposite sex's correspondence? I wouldn't know what that kind of fella looks like, thank God. Here you go.
All right, Margot, I'm gonna drop the act here. Charlie sent me. Charlie who? Charlie, your lover. That's who. Things are getting complicated, and he said I should take it from here. I need that password. Well, all right. If Charlie said so, the password is Fidelio. Fidelio. Okay. Now don't do anything stupid. Just stay put. I'm on it. Understood, Buzz. Oh, I do hope everything works out fine. Don't worry. I got this. Well, good luck in your endeavors. Goodbye, Buzz, and thank you. Um. Yeah. Sure. <laughs> no problem. Um. Hello there. Password. Fidelio. <clears throat> Everything about this guy screams voodoo louder than Jimmy would. That is quite the eclectic getup he's sporting. I know I'm supposed to be intimidated, but somehow I feel safer around him. Uh, hi there! Greetings, Wanderer, and be welcome! Welcome, huh? Place doesn't look that welcoming. You come seeking the help of the voodoo gentleman. You put up with the decorations. So, what do I call you? VG? No, that sounds a little bit too gangster. Voodoo gentleman will do. Thanks. Was that password part really necessary? It is best that I keep a low profile, lest the jackals tax me right out of town. Thus, the recommendation only access. By the way, who referred you to me? I, uh, I deciphered that ad in the classifieds? Oh, I do regret putting that out. I've been getting calls about fine leather jackets non-stop ever since. The voodoo gentleman? You do voodoo? I'm Buzz, by the way. Hmm, you do at least remember what you came here for, I trust. I remember all right. It all started when I found this book. Well, to make a long story short, I accidentally put a spell on my cat and now she's even more annoying than she was before. A spell, huh? <laughs> How'd you go about doing that, Harry? I used this! Vaulting voodoo fixins is at the... the... The Necronomicon in all its glory. Wanna have a look-see? No, 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 put that away. Th that thing should not be touched. Oh boy, oh boy. Uh, I'm sure glad I'm not in your shoes. Um, I, I can't help you with your cat, my man. Uh, there are some things even I don't mess with. But voodoo! Voodoo schmoodoo. That book is ultimate evil incarnate. Well, I for one wouldn't keep it in my pants pocket. Just saying. You are ruining voodoo for me. I hope you're happy. But my cat! Ugh, cats. We never did get along. What are the symptoms, pray tell? She kind of started talking. Oh, look, the cat speaks. Come one, come all, see the freak. She's really unhappy with her current situation. Oh, ye gods, I've had this nightmare before. Maybe a pinch, but there's no cold sweat. How can this be? It's real, witch MD. Well, crap. Uh, I, I mean, alas!
How could you tell that was the real Necronomicon right away? Most everyone imagines it all black, bound in human skin, bearing teeth. Only true initiates know it really kind of looks like one of those British sweater vests. You know, the ones with all the crisscross things. Yeah, why is that? I guess you sometimes just go crazy with the triangles and it just doesn't turn out as evil a design as you'd think. Still, the content more than makes up for it. Pleasant colors, though. Yep, yep, very eye-pleasing. Yep. What kind of operation are you running here anyways? One that stays away from messing with the old ones. But it's just like a personifying curse. Those should be easier, right? You'd think. Oh, and a friend of mine got kidnapped, too. You don't say. Something tells me it's also Necronomicon related. He was kidnapped while looking for the damn thing. I really wish I could help you out, but... Ugh. Was it a very close friend? We talked for like five minutes. So it was basically someone off the street. Aren't we all basically someone off the street? You sure are. <sighs> Can't you at least point me in some useful direction? Hmm, there is one person that could probably be convinced to delve into this kind of mess. Yeah? I was just getting into my intriguing plot development swing and you totally threw me off. Where was I? Oh yeah, there's this avid student of the dark arts, an undercover intruder into the Dagon cult, a dear, dear friend of mine, a man mad and passionate enough to wade through the occult mysteries of the Necronomicon itself. What's the matter, cat got your tongue? Did he just go there? Tell me more about this dark intruder dragon guy. Dagon, not Dragon. The terrible god of the murky abysses, the one who seems to have Fishmith in his clawed grip for decades now. Man, where do you get all this stuff? I am a student of the occult stuff, my greenhorn friend. Plus Wikipedia. So this Dagon's had Fishmith in his clawed grip for decades. He's the mayor, then? Worse than that, if you can imagine. But this is all hearsay, since most people have been just avoiding Fishmith for years and years. I haven't talked to my friend in ages. Different cell phone carrier? That, and little to no reception. About this dark student you mentioned. I'm really on the fence here about telling you more. This could be very dangerous. And men in red shirts are notoriously unlucky. Stop reinforcing the stereotype. Is this about money? Money? <laughs> no, I always seem to end up working for free anyways. Please tell me who the man is. Sounds like he's our only chance. It is with great difficulty that I even utter his name. You haven't yet. Not if you keep interrupting me. Are you sure you're ready to hear his worldly denomination spoken out loud? Hit me! I'm bracing myself. His name is Bob Olmstein. Bob Olmstein. Pretty sure that's what our building super is called. Waves of awe have been washing over me ever since I've heard you say, Bob Olmstein. Are you perchance making fun of Bob Olmstein? I wouldn't dare. So you're saying I can find Bob Olmstein in Fishmouth? Well, yes, but let it be known I am not advising you to go there. Doesn't look like I have a choice either way. Can you tell me how I can track him down once I get there? 
Last time we spoke, he was staying at the Finman house. Gotcha. Just remember, we don't go to Fishmouth. There are strange spiky vines all over this crazy place. It's an ancient voodoo chest. I can feel waves of eerie energy emanating from it. It looks firmly locked. To be honest, it's freaking me out a little bit. That skull on top of it looks like nothing I've ever seen before. It's an uh, issue of Bogue magazine. The headline reads, The Fishmouth Look. I don't want it. It creeps me out. Hey, look, it's a double-headed doll. That's strange. It looks both human and ichthyoid at the same time. Ichthy what now? Fish-like. He either died in the 1700s or the 80s. Sinister and appropriately illuminated. Hey, isn't that... That's identical to Lemon's Mask. I don't want it and it doesn't want me. It's a pineapple. Ananascomosis, if you really want to know. No thanks, I'm good. That looks like an authentic voodoo throne. That ish is bananas. It looks like a ship's wooden hull. Looks like a pirate sword. No need for that in this day and age. Looks like a beat-up microwave oven. Not touching voodoo-fied home appliances. That's an oddly shaped skull. No, I just disturbed the carefully arranged decor. Hey, these are Halloween skulls! Skulls are skulls, alright? Sometimes it's hard to get the genuine article. Nah, I don't need them. Boy, that is one ancient device. I guess it somehow goes with the ancient theme he's got going here. Hello, operator? I've never heard that one before. Hey, taxi! Take me to Finman House in Fishmouth. Yeah, that's real funny. Let's waste the cabbie's time with dumb jokes. No, I'm serious. Take me to Fishmouth. We don't go to Fishmouth. I'll pay double. You can pay four times the fare. It ain't worth going there. You think Darkham's been strange lately? Wait till you get a whiff of fishmut. So let's get a whiff! Money can't make me go there, friend. Them fishy folks will scare the scales off an anchovy. Look, I have this suspicious cookie. Keep that thing away from me. Some darn hippie fed me one of those about a month ago. I was seeing tentacles and all kinds of ungodly things for a week after. You don't say. Can I interest you in an ancient cursed grimoire? Nah, already got one of those. And it's full of my wife's special occasion dresses. 
I have this talking cat. We all gotta crush the bear, buddy. Amen, brother. What can I do for a ride to Fishmouth? Well, I do have a family problem needs taken care of, but, uh... Man, it's a heck of a doozy, let me tell you. I'm all ears. Uh... See, this cousin of mine, Ed, married a woman out of Fishmouth. Fishmouth, can you believe it? Name's Azanath. Anyway, ever since they got together, every time I meet old Eddie, I get this strange feeling he's, uh, he's not himself. Always shopping for groceries, never goes to the ball game anymore, general zombie-like complexion, lack of will to go on. That's pretty common from what I understand. Oh, you unmarried folks always piling on the stereotypes. No, friend, I mean, and I know it sounds crazy, it's like she's looking at me through his eyes. Like she's the one inside, right? Whoa, okay. So, where's he? Good question, buddy. I mean possession. That's crazy talk, I know, but I've seen it with my own eyes, man. Now, he ain't talking much, but from what he did say, he gets littler and littler time as himself every day. And I'm worried sick, man. Look, I don't know what your deal is. But get rid of Azanet for me, and I'll drive your butt to Fishmont like it was nothing. Quest unlocked. I mean, deal. Okay then. What can you tell me about Ed? Name's Edward. Edward Derby. He's my cousin. Supports the tentacles. Don't care much for light beer or garlic-based toppings. Thanks, that's very insightful. What can you tell me about Asenath? What's there to say? She's a creepy one, that's for sure. Looking like a darn fish if I ever saw one. I've been driving cabs forever, and I never heard of anyone else called Asenath in Darkham, so there's that. Hope that'll help you. Thanks. Okay, got it. Got a scoot. Voodoo gentlemen, I need you to help me help someone out. Oh no, whose life has the Necronomicon ruined now? N no nothing like that. There's this cabbie outside, and his cousin's body is apparently being possessed by his wife, Asenath. It's like he swaps bodies with his wife against his will. Wife swapping? That's crazy. Yeah, anyway, help me help his cousin get rid of this Asenath character. Hmm. Well, since I can't help change your cat back, I might as well give you a hand with this possessing business. Actual voodoo freaking magic? My special brand of it, yes. We will need to craft a personalized voodoo spell. You're getting a platinum package deal here, buddy. I fear a fetch quest is in order. You'll need a doll. Well, that goes without saying. Then you'll need something that cuts, chops, or severs. And finally someone... How can I put this... Attractive. We're not talking chopping attractive people's limbs off here, right? Oh no, I have one motto. Do no physical harm. Oh, oh, and uh, one more thing. You need to look up the order we will use them in. Found these scissors. Good eye. found this picture of a male model. A strapping young man. It'll do. Found this book called A Very Convenient Treatise on the Order Voodoo Magic Ingredients Should Be Used In. Think it might help? It might. Have you read it yet? Not yet. I'll get back to you. Gotta run. I'll be here, Buzz. 
Hmm, let's see. Okay, according to this treatise, I think the order we should use the items is someone attractive, doll, thing that cuts. Found this book called A Very Convenient Treatise on the Order Voodoo Magic Ingredients Should Be Used In. Think it might help? It might. Have you read it yet? Yep. Get back to me when you have all the ingredients. What do you mean, no physical harm? I only deal in figurative voodoo. Sounds like some new age hippie load of... Oh, you'll be a believer by the time we're done. You have some dolls around. Can't we use one of them? That's my private collection, Buzz. No touchy. But I don't know where to get a doll at this hour. Oh, it's easier than you think. Like taking candy from a baby. Gotta run. I'll be here, Buzz. Hey, kitty, how about you climb up and get that fishy for me? Really, Buzz? What's in it for us? Another doll in exchange for it. Your preoccupations are a constant source of wonderment and worry, but okay, we're quid pro quoing. All right, Miss Know-It-All, I think we need to have a talk about you helping out whenever I consider it necessary. Geez, fine. You were right this time, okay? Sheesh. So, from now on, you'll help out when I tell you to? Ask me to. And that's a maybe. Let's say I'll be more inclined to. Uh, I'll take it. All right, Priscilla, here's your fishy. Let me have the doll. Hmm. Deal, creep. This town, man. This freaking town. found a doll. You mean mercilessly ripped from the hands of an innocent child, don't you? All right, what do you want to call it? Asenath. Asenath it is. So, that was all of them, huh? Indeed it was. All right, now this is important. Which order should we use them in? Picture, doll, scissors. All right, here we go. Jambalaya! Um, okay, what just happened? Azanath just lost her head over some male model dude. I told you, I deal in figurative voodoo. Should have seen it coming. Do you think it worked? I know it worked. Thank you, VG. Enough respect, B. So, everything seems to have worked out in the end, huh? Well, not everything, but yeah, it's a start. Gonna go change Kitty back now. You do that. Please. See you soon. Not too soon, I hope. Heard 
from Ed lately? You. You're good. Nah, it was nothing. No, 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 no. You're good. You're very good. Just got off the phone with Ed. As an Eric left him for a male model. My God, I don't know how you did it, but you did it. <laughs> Thanks. So, want to go to Fishmouth? Want? No, but I'm a man of my word, friend. Get in. We're off to Stinkville. Hear that, kitty? Adventure awaits. I can barely contain my enthusiasm. Oh, you'll love it. Seafood as far as the eye can see. Oh, brother. Alrighty, here goes nothing. Ah, oh, where am I? What happened? That's the way out of here. Hey! You out there! Let me out of here, you dirtbags! Come on, who's out there? Hello? Nothing. So, this isn't gonna be easy after all. I started to take in my surroundings and bing, bang, boom. I was seeing salvation in every little thing that caught a glint. In my mind, they were already shaping into something that would definitely get these goons' attention. I was gonna do big, loud things with petty stuff. Like a poor country using scraps to send a rocket to the moon. This once contained soup like the Earth once contained dinosaurs. I could use this. Warning! This is an ultra-powerful fire extinguisher. You have probably purchased this item because you're either a hardcore forest fire fighting enthusiast, you work at a kerosene factory, or you practice occult rituals involving high temperature immolation. Please make sure your feet are firmly set on the ground and you're ideally leaning against a sturdy wall when you unleash this bad boy. Leave premises immediately if operating grip on extinguisher is lost. You have no chance to regain control of it. Hmm. Extremely powerful, huh? Sounds like a rocket of a time. Oh, isn't that nice? Leave a man shoeless and offer him slippers. I ain't putting on slippers unless I'm at home in my robe with a stiff drink, a Maurice Ventricle record, and a searing fear of the telephone. That's a lot of dense, sticky tar. Seems to be a lot of it around. I can't just pick it up with my bare hands. There's a recess in the floorboards here. I'm not wearing any shoes. Might as well watch my step. Nah, it's no use just by itself. A single shoe, part of a matched pair. Lost, alone, makes me sick. It's what scientists have lately been calling a plank. Things are ramping up. Well, that's unexpected. A pristine rag in this smelly, filthy basement. For some reason, there are barrels of tar everywhere. If I wanted any tar, there's plenty spilled on the floor. Discarded food, fish bones, a flotation device, random trash. 
nothing there of any utility. Whoever these bozos are, they left an empty mug for me. Thanks a lot. Pennies to pachyderms. I'll find something to fill it. Whoever tossed me into the clink must have left this here for my amusement. Distracted is the last thing I want to be right now. Parish of Starry Knowledge Camp Highlights. So, that's who I'm dealing with, huh? I don't want any of them around. Ever. That's an odd choice for a detention-type basement. Nothing there that's any use to me. Judging by its placement, it seems I'm in a basement. Huh, <laughs> rhymes. I ain't getting past those bars without some heavy-duty power tools. All right, let's get me some of this tar. Nothing in there but dust and more fish smell. Here we go. Now it's a little shallow pool of dense, extra sticky tar. All right, let's stick this in there. What the heck was I concocting here? It felt abstract, ridiculous, absurd even. The foundation of a really far-fetched and scatterbrained solution to my predicament. But this was a pretty ridiculous adventure already, so I guess I was just adapting. And a plank. This was officially ridiculous. Was I feeling proud of myself? A definite and resounding no but it was all I had. Look at this. A cringeworthy blue ribbon taker in the crazy enough that it could work regional semifinals. Definitely not a highlight in my career. Assuredly not a low though. Maybe those late night Mac Viper and Mac and Cheese syndicated binges had some kind of effect on my person. Good old Mac and Cheese. If my calculations are correct, when this baby hits 88 miles per hour, I didn't really make calculations. All right, door. Brace for serious, imminent impact. Prisoner, the boss wants to see you. Come on out here. You have got to be kidding me. Mr. Katype, or should I call you Don? No, you shouldn't. Katype will do just fine. We provided you with some slippers. Did Brother Gleam not assess your shoe size correctly? Now listen here, Buster. Unless I'm in the comfort of my own home, I don't do slippers. You can leave a man pantless, shirtless even. But don't mess with his footwear symmetry, you barbarian. What is this place and who are you anyway? This is about that damned book, isn't it? How deductive. Earning your keep, huh? Come now, don't take it personally, Katype. You were useful in leading us to it for a while, and then you were no more. We never really wanted to hurt you, or your shoes. You're sullen, grumpy, and mean to everyone. We like you. You would have gone far in our organization. Hmm, well, did you find the darn thing? As soon as the kidnapped troops got you out of there, our recon squad was dispatched to retrieve the volume. So you're really convinced you know its exact whereabouts, huh? Close to 100% certain. Ah, speak of the devil. All right, Brother Bright, was our information correct? Yes, Brother Starburst. So it's true. The Necronomicon really was hidden in the library? Kind of. Y yes your starriness. Well, don't just stand there, you fool. Let's see it. Well, we we don't really have it. What? A sigil was gone, broken into tiny little pieces, and something had clearly been hidden in there. But no book in sight. Katype? Everything was intact when I was in there, so don't put it on me, your grand poobah shininess. What about the librarian? It's a funny thing. We ran past each other when we were on our way to collect a tome. He looked so scared. <laughs> well, of course he looked scared. A bomb had just gone off. 
Anything else? Hmm, I don't think so. <gasps> oh, wait, yes! He was carrying a big book and didn't seem too happy about it either. Find me this librarian now! What about me? You don't need me anymore. Oh, just go back to your little cellar. Now let's be real here for a minute. What good am I to you now, cultist? He's right, Brother Starburst. You just chew into our rations, and you don't know anything either way. Oh, all right, just sacrifice him to the Haunter or something. Stop bothering me! Fine with me, boss. Walk, prisoner. Uh, I'm gonna need someone from rites and rituals down here ASAP. I'm about to do an R24-A. Come on, guys, you know the drill. Guys? Guys? Sheen? You out there? Anyone? Come on, you know I can't do Jack until we fill out the SNF 187. We don't want any trouble with Code Union. We've been through this, people. Is anyone out there? Guys? Prisoners not in sacrificial robes. No ceremonial bucket for the collection. We're really running a shoddy operation here. No wonder EOD's kicking our derriers. I'm embarrassed. The prisoner's embarrassed. This is not looking good, brothers. Sheen? Flair? You guys totally bolted, didn't you? Starburst is not gonna be happy when he hears about this, people. This makes us look really, really bad. I almost feel like apologizing to the would-be victim. Hey, you don't feel bad. It's not your fault. Yeah, well, it sort of is. It's our collective fault. I share in it. I take my responsibilities seriously. We're not a startup cult anymore. This is unacceptable. Your striving to be a better evil organization is commendable. Aw, thank you. It's nice to know that at least someone here appreciates it. Don't mention it. Sweet dreams, star lover. Well, that's nice. A little extra safety is always appreciated. Nope. It's an enticing ladder to some upper level. Hmm. It appears to be dusk outside. No way to reach it. Got a serious structural hazard over here. I'd need something stout and hefty and swung like mad to bring that wall to the ground. Not a particularly interesting starry cult desk if you ask me. I'm not into this desk at all. A little color twist to the classic checkered temple floor. That's nice, I guess. I'm using it as I speak. I'd gotten lucky with the fire extinguisher. Must not have triggered it completely. It still had a lot of, huh, fire in it. It was just as hard to control as before, but I had a feeling I could put it to good use one more time. Brother Gleam is sleeping off a particularly demanding day. I don't want to disturb the guy. He's getting his beauty sleep. It's a heap of astronomy-related instruments. Wait, there's a piece of wire sticking out from it. I think I'd rather just pick it up.
A heck of a lot of literature. Most, if not all of it, star-related. Figures. Not in the mood for star stuff, really. I think I can reach if I leap. I never thought I'd say this, but I don't think I'm heavy enough. Me or the stuff I'm lugging around. Huge, sturdy door. It's barricaded from the outside. Barricaded from the other side. Makes sense that they'd shut me in here, but it seems that they don't think too highly of that Gleam guy either. Looks like a hatch heading to an upper floor. Damn it, how'd I know it'd be locked? All right, made a nice little sliding hook thing. Halfway there. There we go. One radical red hot ram rocket ready to go. It's ready, steady, and aimed. Fire! I hope I've done you proud, Mac Viper. This looks like some kind of diary or log of some kind. Whoa! That seemed to make a lot of things happen at once. All right, let's see now. October 13th. It's so hard to get accustomed to the sickening stench of this dreadful fishing town, but apparently it's important to him that we establish our base here, so we just take it. Decorating, coming along nicely. No end to the work. A lot of long and boring entries follow. Seems like some kind of complicated records. Let me skip ahead a bit. Let's see. July 6th. We're all accustomed to the stench. It's probably imbued in everyone by now. Summon the haunter, and he came in a flickering form of a tall, swarthy man with skin made of ebony. Ignored my words and asked for the book, then disappeared upon my answer. We must find it, no matter what. July 13th. His incomplete form is frustrating. Must find the book. We must find it. That idiot Bright left the hatch open and Lumen snuck up here into the summoning chamber to try to get the Haunter's mark. What did the fool think would happen? We don't even bother storing their ashes in the urn anymore. Just leave them there as a reminder to anyone stupid enough to try that again. August 6th. Sister Halo's matchstick hobby proved to come in handy. Praise the Haunter! I could scarcely believe my senses when at last she finalized the structure and Brothers Bright and Gleam dropped the cannonball on it. Not only did it not destroy what she built, but it lodged itself in the circular space above the stone and is exerting such pressure on the lattice work that you can take a shovel to it and it won't cave in. It's good to have some smart people join the ranks for a change. Only she and I know how to breach it and get to the stone, so that should at least keep our numbers from dropping. August 7th. Private investigator making waves in Darkham, looking for leads on the book. Might be a dark blessing in disguise. We just stay on his tail and track him to see if he digs up any leads. The book? The Necronomicon? Is that me they're talking about? August 13th. Rejoicing! It's very possible that the hostess's fetch dog has sniffed out the book. Time to retire him and go for the prize ourselves. Hostess. Why did that sound familiar? Anyway, that crazily angled stone. I wanted it. If only to get back at these star-obsessed maniacs. It's the first book in a row. An arcane symbol adorns its cover. I've opened it at its bookmark. The stone from the stars is a window on all time and space. It is within it that the Haunter sleeps while the yellow sun reigns, and it is from its circular gate that the Haunter's incomplete form rises when the words are spoken. Nor shall he ever rise in his true form until the forbidden book be by his side. No end to the work.
It's the second book in a row. There's some kind of symbol on its cover, and that's about it. I've opened it at its bookmark. It is known that touching the stone from the stars might cast upon a mortal being the mark of the hunter. But none should do it unless prepared to face his cold black flames and turn to ashes and dust. No living soul can know whom the haunter chooses to mark and grant vision beyond time and place. No end to the work. It's the third book in a row. The cover consists entirely of a weird symbol. I've opened it at its bookmark. For the butcher is the end of all, and the followers of him who lingers in the night's threshold must keep the slaying one from ever setting eye or laying hand upon the book. The butcher brings but... The rest is unreadable. The butcher? Huh. That's new. Whoa! Looks like these cuckoo birds tried to tar up the windows and failed miserably. I've played with tar enough for today. Looks to be quite powerful. I don't think I can pry it out with my bare hands. An immense rusty telescope hanging intimidatingly overhead. Wouldn't know what to do with it. These dummies tried their best to tear the windows up, but an intense orange light symbolically shines through. Yeah, I know I don't get enough vitamin D, but this is not the time or place. The inscription above it says, Here lie in ashes all brothers and sisters foolish enough to think that the stone from the stars chose them to be marked by the haunter. I have no use for former cultists, in ash form or not. There's a drawer underneath this urn thing. Inside the dusty drawer, there was one solitary rusty spoon. Unwritten private investigator wisdom says you never know when you could use a rusty spoon. I examined the darkened stone altar that held the trapezohedron. Creepy thing. Unusual markings adorned all sides of it. No idea how they got it up here, but I'm not budging it. That much is obvious. That's some kind of a cult scratch. Looks to symbolize that shine rock on the pedestal. It's just a drawing. Eerie, but a drawing. It's a strange, self-illuminating trip, tripeep, tripeep, trap, tri mm, weirdly angled rock thing. The dubious match constructed security structure won't let me get my hands on it. A delicate and intricate latticework of what looked to be matches, surrounding some jagged, shimmering stone and somehow supporting the kind of cannonball what looks like it was made to bring down battleships. I realize how crazy that sounds, yet here it is before me. Biting my lip, eyes half-closed with anticipation, I flicked my finger at one match, then another. The apparently fragile construction proved to be impervious to my attempts at unbalancing it. There was damn good engineering when you needed it the least. The structure would not collapse, no matter what. A pretty martial-looking cannonball suspended somehow above that glowing rock by some order of matchstick engineering genius. It's held in place firmly by the matches structure. Quite impressive and unmovable. I carefully placed the spoon in between the lens and the metal covering and... Voila! The lens was now mine.
sweet. Its placement and the highly original security system tell me that this dingus must be of some critical importance to these starry knowledge jamooks. I most certainly did not burst into cold black flames. So much for this numbskull cult credibility. It did feel, uh, weird. Weird. Alright, I'm now one cannonball heavier. Let's see what happens. That was a first. And a last. It's the former standard. No, it's just a flagpole. It would almost fit, but it'd be too loose. I need it firmly stuck in there. Let's get this stick, uh, sticky. There's just one thing I want to say before I do it. Hammer time! You two, here we are. Ugh. Just call me when you need my services. I'm getting as far away from this dump as possible. See yous. Yep, thanks. So, here we are, Kitty. Fishmouth. <sighs> Is this foul, rotting sea life odor in any way mouthwatering to you? Please, it's sickening, and I'd literally rather be anywhere else right now, but we've got a job to do. Let's find Finman's before we revisit my lunch and dinner. Green light shining through this particular door's window. Hello? Go away. Oh, but you see, I'm, I'm, I'm just interested in local culture and... Go away. Okay. Moldy old buildings receding into darkness, and everything smells horribly of fish and fish things. Ugh. It's a kid and her dog, staring down at the water. Hey, kid! Go 
Good evening, sir. I'm Buzz. What's your name? I'm Annie, Annie Pole. This is my doggy woggy Tad. Nice to meet you, Annie and Tad Pole. So, what you up to? Just waiting for my cousin. She was supposed to show up a half an hour ago. It's not like her to be this late. What's your cousin's name? Priscilla. Whoa! Really? You... you know her? Maybe. Well, hope she shows up real soon. Yeah, me too. I hope everything's all right. What are you drinking there, Annie? Dolphin's milk. It's really good for you, very nutritious. Yeah, uh, I bet it is. Is everything okay with Tad? What do you mean? Well, his eyes are... Um... Wide apart? Yeah, he just sees more that way. He sometimes misses things coming straight at him, but I keep an eye out for them. That's nice of you. Hey, Annie. Think you could spare some of that dolphin milk? Mmm, I would. But I might need to share it with Tad a bit later. See, he's really hungry, and my cousin's running really, really late. Oh, poor Tad. Poor Tad. So he likes milk, huh? Not really. He'd prefer a sandwich. But he'll have to settle for milk, because it's all I've got. Got it. See ya, Annie. Later, Buzz. There's an intense purple light shining through the window in this door. Hello? Go away. But maybe I have a very important message to deliver. Go away. <sighs> it says... Fishmouth Tourist Board, Tourist Information. We're closed. It's uh, the door to the tourist info place. I think it's locked. She doesn't come with a lockpick feature. It's a thuggish-looking big guy smoking a horribly stinky cigarette. I'm not sure I want to mess with this particular local. Hello there, sir. Buzz. Off. <laughs> Actually, funny thing about that. I mean it, out-of-towner. Okay. A couple of Fishmuthians. Looks like they're guarding that archway there. They look uh, very, um, iconic. Hey, folks, mind if I squeeze through? We don't mind or nothing, stranger. We just strongly discourage it. Strongly discourage it? Okay, I can respect that. So, can you let me through anyway? We ain't shopping you. We just strongly discouraging you. Well, it's easy, really. Each one of you just has to take one step, no, half a step in the opposite direction, and we're all happy. We ain't stopping you, stranger. But we ain't moving either. Allow me to introduce myself. My name's Buzz Kerwin, and I'm a tourist here in this beautiful seaside town of yours. Martha. Martha Webfoot. Liz here's my husband Silas. We's the Fishmouth Citizens Brigade. Proud volunteers. Just watching over things, making sure the festival gonna go smooth. That's our job now. The festival? It ain't got nothing to do with you or your kind. 
Yeah, that's why we strongly discourage you from entering Fish Month. But I'm a participant. Really? Judging by your action, I would have said Eastern Orthodox. No, I, I mean I'm part of the festival. Then you're either a pilgrim or you're one of them entertainers. Pilgrim you ain't because you ain't got the garb and you sure don't smell like one. So that'll make you an entertainer. Let's see that entertainer license. Real artists don't need licenses. Well then, real artists ain't getting any deeper inside Fishmouth. Uh, it wasn't ready. They said just go in without it. Who said that? The, um, the, the, the committee. No license, no entry. Is there anything I can do to convince you to let me through? Boy, you've really given up on trying anything creative like, ain't you? We ain't letting you in without a license. Now, Silas, don't be talking nonsense. We ain't stopping anyone here. Oh, uh, that's right, Martha. Oh, he's just... Strongly discouraging. Gotcha. Look behind you! A three-legged toad! <laughs> well, that must be Skippy. Little Bartholomew Liverwort's pet. Cute little fella, bouncing all over the place. Use that third leg as a kickstand. Seen it with my own eyes. Oh, brother. I'll be back. We'll be here. Turns out he's not the approachable type. You're damn right I ain't. It's the clerk in charge of this tourist info point. He looks, uh, sophisticated? Hello! Good evening, sir, and welcome to our info point. My name's William LQPW Watersworth, and I'm an official representative of the Fishmouth Tourist Board. What can I do for you today, sir? Nice uh, evening we're having, huh? Nice is not a notion commonly associated with Fishmouth. While the evening, per se, with its undeniable charm and pleasant temperature, would qualify as nice, we are in Fishmouth. Therefore, I submit that it's a horrendous evening. <laughs> okay. I'm here to visit Fishmouth for a while. If I may say so, sir. That is a horrible idea. Yeah, I thought I'd... Wh what? Did you just say horrible idea? Why, of course. Fishmouth is a run-down, rotting, almost abandoned mockery of a town. Nothing to visit, the people are anything but hospitable, and... We're really not accepting of strangers during this particular time of year. I thought you represented the Fishmouth Tourist Board. I do. You're a tourist, correct? Am I not informing you, sir? I do not see how this is confusing. You said you're not accepting of strangers this particular time of year. Are you more accepting at other times? No, not really. No. Is it me or are you going out of your way to drive people away from Fishmouth? Oh, we only have the tourist's best interest at heart. The best thing a tourist can do in Fishmouth is not be one. Be one what? A tourist in Fishmouth. Why do you not want me in Fishmouth? Oh, sir, you might have misunderstood. It's not that we don't want you in Fishmouth. We don't really want anyone here. Ever. Is that an economically sound attitude you guys are having as a community? 
It is the will of the majority, sir. Which part of Fishma do you think is the absolute most repugnant to a visitor? That's got to be this plaza here we're situated in for sure. Really? What about the rest of the town? Oh, just as horrible. No, even more horrible. Thanks for clearing that up. Mr. Watersworth, I will come clean. I'm one of the entertainers. What is this you speak of, sir? I don't understand. The festival, Mr. Watersworth. Is this where I pick up my official entertainer license? You are very, very, very early, Mr... Uh, yes, sir. Uh, I uh, wanted to get a feel of the place before my performance. Uh, it's a habit of mine. Don't worry, I've arranged for my stay in advance. Very well, sir. What type of entertainment should I look under? I'm a stand-up comedian. I would not have guessed, sir. Let us see here. No comedians listed here, I'm afraid. <laughs> Just kidding. Hilarious, sir. I am a renowned magician. Magician? We have no magician's book, sir. One might say we have the real deal here in Fishmouth. Hmm... I have this talking cat. All right, let me see here. Mr. Tornston and his horrible singing beast, is it? Sure is. Oh, no, it isn't. Well, what do you know? It does speak. Oh, do make it sing, Mr. Tornston. It's time to stop being so modest, Kitty. The public wants you. Besides, I think Mr. Watersworth needs to be convinced of your singing abilities, lest he just give some imposters our license. Quite right, Mr. Torson. We will talk about this, Mr. Tornston. What would you do with a fishman sailor? What would you do with a fishman sailor? What would you do with a fishman sailor? That was something, indeed. Memorable, huh? To say the least, sir. Here's your license, Mr. Tornston. Enjoy your stay, and... I know, I know. Keep out of everybody's business. Have a great evening, Mr. Watersworth. Doubtful. Goodbye. It's a bottle of really fancy liquor. Well, I won't just swipe the man's liquor from under his nose, but I doubt he'll be missing the label on the bottle, right? A cornucopia of... You should not be using words you don't know the meaning of. <sighs> A lot of creepy paintings, mostly fishing related. Some kind of fishmouth themed fridge magnets. I can't just swipe one. Better talk to the clerk. Interactive guide on floppy disk. There's something you don't see every day. I can't just swipe one. I went to Fishmouth and all I got was out of there real fast. They all say Fishmouth. Ew. It's a multi-tool looking thing. They've always intimidated me. It's Mr.
say, you've got these uh, welcoming gifts here. Perhaps in Florida, going away gifts, which we do encourage, we do at your earliest convenience. Yeah, what's on offer? You may choose between five options, sir. A jolly good fridge magnet with the inscription, Fish with, not even once. A leather T-shaped shirt that says, uh, I went to fish with and all I got was out of there real fast. Horrible grammar, I know. A coffee mug reading, Fish with. Yeah. A Fish with Tourist Attractions interactive guide on floppy disk. There's really nothing to see, so no point in wasting DVDs on it. And finally, my father's most popular choice, the Fishmouth Multi-Tool. Opens anything, provides hints, helps solve puzzles, coerces people to reveal passwords, requires ceremony, shaving of head, stripping down to underwear, slight change of religion, uh, six month long vow of silence, and a little blood sacrifice. Very useful tool, which, which one of the five shall it be, sir? I, uh, I can't decide yet. Very well, sir. Do return upon having chosen wisely. That's a promise. Be seeing ya. I wish you would reconsider. Good day. Mr. and Mrs. Webfoot, here's my entertainer's license. Huh. I'll be darned. Horrible singing pet, huh? Hey, didn't you say your name was Kirby or something? Torsten is my stage name. We just might be attending your show, Mr. Torsten. Welcome to Fishmouth. Keep yourself, and don't do no nosing around if you don't have to. Gotcha, Silas. See you folks around. There it is. That's Finman's over there. I don't know, man. It's been all fun and games so far, but this place is giving me the serious creeps. Can't argue with that. A Fishmuthian citizen really intent on reading that newspaper. Handsome fella. Gliding down through the dark green water. Yeah? Uh... It's a fishbutt citizen, enjoying his sandwich. Good evening, good sir. Evening, stranger. The name's Buzz. Buzz Kerwin. Nope, that's wrong, I'm afraid. The name's Milton. Milton the Mechanic. N no, I mean my name's Buzz. I didn't know they named kids Buzz anymore. I thought that was considered cruel and unusual. <sighs> the Mechanic? Is that your surname? Yes, sir. Maybe you heard of us if you're from round Miskatonic. We're a distant offshoot of the Kingsport de Plumbers. They hate our guts. Sorry to hear that. Nothing to be sorry about. We hates their guts, too. Just straight up gut hating back and forth. Always been the way in our clan. It's nice to have traditions. Sure is. Is this your truck you're sitting next to? Sure was. It's dead now, bleeding oil all over the road like them, like them zebras, you know, on National Zoo TV. Them poor, poor striped horses. Uh... Used to watch them shows a lot as a kid. Always got to me how them critters was meeting their end. I mean, a lion's gotta eat, but us humans? Man, we can do better than that. I made me a choice back then. You became a vegetarian? Hell nah! In Fishmouth? You crazy? We put fish in everything here. Nah, 
I swore off zebra meat forever. Never felt better, never felt the need for it. But yeah, the truck's mine. So are you doing anything about the truck? Nothing. Sitting here, hopeless, despairing, eating my tasty fish sandwich. Bon appetit. Nah, it's just tuna. What can you tell me about Fishmouth? Well, I don't know how you made it in, but the sooner your non-local hides is out of here, the better. Us Fishmouth folk don't like out-of-towners, no siree. And the order... The order? Mm, never mind, I'm just talking crazy. Been playing too many of them blasted video games, you know? Make you dumb, they do. Yeah, that's what I hear. Are you gonna eat your second sandwich? Now that's a very personal question, Mr. Curlin. What of it? I, uh, would like to have it. You would, wouldn't you? Well, I tell you what. I'll trade you for it. What do you have in mind? I have a craving. A craving for something scrumptious. A human heart, perhaps? Yours? Huh? Oh, I'm awfully sorry. I don't know what came over me. Been playing these dark sci-fi adventure games. They've been messing with me. True as I'm sitting here and telling you. Murder simulators. Awful stuff. Indeed. Where was I? Oh, yeah. Get me something refreshing, and you got the sandwich. I think you'll like this can of Dr. Fisher. Why, I sure will. Dr. Fisher's trademark. My favorite. This gonna go down real good once I'm done with my sandwich. Made with the finest, most odorous fish muth water. Mm-mm. A deal's a deal, Mr. Kremlin. Here's your sandwich. Enjoy. Thanks, Milton. Enjoy your other sandwich. Catch you later, Milton. You probably will. My truck's dead. There's a light coming from somewhere down there, but the gate's positively locked. I don't really have a reason to, plus it's locked. As crumbling and decayed as Darkham, maybe a bit more. It has reached its final destination. It's not taking me anywhere. It puddles. It's what it does. Can't think of any use for it. One solitary lit window. Wonder who's in there. Well, we found the Finman house, all right. Charming place. She looks really, um, not happy. Hi there. You staying at the Finman's tonight? I, I might be. Good luck. <laughs> A great example of the Urban Decay School of Design. Fascinating wonders might await deep in its smelly confines, but I won't be the one to discover them. Oh, I'm a cat, so I'm into smelly trash cans. Is that what this is? I didn't say anything. Urgh. It gets really dark that way. Really dark. One, it's dark as heck. Two, no reason to go down that way. Three, did I mention how scary it looks? Four, 
Scaredy cats are not necessarily felines. Hey, we need to stay on target. Oh, brother, this one's even darker. Nope, not going down there. I don't think I'll venture down the dark, fouling, smelling, creepy alley anytime soon. That there must be the namesake of this hotel. Hello there. <sighs> Mr. Uh, Finman, I presume? That's me, yeah. Nice hotel you've got here. Nice. Ain't nothing nice about it. We don't do nice in Fishmouth. There anything I can do for you, stranger? Bob Olmstein. <sighs> what did you just say? Uh, God, my spleen? You should have that checked out, stranger. Your spleen plays multiple important roles in your body. It's a filter for blood and part of your immune system. It also helps fight bacteria, especially the kind that causes pneumonia and meningitis. So I've heard. Okay, thanks for the info. Oh, cooked spleen's supposed to taste real yummy. I, I don't mean the human kind, of course. I, I wouldn't know about that. Uh, very I interesting. What a great evening in Fishmouth, isn't it, sir? Evening? Yeah, I suppose it is evening. Mm. I don't know what you find so great about it, though. You know, the salty, sea-scented breeze, the smell of rotting fish, the, the distant thunder... Charming! <coughs> I'd like a room, please. I'd love to help you out, sir. We's all completely booked up. Really? I only see one key missing on that wall behind you. Ain't you been snooping around? Got a bunch of pilgrims coming over for the festival soon. That one standing there is the first of the bunch. Book the whole place they did. Don't bother wasting your breath on him. He ain't talking nothing. You ain't from Fishmouth, is ya? I can smell it all over you. Why you come here? You're a direct man, aren't you, Mr. Finman? <clears throat> <clears throat> yeah, and I've been known to judge a man. He was nosy and skinny. Too skinny. I tried to eat right, Mr. Finman. Oh, yeah, yeah, so do I. <laughs> Sorry. M must be this uh, hunger I guts up in me. What is so funny about that? Oh, nothing. Fish with humor. You ain't got the stomach for it. <laughs> Sheesh. What's this festival you mentioned? Nothing you should know of. That's our business. We fish... <laughs> Fishmouth folk. It's Fishmouth business. We got our own to look up to. Don't need your funny smelling outsiders telling us what to do and who to listen to. I might just hang around and check it out if it's happening soon. That's not to be advised, Skinny. The order don't take kindly to... Stranger. The order? What order? Nah, never you mind that. Aw, oh, come on, tell me. I'm here. Might as well learn a thing or two about Fishmouth. The only thing you need to know about that there esoteric order is that they don't want you here. So you best be on your way. That's all I can tell you. So, about that room... We's all booked. See that? 
Him and his kind done booked up, about to arrive any minute now. <laughs> Maybe it's me, but did that really warrant? Ah, uh, think nothing of it, straight. My stomach's great. Can I interest you in this cookie I've got here? I'm a... I'm a meat man myself, but... Right now I could eat just about anything, I reckon. If it ain't meat though, I got to wash it down some, and... I ain't got anything. Mm. You mean like alcohol, right? You was pretty smart for a stranger. All meat, huh? Got any preferences or anything goes? Oh, I got my preferences. <laughs> Sorry, skinny. Don't be judging me. Look at yourself, all oh, skin and bone. Nothing on you worth mentioning. Uh, what? What'd you mean? Oh, nothing, nothing. <laughs> How come you don't have any alcohol around? Been no need. We've been having plenty of meat around here. Till it stopped coming, that is. Be arriving for the festival soon, though. Ain't that right, Pilgrim? Them, them brothers of yours arriving soon, eh? <laughs> I don't get it. Are the Pilgrims bringing you meat? Oh, yeah, 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 you could say that. You could definitely say that. <laughs> That's one exceptionally jovial innkeep. Anyway... Oh, so the occupied room is the spill rooms? No, it's someone else staying there. Can you tell me what his name is? Here at Finman House, we value our customers' privacy. Uh-huh. Has, uh, the guy in the room brought you any meat? What, you fancy yourself some kind of detective or something outsider? What's with all them questions now? I'm just curious by nature. <laughs> Too curious, you ask me. No place for your kind here, outsider. Just wondering how come your one customer hasn't provided you with any meat, that's all. He's a strange in that one. Ain't nothing like our usual customers. Pays damn well, too. Gold, stranger, gold. We is locks our gold up in here. So gold is popular around here, huh? Used to be... Mm, you asking way too many questions, Skinny. I'm here to see this gentleman. He ain't come down in a while. I don't reckon he will anytime soon. I wouldn't wait if I were you, stranger. You know, getting constantly called a stranger and an outsider tends to be a little grating after a while. Have you considered that? We don't take... Kindly. Gotcha. <sighs> I gotta run. Take care, stranger. <laughs> Looks like he's the strong, silent type. Hello! Okay then. Complimentary coffee. Black as midnight on a moonless night. How thoughtful of Mr. Finman. Nothing to pour it in. It seems like it's always 10 o'clock in this hotel. I don't think this one opens. Stairs leading up to the rooms. Olmstein must be up there. I'm afraid I can't do it without Finman's permission.
Maybe Tad would like this sandwich. Oh, thanks, Buzz. He'll love it. Don't mention it. Think I could get some of that dolphin milk now? Sure. Here you go. See ya, Annie. Later, Buzz. Nah, no need to claim it's not milk. Why would they just let it rot in there? Surely people prefer it fresh, right? My stomach turns just at the thought of it. She's as grumpy as usual, but I guess it fits her. Fish, I'm not a fan of. Badly decayed ones, even less so. A strangely shaped reef. Almost an island, really. A rusty, creaking fishing boat that's seen better days. It's an old drunk sailor chilling in that rope coil. Hey there, Gramps. What you? Uh, get, get lost, youngin. My name's Buzz. Nice to meet you. Get on out of here. Fish, fish methane, no place for you, boy. Well, at least you fish muthians are consistent about that. What a great evening to be alive, isn't it? <sighs> you think I'm crazy, don't you? Where'd you get that idea? <sighs> Old Zadok knows. You should not be drinking that, old timer. Who, who, who are you to tell Old Zadok what to do, sonny? Go, get. You think I'm crazy, don't you? No, I really don't. I hate to come across as judgmental, but do you really want to spend your twilight years in an alcohol-induced stupor? It is not a choice, sonny boy. If you'd have seen what these old eyes have seen, I tell you. Tell me. Uh, nah. Rather drink, boy. Whiskey makes one forget. You said you wanted to forget? Why not remember? There's things too uh, horrible to be remembered, boy. Believe all Zadok. Why, you think I'm crazy, don't you? I don't know why you insist on asking me that. I do not think you're crazy, Grandpa. Really need that drink, huh? <sighs> I... I'm willing to do you a world of good and take that cursed whiskey off of your hands. Have you considered a healthier alternative? What you babbling about there, boy? How about coffee? I never touched the stuff. Never even smelled it. You've never smelled coffee? Not in my life, boy. My mama, rest us all, she tried to get my peppy to drink it. Left the old hooch. But my peppy wasn't having any of it. Deceive a is the devil's drink. Then he dunk another whiskey. <laughs> Lord rest him. That's a story to remember, Gramps. How about tea? Nothing like a warm cup of tea to relax you and get you in the mood for a chat. I can't stand that stuff. I've been a fisherman all my life, boy. It was just water, 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 all the time. 
I ain't put in that water down concoction in me, no sir. Kinda got a point there. How about soda? Soda? <laughs> Why that sugar water, son? <laughs> Health alternative, my soul to behind. Can't argue with that. How about orange juice? <laughs> hey, no oranges in fish, my sonny boy. You's more likely to squeeze juice out of a calamari. And you don't want to taste that, Trussell Zadok. I'll take your word for it. So you never tasted or smelled coffee in your life? Not in my life, son. Couldn't tell it apart from gasoline. It's a... Um, it's a question of pinsum. A prin... <coughs> Principal. I gotta run. Run, boy. Never return. Looks like the oldest ship anchored in Fishmouth Harbor. If only you could tell its tales. It's fascinating, but not worth diving in the murky waters and later dying from God knows what fascinating. Ooh, an actual sea captain in the flesh. She even smells like one. Ahoy! That's your ship over there? She ain't going nowhere anytime soon, Lubba. <laughs> Frankly, I'm flattered you'd call me that, but I don't think we've met before. Leave your bilge, rat. Oh, okay, understood. Bye. What is it about sailing that turns people to alcohol? Lovast, Yelan Lover. Avast to you too, kind sir. About that going away gift. I take it you've made a wise decision. I'll have the coffee mug. An uh, interesting choice, sir. There you are. Be seeing ya. I wish you would reconsider. Good day.
Mr. Zadok, I've brought you something. What is it, boy? Coffee. What? Get the gosh darned abomination out of my face! Hmm, this gives me an idea. I gotta run. Run, boy! Never return! I think I want to pour something else inside first. Be seeing ya. I wish you would reconsider. Good day. Mr. Zadok, brought you something to drink. Why, there's just one of my old bottles. You don't enter here with that young'un. <sighs> this guy knows his bottles. I gotta run. Run, boy! Never return! Mr. Zadok? Got you a little something. What is it? It's a special kind of liquor. Very exotic import. Liquor? Says so on the label. Now don't expect it to taste like regular hooch. It's very exotic. It's supposed to have a real kick to it. L let me see that. <sighs> Smells like nothing I ever smelled before. And I can't say it's bad either. Oh, what is this devilry, boy? Kinda got me feeling all fluttery inside. Special import, supposed to really get you going. I'll say. Why, I feel refreshed as ever. It's like, it's like this curtain slowly lifting off of me eyes and mind, son. Whew, you done all Zadok a mighty good one. Can you get me more of this stuff? I'll let you know what it is and where to get it, but I'd like that bottle of whiskey in return if that's all right with you. Ah, take it. Who needs that stuff? I can safely say this has been a full-fledged epiphany, Puzz. Hey, you remembered my name. Thanks. Not a problem, son. Boy, do I feel good. I just might get up and walk around a little later. Good to hear, Mr. Zadok. Now that you're refreshed, care to tell me a bit about Fishmouth? What is it you want to know, Buzz? Why is everyone so secretive here in Fishmouth? 
Where do I begin, my friend? See, you're stuck of a curse that wants to most of Fishman's residence blood, turn them into fish and toad like things. And then they dig to the water. But that's not even the worst thing. You'd think that's the worst thing, wouldn't you? Oh, there's worse. And I've seen it with my own two eyes, hanging around the abandoned factory up Elliott Street. Seen them. Hideous fishmen and octopus like monsters. Caught a glimpse of them in the moonlight. Heard their awful noises. Horrible. It were horrible. The curse? Nah, Buzz. It weren't the curse. These things were not born this way. They was mutants. Abominations. Cobbled together from fish and man and squid. The butcher. That's who they whisper made those things. Who's the butcher? <laughs> I don't know that, Buzz. But I suppose it's some shady character that's in cahoots with the esoteric order of Dagon. And they're raising hell in a fishmouth. Raising hell. Literally. How can I get to this abandoned factory? You can't now. They've shut off those streets. In preparation for their evil festival. Ever heard of a man called Bob Olmstein? Can't say I ever did. He's supposed to be staying at the Finman. The Finman, huh? Uh, folks legend here have a habit of disappearing without a trace. Sneaky fella, that Finman. Slippery as an eel. What's this esoteric order I keep hearing about? The esoteric order of Dagon! Fishman folks worshipping the Deep Ones! Dagon's their high priest. Supposed to be this huge amphibian thing. That's what the festival's about. Worshipping Dagon in sacrifices they bring to him. Sacrifices? What kind of sacrifices? I shudder the thing, my boy. But what I can tell you is that they're raising something over in Kraken Bay. And if you ask me, it can only be the half goofer. Half go what? The half goofer. Huge ugly sea monster. And yeah, I reckon that sucker's gotta be big. Since they ain't letting anyone anywhere near Kraken Bay for a year now. Completely cut it off. No way to enter it from anywhere. I've got a confession to make. What's that, Buzz? The liquor I gave you that you loved so much? That's actually coffee. What? We'll all be darned. You sure I pulled a fast one on old Zadok, haven't you? Well, good on you, Buzz. But you know what? Good on me too. Because I guess you can teach an old dog new tricks. I guess I love coffee and I gotta live with myself now. I just might be hooked on it. Well, better than whiskey. You're right, Buzz. And when you're right, you're right. Right? Right. I'll see you later, Mr. Zadok. God bless you, boy. Take care. Mr. Finman, got you a little something to wash down the cookie with. Let me smell that. Oh, you did good, stranger. You was mighty kind. Mighty kind, I tell you. Ah, that hit the spot. And here's your cookie. You ain't tampered with this here fine piece of pastry now, has ya? Oh, God forbid, no. Down the hatch! Good. Thanks, stranger. What? What you standing there all expectantly like that for? Oh, nothing. What? You expect me to kill over or something? <laughs> Boy, I got a stomach line with steel myself. I... What the heck? 
I don't know what you put in that cookie, but it wasn't working. I have no idea either, my roommate. W wait a minute, care to explain what's going on here? Not until you explain what your business with Mr. Olmstein is. <sighs> okay, I I'll come clean. I accidentally got involved in a mess that I can't make heads or tails of. That's why I'm here looking for him. I see. Well, there are two possible situations. Either your heart is full of darkness and deceit, in which case I suggest you turn around and run, or your intentions are pure and your heart innocent, in which case we can talk. My heart is not full of darkness. Boy, it sounds weird saying that out loud. I've been sent here by the voodoo gentleman. I understand Mr. Olmstein might play an important role in this occult situation I stumbled into. Role? No, he plays no role. But what is yours? What part was assigned to you? Part? I'm just a librarian, sir. And this detective guy came looking for the, the Necronomicon. Kid type. Exactly. And then they kidnap him. Kidnapped? Who kidnapped him? Search me! Anyway, I've been walking around with this Necronomicon thing on me. You have it? The real one? It's gotta be real. Made my cat start talking. So. Hello. Yes, that explains that. Well, that's us. What's Olmstein to you? You speak his name so lightly, I... Let's just say I watch him from a distance. Try and look out for danger, pointless as though that might be. Pointless? Why? I just might be a fly buzzing around a lion. Never mind. I don't normally get close to him, but if you do have the real Necronomicon... Here it is! Uh, an exception will be made. We'll walk up to his room and we'll see from there. What else was I expecting? He's gone. Again. It might mean they're coming. We must stay vigilant. They? Who's they? Oh, too many possibilities in that regard. Oh my god, all this for nothing. It just keeps getting worse. You might as well at least tell me your name. Mine is Buzz Kerwin and this is Kid A. You may call me Barnabas. I am... Uh, I am a protector of the other, a seeker of truth and a hunter of evils. It must look nice on your business card. Okay, first of all, how do you know Don? I was the one who hired him to find the Holy Tome. It should never fall into the hands of madmen. Why hire Don? Is he an occult detective? No, but he is a damn good seeker. Well, maybe was. Oh man, don't say that! I'm sure he'll find a way to pull through. Madmen? What madmen? The Parish of the Starry Knowledge, the Esoteric Order of Dagon, or the... The Butcher. Starry Parish? Foul worshippers of a thing called the Haunter, and the Shining Trapezohedron it dwells in. Ugh, geometry. I've heard of the Esoteric Order. What's up with them? Have you now? So you also know of what they're raising here in Fishmoth? The Half Goofa? The Half Goofa? Those idiots. Those complete and utter morons. They have no idea what that can bring about. Well, neither do I, but... Are you gonna do something about the half goofa? They've cut off access to Kraken Bay completely, but I'll think of something. I must. The Butcher? Tell me about the Butcher. This is not the place nor the time for that, but what I will say is this. He must not have the Necronomicon. You must keep it away from him, at all cost. Sounds like someone I'd stay away from regardless. 
Do not underestimate his reach, and watch your step here in Fishmouth. Him and the Esoteric Order are likely in cahoots, and they're everywhere. Okay, so what does he want with the Necronomicon? To bring this world to its knees. Okay, that makes sense, sure. Uh, anyway... About Olmstein. What did you mean by the other? Olmstein? What makes him other? Who is he, anyway? Though you carry the book, you must understand my reluctance toward telling you these things. Still, see here. Though he walks among us, he is not like us. Aw, oh, jeez, with the cryptic talk again. If you're protecting Olmstein, how come you didn't knock Finman out earlier? That guy was definitely up to some gruesome stuff. Maybe Olmstein would have still been around. I was about to take him out. I had reserved all the remaining rooms just to make sure no one would intervene. Then you came along, and I had to be cautious. Maybe I still should be. You do walk around with spiked pastry on your person. Not spiked enough, but I'm kind of glad to be rid of it. Anyway... Can you describe Olmstein to me? Ha! Huh. That would be futile. He might appear different to you than he does to me. Or you might see him clearly and not be able to remember it an hour later. His nature is hard to grasp for all of us. B but the voodoo gentleman described him as just, you know, some friend of his. Was he trying to deceive me or...? There's no time to go into this, but that should not surprise you. Olmstein appears in different ways to different people. It is his nature. Wonderful. Changing subject. So he does this a lot? Disappear at the worst possible moment? It is in his ever-changing nature, yes. But there is always, always a little breadcrumb left behind. Uh-huh. Might as well look for it, right? Yes, I will... I will trust you to do that. I'll keep an eye on the stairs in the meantime. Get to it. <sighs> it's what I do. A conspicuous piece of paper lying on Olmstein's bed. Crow's feathers strewn all over the place. Is this guy some kind of bird enthusiast? The word you're looking for is ornithophile. I thought you couldn't read. Oh, yeah, uh, sure. They're interesting, but not pick up and carry around interesting. Hey, look at that. It's a pretty neat painting of the harbor. Accurate, too. That big window overlooks the smelly intersection outside. Looks like the only way out, so I guess Olmstein jumped? But we didn't see or hear anything. Just a mug and pitcher of coffee. Nothing to shine any kind of light on this Olmstein character. I need nothing from there. A particularly unattractive representative of the Fishmouth population. Definitely not souvenir material. Completely empty. Either Olmstein travels light, or he's just wearing everything right now. Nah, I'm traveling light myself. That's Barnabas, if he's to be believed. I found this drawing. Can you make any sense of it? Olmstein's sign. Why would he leave it here again? What is it? What does it mean? I've seen it before, yes. I know not what it means, but it must have been left here for you. Me? But how could he know I was coming? And why me again? Why me? It is the role you play in this, and questioning it is a waste of time. Ro 
soul! What role? Finding the book was an accident was just bad luck! That is how the tome works. The roles are defined, but the book is pure chaos. Help me understand more about Olmstein. I need to find him. I need to change my cat back. That is your stake in all of this? Hey, that has a name, buddy. Sort of. How did you come to know of Bob Olmstein? That is a story for another time. <sighs> Why is his name Bob Olmstein? I mean, you call him other and all of that, but his name is so common? There must be a reason for that, but does it really matter? Not to me. What's Olmstein's game? Is he good? Is he evil? These are questions that I cannot outright answer with a yes or no. All I have is my belief and some suppositions, and the former is much more powerful than the latter. If they do exist, maybe the answers are not meant for the likes of us. What we must do is play our roles. What belief? I believe I must try and stay by his side. And right now I am failing at that. What was Olmstein up to here in Fishmouth? Perhaps checking on some seeds he had planted. Aw oh, man, I know you're just speaking figuratively and it's just that cryptic stuff again that just drives me mad. No offense, but why can't you just talk like normal people? I'm not normal people. Of course you're not. But is there anything helpful you can tell me about Olmstein? <sighs> I can tell you some things, I guess. He might seem ever-changing, yes, but... Balance and rules, these too are in his nature. Self-imposed balance and rules. Uh, I'm sure you can be more specific than that. What rules? Do you ever watch the moon buzz koan? Yeah, occasionally. There is something about it, its phases. They seem to correlate to important events and to how he affects this world. But in which way exactly? You'll need to find out on your own. The Necronomicon. You seem to know more about it than I do. What is it? Ah, many things. We might call it holy, and we might be mistaken. Holy, as in not of this world. Uh, debatable, but do go on. It changes things. Sherlock Holmes over here. It chooses rules. It alters the very nature of things. But it does it when it wants, or when the stars are right. And if it makes its way into the wrong hands, it ends existence itself. Well, that's encouraging. But mine are not the wrong hands, right? Right? They're not the most competent. That much is clear. No, they are not. I think. Why does it keep changing? The Necronomicon is chaos in written, volatile form. What do its pages hold? What language is it written in? And what does it all mean? I've never read it, nor do I want to. All I have to go on are rumors and whispers, but both hold more and more power in this world. As for the meaning of the words, some of them are most probably incantations, or instructions of some kind. Instructions? Yes, and stories. Stories? What stories? It does not matter now. You must focus on your next move. Would it be safer in your hands? You do seem to know a lot more about it. No. No. Maybe I fear it more than you do. But that is not why I refuse it. It is not for me to bear it. Yeah, I guess I need it to turn Kitty back. Yes, yes, you, uh, you need to do that. You said the book is pure chaos, but Olmstein is about rules and balance? How does that work? You make a good point. For a while now, I've been suspecting there must exist a counterpoint to the chaotic tome. If there is such a thing, it should be sought out before it's too late. 
Great, but I have no leads, no nothing. Can you help out in any way? I am considering it. Let me think about it. <gasps> what was that? I think they're coming. The stairs. Damn it! Quick, out the window! Are you serious? It's really up high! Have faith. You can make it. I'll hold them back. But I don't know what to do or where to go or... There's no time. Go! Go! Find peace! Find peace! Hey there, Buzz! Fancy running into you! Mr. Katype! Please, uh, call me Don! Welcoming town, Fisherman, ain't it? Yeah, lovely. Boy, am I glad to see you! You okay, Don? Well, I have no shoes and I don't know where I'm running, but aside from that, I'm alright! You, uh, headed my way! Got a thing or two to uh, catch up on! Let's talk about it in Darkham! Taxi! Alright, we uh, should be safe in here. I uh, hope. Better keep the lights down. You don't happen to have any cat food lying around, do you? Huh. I keep forgetting it can speak. It? Rude. Look, I let you two rest all the drive here from Fishmouth, but now it's time for us to buck up, get our coconuts situated, and work out where we're at. Right. So, what happened to you? I cracked lid in the underbunk of some lunatic cult. These guys were also after the Necronomicon, but apparently you gave them the slip. Not the sharpest crayons in the box. The Starry Knowledge Cult. Yeah, how'd you know? Anyway, they kneel and keel to some kind of rock what came from the stars. Supposed to croak ya or give you some kind of vision beyond time if you lay your mitts on it. So did you? Now I glow in the dark. The Haunter's Mark, they call it. Ain't something I'd believe if I read it in the pulps, but now it's on me, I can't deny it. Things have definitely gone 15 shades of bizarro. And there's a talking cat. Again, I'm right here. Rude. Whoa. Did you try using your, uh, power? I didn't get the chance. I snuck out and crept around those smelly streets until I saw you legging it. That's about it. What you got? Well, I read from the book and now kitty talks. There's that. Then I visited a voodoo dude who told me to look for this Bob Olmstein guy in Fishmouth. Long story short, Olmstein had already left, but I did meet your employer. Fella by the name of Barnabas. Pretty big guy, white dreadlocks and beard, maybe in his 50s? Huh, I'll have to look him up in my files. Yeah, well, Barnabas is convinced Olmstein is of almost, um, divine nature? And there's also another cult called the Esoteric Order of Dagon, and they're about to have their creepy festival in Fishmouth soon. Oh, and there's a guy called the Butcher. Ah, <sighs> just saying it all out loud makes my head spin. I know about those esoteric weirdos. Not the first time they completely shut off Fishmouth to do God knows what. Butcher, those starry kooks mentioned them. All Barnabas told me was to keep the Necronomicon away from the Butcher at all cost. And you know what's weird? Barnabas hired you to find the book, but he wouldn't take it when I offered it. Strange. Well, he did pay up front, so uh, he's alright as far as I'm concerned. So, what do we do now? You, uh, wanna help? Kid, strange and mysterious are why I work this beat. Now that I've lost my shoes and my hand is all magic-like, this old bloodhound ain't going back to the kennel until he's got some answers. Oh, boy, am I glad to hear that. All right, well, there's two things. One, apparently there must be some item that counterbalances the Necronomicon's chaos, so we should probably look for that. And two, Barnabas told me to find peace. I kind of want to research that online. You do have internet, right? Uh, yeah, there should be some in that laptop thing. Oh, brother. You look into that. I want to see what this Haunter's Mark is all about. That's my file cabinet. Call me old-fashioned. Go ahead. 
I'll take a look, but a bit later. Who even still uses file cabinets, Joey? Just uh, don't drop it on my toes again, Vince. Whoa, you sounded eerie. And you were talking in a couple of different voices. Never been much of a thespian, so I guess the Hunter's Mark does work. I think you were channeling the movers. How long ago was that? I don't know. Years. I had a feeling I shouldn't tip the short, annoying one. Well, you can now legit read the past. Future would have probably been more helpful, but I'm not complaining. All right, give me a minute to look up this Barnabas fella. Who even still uses fi- Just, uh, don't drop it on my toes again. That's my safe. Right now, it's guarding a whole lot of nothing. Nothing in there. Ugh! Drag this all the way up here and I bet it's empty, Joy. I bet it. Yeah, I'm, uh, I'm with you on that, Vince. Man, those were some judgmental movers. That's Cornelia. I should give her a sprinkle. She is fine where she's at. Do you hear that, Joey? This guy's talking to his plant. He, he named it and everything. Man's probably lonely, Vince. Leave it at that. <sighs> Maybe I'm a little lonely. Oh well. The number one cause of horizontally intermittent tan. Occupational hazard. Now, nah, I'd rather not open them more. It's best we don't alert anyone to our presence. Hey, Joey, check it out. Venetian blinds. Guy thinks he's Sam Spade or something. Let's uh, just get that desk up here, Vince. Just my desk. Nothing special. Ugh, man, this thing must weigh a ton. This guy better tip well. Wouldn't count on it, Vince. He ain't for money, I can tell you that. Those belong to the guy what rented here before me. Never cared enough to take him down. Can you believe this guy, Joey? Didn't even bother taking those old diplomas down. That says something about a man, Vince. Uh, don't ask me what, though. A big, bad, weird world awaits out there. Nah, not yet. Still got things to do here. Is this a place, Joey? Sure is. How are we gonna get this desk up the stairs? I like, couldn't you got a lighter one? Shut up and do your job, Vince. Let's see here. Let's see here.
Hey, Bozinski, I think I got something on that fine peace thing. I don't believe Barnabas was trying to guide you to a life of mindfulness and meditation. He's got a daughter called Peace. Peace, Pusara. Oh, of course, that makes sense. Can you, you know, look her up? On it. <laughs> I think I got it. I found Peace Busara's blog. What's a... Ah, never mind. What does it say? Oh, well, the latest entry is pretty cryptic. It just says land beyond the forest and a, a bunch of numbers. Okay, these must be spatial coordinates. Tracking them down now. Man, this is just like in the movies. And I was right. She's in... Formaris, Transylvania, Romania? Well, well. Hey, here's an idea. Feel like visiting your ancestral home, Kerwin? Are you kidding me more than anything? But I'm hopelessly broke, and... Don't worry about it. Barnabas paid well, and I want to see this thing through. Awesome! You excited to see Romania, Buzz? Dude, I have been dreaming of this for years and never could afford it. The extra layer of mystery is just the cherry on top. Yeah, well, it ain't all fun and games. We're dealing with lunatics here. Found anything worth examining on your trip to Fishmouth? Actually, yes. Barnabas called it Olmstein's Sign. He apparently left it on purpose so that I could find it. Here it is. No idea what it means. It's that mysterious sign Buzz found back in Fishmouth. Flamel's abode. Flamel's abode? Did I hear that right? I think so. Does it ring a bell? Well, there's one famous Flamel I know of, and he's, well, was an alchemist. Looking it up. Pretty useful thingamabob, that laptop. 51 Rue de Montmorency, Paris, France. 14th century alchemist Nicolas Flamel's ancient home. Alchemist, huh? Could tie into the whole balancing chaos thing. All right, looks like that's my destination. European road trip! So, when do we leave? No better time than now. Radical. Yeah, radical. And this was it. Paris. I stepped out of the downpour into Flamel's hutch just in time. What followed was some kind of meteorological insanity. Hurricane Herbert baffled weathermen and struck anywhere in the world without warning. That was far from my biggest concern, though. You see, during the long cab ride from the airport, I'd taken some liberties with my walk dogs, what with the uh, kind of march a gumshoe puts them through. Bumbled up and explaining to the obnoxious cabbie in my very approximate French that no, I didn't want to detour to gawk the big old oil rig they planted downtown. Fate sucker punched me right in the gut. I, uh, left my shoes in the cab. There's a fishing hook just lying on the floor. I wonder how it got here. I'm not getting anything. It's an old, old portrait of, I guess, that uh, Flamel fella. A beautiful.
beautiful depiction of Flamel in Team Mr. Olmstead. Your penthouse quarters are ready, right this way. Olmstead, huh? Nice, familiar ring to it. Looks like a flyer about Nicholas Flamel. I'm not getting anything. This might prove useful at some point. I'm sorry, I can't read ancient-ish. Hic habitat flemilus. That did not help. Must be the missus. Oh, Serge, we will be so happy here. Now get cracking on that dinner. Allez! No thanks. She's taken, and I got Cornelia. That's a lot of book right there. Oh, wow. Getting such a garbled mess, it's it's indecipherable. That's the concierge's prerogative. Been a while since I've seen one of these. Mr. Watson, come here. I want to see you. I don't think I'm getting any calls here. Hello, darkness, my old friend. Nothing that way. Nah, that's not the right direction. Shiny summoning thingy. No resonance. Good evening. Good evening, monsieur. My name is Serge, and I'm the concierge here. How may I help you? It's uh, quite the weather we're having out there. Oh, yes. A freakster. They call it uh, the Herbert. Taking the entire world by, well, by storm. <laughs> huh, yeah. Paris is still beautiful in the storm, though. I all heartedly agree, monsieur. She's the prettiest no matter the weather. I believe I have the right address. Rue de Montmorency, 51. I'm interested in an apartment. Um, everything is rented out, monsieur. I'm sorry. Everything? Well, yes, yes, everything. You seem to hesitate there. Is there maybe one you're holding on to for somebody? Monsieur is very inquisitive. I'm here to check the plumbing for any leaks. Surely you just... They have been checked last month, sir. They remain just as horrible, leaky, and unfixable as ever. Oh, uh, right. I'm a flooring inspector. Came here to look into a certain apartment. Floor issues, you understand. Structural integrity. May I see a permit or a license? Ah, oh, those are obsolete. Everything's digital nowadays. A flimsy excuse if I've ever heard one. My interests are scientific in nature. I understand there's some uh, historical significance to this building. You are correct. Sir Nicolas Flamel, the famed alchemist, lived here for a while. On the top floor. May I see that apartment? I'm afraid not, sir. As you well guessed, it is being held on to. Held on to, huh? 
Any chance it's a mysterious person interested in stabilizing volatile elements and such? Monsieur is very inquisitive. Does the name Olmstev ring a bell, Mr. Serge? I do not know who you are or what are you seeking, but this conversation ends now. May I have some soup on the stove and I must tend to it. Au revoir. It's a flyer what bears Flamel's mug. It's also got a writ of his goings and doings. Reading that, though, is a first-class ticket to Napsville. Population Z's. Not everything's gone digital, I guess. I find that strangely comforting. That's the concierge's prerogative. Oh, wow. Getting such a garbled mess, it's, it's indecipherable. He's looking kinda surprised for some reason. I guess people were all scraggly back then. A beautiful depiction of Flamel indeed, Mr. Olmstead. Your penthouse quarters are ready, right this way. Olmstead, huh? Nice, familiar ring to it. I think we got off on the wrong foot, Monsieur Serge. Makes no difference. I cannot show you the apartment, and that is final. I can pay handsomely. It is not a question of finances. It is about loyalty and respect. Loyalty to whom, Mr. Olmstev? Oh, your inquisitiveness grows tiresome. I have things to do. Now, if you'll excuse me, please let yourself out. Ah, it's you again. Look, monsieur, I have a wife on the stove and a soup in the, the other way around. M my point is, I'm a busy man. I just wanted to come clean. It's, it's Olmstead who sent me. I was just testing you before. Oh, really? I never saw him with anyone else before, let alone sending someone. Allow me to remain suspicious as to your truthfulness. The fact that you know his name does not mean you represent him or are even his friend. You have the right to your opinion. And the right to ignore your apartment visiting insistences. I'm here for the, uh, the thing Mr. Olmstead left behind. I'm sure I can find a way to convince you that I'm his representative. Fine, I'll play along. Hm. Let me think. Uh, something that only he and I would know. Aha! Uh -huh. Alright. Could you perhaps uh, tell me, Mr. Uh, uh, Ketype? Mr. Ketype. Do you know what his nickname for me was? That only he and I knew? And if you tell me that, I'm fully convinced he really did send you and hand you the key to Flamel's room. Sergio Leone? Not even close. Gramps? Not by a long shot. Uh, Stretch? <laughs> no. Flamel's what? Room. R Rome? Room, room. Oh, you are insufferable. I, uh, I don't recall right now. I'm sure it'll come to me. Why am I not surprised? Anything else, monsieur? Uh, not for now, I guess. Are you?
Oh no, do you not have anything better to do with your time than torture me, Mr. K-Type? May I inquire about a book you have here? <sighs> you may. It is our Flamel Memorial Guest Book. I have been keeping it for more than 30 years now. So it's uh, one of those things you write your impressions in after visiting? You should be a detective. How can I give my impression on Flamel if you won't let me visit his rooms? I don't know. Doesn't this lobby elicit any historical enthusiasm in you? Alright, I'd like to jot down my impressions of the place. I'm afraid I can't let you personally do that, but I will be happy to write on whatever it is you wish. Hmm, alright. By the way, what a beautiful quill you've got there. Actually, it's a fountain pen, made to look like a quill. Is the feather real? A quite real Corvius Corax feather, yes. A fine present from someone very close to my heart. What shall I write? <clears throat> I, Donald R. Katype. Yes? Knowing full well that this will go into recorded history. Yes. Hereby declare this, uh, this fine evening. Yes. That, uh, through circumstances that were hard to predict. Bon Dieu, is there more? Oh, I've only just begun. I am a visitor to these strange francophone lands. Yes? But alas, while my predictions were of a different nature... In the name of all that is sacred, is there more? There's... For, in these precipitous times, my efforts to abscond the true nature of my incursions into the obscure and forbidden... Monsieur, you'll have to excuse me. I will be right back. Je viens, je viens. Monsieur Serge seems to have forgotten his beloved pen there. This is for you, you papillon. Oh, Monsieur Homestead, it's it's beautiful. You are you are too kind. As Mac Viper says, never touch another man's pen. might have known it was you. What is it now? I remembered what Olmstead used to call you. It was Papapion. A con but boy in the face of evidence. You truly must be an envoy of my dear friend. I will give you the key to the apartment. Please reassure Monsieur Olmstead of my everlasting devotion and friendship. I'll be sure to do that. Thanks. Olmstein sends his regards. Olmstein? Huh. I mean Olmstev. Silly me. Thank you for delivering his message. What is it that endeared you so to Olmstev, Mr. Serge? He's, um, well, uh, huh, strange. I find it hard to put my finger on it. I just feel so loyal to him. Strange. I suppose it is a bit strange, but I'm, I'm, I'm an old man. Yeah, okay. How do you remember Olmstev? Oh, a very, very warm and uh, likable gentleman. 
Yeah, but what of his appearance? Appearance? Uh, I, um, well, huh, funny. Now that you mention it, I'm having a hard time recollecting his visage. Strange. Yes, maybe. But, but uh, I'm an old man, and my memory is foggy about a lot of things. Yeah, that would explain it. Thanks, Serge. I'll come to bother you if there's anything else. No bother at all. Anything for Monsieur Olmstead. A really old, really crooked armoire. A uh, big vertical crack in it lets me know it's empty. Strange little pyramids of grayish blue dust. Not gonna pick any of this stuff up. Who knows what it is and does. Ya at Zoftu. Ya and Gaku. Ya zi nibo. Okay. Ah, Paris. The city of lights. More like lightning now. What a cacophony. Too many damned people. Of course there had to be a pentagram. Of course. Know this seeker. Books hold untold meaning. Order is capital. Probably elk. Ancient books rotting away in this forsaken attic. These particular books had somehow survived. They seemed to be in alphabetical order. I was gonna have to make some kind of informed choice here. Choices, actually. Know this seeker. Books hold untold meaning. Order is capital. Ya at Zoftu. Ya and Gaku. Ya zi nibo. Oh. There's something capital about these titles. It is reflected in the knowledge within.
Cactus. I had chosen the book starting with an I and the first word in the sentence. I was onto something. Est. Draconi. In. Finem. There's a lot of junk in here. I'm not going through all of it. Gotta keep my eyes on the prize. No resonance. Crow's feathers, scattered all around. What the heck? Corvus, Corvi, Corvinus. What? I don't really need him. I'll be damned. That's gotta be what I'm looking for. The container of Constance, as it were. Huh. Flormilus Necessorium Est. There's no apparent latch or handle, and it looks firmly locked. Sure put up a fight, didn't you, Olmstef? Or Olmstein, or whatever. Come to daddy. There's no apparent latch or... Flormilus Necessorium Est. Just apply Flamel. Hey, it, it worked. Huh, a solitary page. Looks like it was torn out of a book. Ecce, structure. All right, let's uh, see what this says. Huh, interesting. I should tell Buzz about this right away. He'd better have a cell phone signal. Not having phone signal or internet sucks so bad. Rare occurrence like that helps us any. Sure, it took a lot to get from Bucharest to this Forum Maris place. More than crossing the ocean, I might add. It's this blasted storm that defies the laws of physics, popping in and out of nowhere all over the world. Did you hear the driver saying it was messing with the GPS? Wait, where'd that accent come from? This? Whoa, what are my ancient stomping grounds doing to me? Kitty, I th think this is the real me. <sighs> it never ends. Well, we're here. Charming town, your ancestral home. You will, of course, understand my apprehension and distrust of this place. Me being a black cat and everything? It isn't still the Middle Ages here, dummy. And as long as you're not excessively loud, people tend to not notice you can speak. Let's find peace. Right behind you. A man in what I think is a traditional mask. He looks really distressed as far as I can tell. Um, good evening? 
The castle must make it to the castle. Castle? Must reach castle, must defend castle. I'm afraid I can't help you with that, sir. It's where the mayor of Forumaris toils away, serving the citizens. I doubt she cares about administrative work. That inscription is nigh unreadable, but I'll bet my bottom dollar that's a Vlad. Apparently she's into art that's way more modern than this. Fine example of the local populace. Hi! No serus ma. No ni ma la il ce pali de ma. Ma ish bine ma fratiare. Ni ma la il ce tras la fatsa e ma seracu. Cazish ca no ma ca nimi de tri zile. Tu la ish Silvie. Ca cum ai ajuns sa ish ma? De unde ish? De unde ish fi ma? De de acu ish? Cu curata ai vinit. Ni ma si umbla cu mata aia dupa el, pai, di la el ma zici ca-s de la Tsircus, mata neagra ma, umbla dupa el, gandesc ca-i cane, tuuu, bata-te norocu sa te bata. Have you seen a foreign girl around here lately? Ce ma, fete straine aici? Du-te ma de aici ma, auzi la el, fete-i traba, tu la ai doamne, dar pai tu vii aici de unde a incercat dracu copchii sa cati fete, dar pai voi n-avati femeie acolo ma, doamne iarta ma si nu ma bate. N-am mai văzut eu nici o muiere, mă, numai de ale noastre, de aici, de ale locului. Ok, any idea where I could look for her? Da, păi numai Dumnezeu bunuțul știe, da, păi eu de unde să știu, mă, copile? Da, păi vezi tu, este un han acolo așa, îi zice hanul vieță, așa îi zice, și apoi mergi tu frumos acolo pe chișoarele tale, în adida și tăi frumoși, și apoi întrebi tu acolo, no, că poate știu oamenii, poate nu știu. Îi vede tu când ajungi acolo, no, bine, mergi frumos cu mâța după tine, tu mai mâni la ei, mă, bă, bă, fainism, mă, neam de neamul meu n-o văzut așa ceva. Thanks! Are you from around here? Da cum, mă? Dar de din tată în fiu suntem aici, mă, cu oile, da cum, mă? Da păi de când mă știu eu, mă? Și apoi de când erau moșii mei, mă, tată meu, Vasilie, moșul Ioan, buna Varvara, Tata lui Moșu Solomon, zi, și Ghibolu, și apoi moșilor tăți, tăți, tăți de viacuri. Tăt pe aici, no, păi cum? I see. Weird weather we're having, ha? E, mă, zici tu bine ce zici, mă, tare duba și vreme, mă, mă, eu de când mă știu, așa ceva n-am văzut. Apoi când plouă, când îi soare, de-ți vine țarușcă mea și-a jos. Când se supără Sunt Ilie și apoi trântește o furtune de, de să cacă ciorile pe ele, mă, de frică, nu mai știi cum să te îmbrești. Doamne feri! Ca așa ceva de când mă muca m-a făcut, eu n-am mai văzut. Ascultă tu la mine! All right, bye! No bine, dragul tati, te-am țucat, mă, du-te, du-te că te-or aștepta. Și apoi dacă nu te așteaptă, nu las că văd ei că vii. Du-te, că-mi ești drag, mă, cu mâța aia după tine, mimă la ei, mă, 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 fainis, pluu, să nu-i de ochi. Du-te, dragă, merg cu Dumnezeu, te-am țucat, serus, serus! It's literal trash. You'll probably pick it up. Maybe I will. Oh, I'm convinced you will. Okay, I'm picking it up. Good. Great. Look, I am picking it up. That's just swell, buddy. You better believe it. I do. Fine. Good. It's a particularly badly lit street, probably leading outside of town. What a quaint little horse-drawn carriage. I can't drive this. Coachman has to be around, though. Kid A, be nice to the horsey. What? Did I say or do anything? Just being preemptive, that's all. Jeez.
It's a cable running from that inn to the reddish gate. Probably internet, I'm thinking. All I can do is follow it, I guess. We're both following this cable, right, Kitty? Man, that's a nice, warm, inviting window right there. Or I could just, you know, walk in through the door. Whoa, an authentic, cool-looking Transylvanian castle! One of a series of dark and mysterious doors. I can sort of hear muffled voices from behind it. I am the one who knocks. Uh, come to think of it, I'd better not. It's a cable running from that end to the reddish gate. Probably internet, I'm thinking. Transylvania. Well, it sort of reads the same. Hmm, a conspicuous, ornate gate with an intense red glow emanating from behind it. Did you swallow a thesaurus while I was asleep? Pray remain unobtrusive, feline. Stop right there, little chicklet. What's your business with the Corvins? Uh, are you talking to me, ma'am? Why, yes. Yes, I am, sweetheart. You are trying that door over there, and it's for me to decide who goes or doesn't go through it. I just got really curious. Such an interesting door! Why, yes! Yes, it is very interesting. What business have you with the Corvins? Okay, I lied. I just need to go in to follow that cable there. Trying to restore the internet and the GPS to the place, you know, doing some good. Oh, so you're with the people that come fiddle with the cables every once in a while? Exactly. Well, they all know the answer, so tell me this. How many pieces did Corvin's heart break into? Three hundred and eighty-six. Well, at least you've shown conviction, haven't you? Be on your way now, Chicklet. I'm not really sure I understand what's going on here. You can't grasp the concept of password-protected entry? Don't they have internet where you came from, Chicklet? I seem to have forgotten my password. Any suggestions on how to proceed? There's always the password recovery system, Chicklet. Oh, cool. How do I access that? Ah, Lord knows where he is right now. It's a he? Yes, that's my husband, Iwan. He could be anywhere right now, but he's probably hanging around the inn, like always. How do I recognize your husband? Big silly black hat and bigger and sillier white moustache. Thanks! Actually, never mind. It's a tourist info thing about the statue in town in general. Yep, just as I suspected, it's a Vlad. 
A pretty powerful light bulb illuminating that info thingy. It's way too hot to touch and I don't see a light switch. You don't need to involve me in all your foolishness, you know? I... I know, I know. What a lovely place! Just stay alert. I can smell the tension in the air. Well, that's probably just customers waiting for their meals to arrive. It takes time to dice up the meat enough to hide the stab wounds. <sighs> Okay, there's a thick glove that somehow made its way up there. I can't imagine how that would happen, but there it is. As has often been the case, can't reach it. Yo, Kitty, I need your climbing skills to get that glove up there, but do it, um... Do it stealthily, okay? Gotcha. I'm an ninja. Show off. <laughs> I'll bet that guy spends hours in the mirror daily. Evening. Yeah, hello. Do I know you? Please go away. My name's Buzz, and I'm a tourist. My name is Vasile, and I'm the alpha male. I'm not bragging, I don't want it to sound confrontational, just putting it out there so it's crystal clear. Okay, Vasile, I can respect that, I think. So, what's up? Look, man, I'm kind of busy trying to get the waitress's attention. Would you mind bothering someone else? Sheesh, fine. Wait a minute. Maybe you could help. Really? How? Come stand next to me. That way I'll shine even more by contrast, you know? Thanks. I'll pass. Have you seen a girl called Peace around? Not since I've been sitting here. And you can trust me. If there's anything I would have noticed, it would be a girl. Is she pretty? Never mind. Nice beard. Of course it's nice. It's only seen the inside of the best rated beard salons in the country. You have beard salons in Transylvania? Oh, cause we're Transylvanians and we should just let our facial hair grow out like animals, right? Bigot. Hey, I'm Romanian too. With that sad excuse of a five o'clock shadow? Please. Oh, brother. So, this waitress... Anna. Anna, how do you plan on getting her attention? Other than my stunningly styled hair, impeccably waxed beard and rock-hard abs? Uh, I think that's as far as this plan goes. That's it? What if your interests are completely opposite, or your characters don't match? Wait, what do you mean? We both look good. Are you interested in anything else other than her looks? Uh, I... Uh, I don't think I understand your question. Never mind, dude. See you around. Looks like a vial of vinegar. Hmm. Watch out! What? What? You, you just said watch out! I did? Oh, I did. What? Oh, watch out! That there is not vinegar! It's not? What? No, it's a powerful solvent. 
I, uh, uh, I mislabeled it. <laughs> Silly me. Nearly killed myself with it. Not to mention me. Can I still have it? What? Yes, yes, take it. Just don't put it in your salad. What? What? Oh, darn it, now I'm doing it too. Uh, thanks. This stuff looks like it's extra powerful. Better be careful with it. It's a fork with very bent tines. I mean, who knows? It might come in handy. This guy's really enjoying his food. Hi there! Huh? What? My name is Buzz. I'm happy for you, son. What? What? Okay. How do you like this inn? It's pretty good, considering it's the only one. That makes sense. So... Yes, what? Hmm, where was I? How should I know, son? What? Never mind. Um, nothing? All right then. What? I'm here about the password recovery. What? What's that? I forgot my username and password. You what? Um, I mean, I forgot my password. Oh. All right. Well, do you have the letter? Letter? What letter? The Y. What? What? No, I'm afraid I don't. Come back when you have it, Sonny. Gotta scoot. What? All right then. These guys really love their pictures. Nicely decorated, too. Hey, it's an old-timey radio. Charming. And welcome back, listeners, throughout Transylvania and indeed the whole of Romania. That was, um, let me see here. Oh, well, apparently I have no idea who was singing that, but, uh, oh boy, what a stinker. Maybe we're better off not ever knowing, right? Right, well, never mind that, you know, that's the exception right here on Garlic Radio, because we only play the top Transylvanian hits. Uh, uh, uh. It's your boy, wait, no, it's your main man, Yanku, and we'll be spending the next hour or so together, so buckle up, everybody. No, seriously. Whether you are in an autonomous or animal traction vehicle, wear the seat belts. Please? They don't put those potholes in the road for nothing, you know what I'm saying? Ah, 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 ah. Ooh, I crack myself up sometimes. Anyway, dear listeners, here's a weather update. We have no idea what's happening anymore. Darn it, weather. What is this? Some kind of a joke? And what's this hurricane, Herbie, or whatever they call it, doing here? Hurricanes? In my Transylvania? And not only that, apparently it's messing with the GPS and internet in certain areas. I'm told the uh, Forum Maris is affected by this. Well, Forum Marisians, I hope you're receiving this. You should at least have a garlic radio in your life, am I right? Sure, I'm right. All righty, where were we? Color, you're on the air. You're on the air. Yanko? Yes, you're on the air, friend. No, wait. Is it really Yanko? Yes, it's a me. You're on the air. Really? Oh, whoa, oh. Okay. You know, this always gets me. You call the radio specifically to talk to me, and then you're surprised when you finally do, and you don't believe it's me. 
So many people doing that. I don't get it. It's like, um, it's like if I called the police and they answered and I'd be surprised as the police and, and questioned it. Jeez, okay, I I'm sorry. Ah, no, 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 don't be sorry. I'm just a little jumpy today. Just feeling these crazy times we're living in a bit more intensely today. Must be these weird mood swings the weather's been having. <sighs> All right, dear. What's your name and what are you calling about? There's a team. You know there's a team, right? Yes, yes, absolutely. That's why I call. I'm Jon. Everyone calls me Johnny. I'm a... I, I used to work the wolves up the old road leading to Castle Negrum. Work the wolves? What is that? Some kind of a crazy young man lingo like... Sweet? Or... Ghost riding the whip or things get say nowadays? No, 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 no. I, I was working with actual wolves, you know. We'd have these wolves that would just run along the carriage and howl as tourists were transported to the castle. And then, and then we can't do it anymore. Well, my dear, it's not that I don't respect your profession, but wild animals should be left to be wild. Surely not used as tourist attractions. No, but you don't understand. I wasn't hurting the animals or making them do it. We grew up together. Look, granted, you don't sound like the most polite and civilized person I've ever conversed with, to be sure, but I wouldn't exactly say you were raised by wolves. Not by, with. See, my father was a woodsman, and he found these wolf puppies. Who knows what happened to their mother? And so we kept them, and we raised them. Are you pulling my leg here? No, sir. You can ask anyone living in the area. Everybody knew my daddy. Good old Edward the Woodsman. Well, Ned to most people. Good man. Is he not around anymore? Uh, no. Ugly, ugly chopping accident. He really got carried away with a promotion and, um, kind of lost his head. Oh, that's a shame. So sorry to hear that. Uh, so this wolf's, uh... Yeah, me and my siblings each got one. Wait, you said wolves at first, not wolf. What, did you move in on your siblings' pets or something? No, see, they, uh, my siblings, uh, they kind of started dropping like flies. Oh my, forgive me for sounding insensitive, but your family seems really, really fragile. Yeah, well, I guess we have a tendency to stick our noses where we don't belong, and then, whoops, nose gone, so to speak. Yes, anyway, so I had these wolves and almost no close relatives to speak of, right? Well, we took a job as uh, security guards first. You and the wolves? Together? Well, yes, they let us work together because, you know, security. Mind you, these are really tame wolves. Like dogs, really. I get it, I get it. So, was this like a mole you were guarding? Uh, no, um... A, a wall. You were guarding a wall? Pretty much, yeah. See, there were things on the other side of the wall. Things? And I kind of let them all come in. Oh, wow, okay. So, so I was unemployed, so we got this gig running the walls along the carriages headed to the castle. And then that one we lost too. And you know why? No idea. Another wall? No. Tourists. Complaining, too dangerous. One, these are tame wolves, friendly. All they do is howl. Two, they do not want fear and excitement, because that's our brand. I just don't get it anymore. I feel for you, Johnny. Yeah, they're making me use huskies. Huskies. How can I look my wolves in the eye anymore? <sighs> I don't know what to say, brother. Anyway, gotta go. Apparently, there's going to be this meeting, and I have to be there. There's this new kid I'm supposed to show the ropes to. Well, that's nice, at least. What's his name so we can give him a shout-out? Um, uh, I think it's Ollie? All right, Ollie and Johnny. Hope you guys get along. Good luck with the wolves and the castle and the wall and everything. Thanks, Yanku. Coming! Poof, all right. That was a... Um, surreal call. I think I can say that. Not quite. I mean, let's say on the edge of believability and stuff like that. We wish you good luck, Johnny. It seems you and your family have been dealt a pretty bad card in life. Hey, what are you gonna do, right? 
Sometimes you're the snake. Sometimes you're the vampire. Who knows? Maybe one day you'll make something of yourself. And take care of those wolves, will you? Good luck to you, kid. Sheesh. All righty then. Where were we? Oh, right. I was going to check in with the nation, feel its pulse and vibration on the one and only... Hello? On the one and only... Garlic Station? That's it, dear listener. Phew, we were almost getting far enough from my initial gambit for the rain not to work anymore. But then you turned it around like a horse cart in the... Like a horse cart. <laughs> I sure did, didn't I? Yes, you did, dear listener. And my screen over here says your name is Mishu, right? Uh, well, it's Mihai, really. And frankly, I'm a little upset your producer would take such liberty with people's names like that. Oh, come on! We are all friends here, Mishu. Mihai. Yeah, whatever. So, you are aware that there's a team, right? Um... Really? Well, I, uh, don't know if I'll stick with it. I think I'll just wing it, you know? That's my motto in life, too, Alex. Mishu. Oh, snap. Ah, ah, ah. L-O-L, -L, as the kids say, right there? So, was there something you felt you needed to communicate to the Garlic Nation? Yes. I love you, Mariwara. Oh, brother. Should've known. Should've known. Are you at least sure she's listening, Fen? Who cares? The world must know! Alrighty. Well, now that we got that out of the way, anything else, Mishu? Huh. Well, I never really thought much farther than that. You didn't, did you? Marriage? Kids? Marriage? You love that girl, don't you? Isn't it your biggest desire to spend the rest of your life with her? I mean, yes, sort of. I mean, yes, I love her, but the rest of my life, that sounds very final. Leave it to unmarried man to use such a bone-chilling word as final to describe a blissful, everlasting marriage. Oh, brother. And children. What do you mean? They are pure joy, those little rascals, don't you know? Um, well, yeah, but aren't they noisy? 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 Understatement of the year, my dear Paul, but hey, eventually they grow up and, well, they go in the exact opposite direction. You know, they hit 16, they don't talk to you anymore, you suck, everything about you sucks. <clears throat> well, it seems I inadvertently scared him off. Eh, what are you gonna do? Everlasting love is not for everyone, my dear listeners. Okay, where were we? Just a quick reminder of today's discussion team, folks. So, my dears, today we're talking about tourism in Transylvania. What this cookie foreigners expect of us and what we deliver. Have we grown soft? Is our bloody reputation just not cutting it anymore? Should we be ramping up the non-communication, obfuscation, shunning and general bad temper? Does anyone really ever fear for their life when they come here anymore? I want to hear your thoughts on it. Don't leave me hanging. <laughs> See what I did there? Holler, you're on the air. Hello, Yanko. This is Maria speaking. Hello there, darling. What are your thoughts on today's team here? A couple of things, Yanko. Is there one of these, you know, picturesque horse-drawn taxi carriages? Oh, yes. How's that business doing? Terrible, just terrible. I mean, 
to all this complain about us using GPS devices because it's not believable. I mean, my goodness, take a look around, people. Want me to get you to your destination or would you prefer we get lost in eternally dark and damp woods, people? Make up your mind, you silly person. Yes, I see your point, Anna. I mean, isn't it enough we have no highways for so-called credibility and a genuine rustic feeling? Uh, sometimes I feel I've had it up to here with our rustic charm, to be completely honest. Enough's enough! You're telling me? And now this storm, like it wasn't bad enough as it is, knocked out GPS and internet in a lot of places. Now they're complaining when I have to turn them down, because I can't navigate anywhere reliably. And there's thunderstorms starting out of nowhere all the time. Yes, yes, weather's gone completely crazy lately. I was just talking about that before. Well, that's all I wanted to say. I'm completely fed up, Yanku. I'm considering just buying a regular car and going broke, just like the rest of the taxi people. That's a risky proposition right there, sister. But you do what you feel best for your business. Yes, I have to seriously think about it. Words gone crazy, Yanku. Thank you for taking my call. Sure thing, Dora. Thanks for calling in. See, folks, it's always the little guy that suffers. Always. These smarty pants tourists complaining about technology all the time. <laughs> Are we branding our region as well as we should be? Are we not allowed to move forward with the times just like everybody else? Are we cursed with this bloody, rustic, vampire business model? What are we offering to the world? And what is it asking of us? All very important questions, yes. And we'll try to answer them after these words from our sponsors. After these words from our sponsors! Oh, great. Great! My producer's telling me the commercial tape is jammed again. And you know why? Because... Tourists complained we were using electronic format to store our audio in. Yes, tourists listening to garlic radio complained. So management made us use tapes again. Tapes! You know what? With tapes it's all fine and good and dandy. It's so great. So, so great. Until the tape gets caught in the machine, and you are doomed! And you know why that happens, dear friend? You wanna know why? Can I give you a hint? It's all in the name, folks. Tapes! That's what they are! These narrow, physical, flat, shiny pieces of tape! And what's the purpose of tape? What's the one purpose of tape other than being an obsolete retainer of data? That's right, dear listener. The one purpose of tape. The thing which it does best, which I suspect it was designed to do best is... Get caught in machinery and ruin your day! And not just your day, your, your livelihood. Because now... We can't tell you about Motel Bored Deep in the Carpathians because we have no more audio because we used tapes. So, dear foreigners complaining about how we're not authentic anymore here in Transylvania, good luck finding your motel in the Carpathian. Because I don't have the means to let you know what its whereabouts are. And they are probably going to want their money back from us. And can I blame them? Well, I could, but uh, that would be kind of unfair, don't you think? Well, you know what else is modern and out of place and unauthentic in Transylvania? Radio! That's right! Goodbye and good riddance! <laughs> And welcome back, listeners, to Transylvania, and indeed, the whole... I think they're the owners of this fine establishment. Hi! Hello, foreigner! Greetings, stranger! My name's Kerwin, Buzz Kerwin. Rodika. And this is my husband, Istvan. Wait, did you say... Kerwin? Yes, I'm actually half Romanian myself. Tulai, Domnia, Ishti, are you thinking what I'm thinking? Yes, dear, and I don't like it one bit. What? Nothing. Never mind. 
<laughs> oh, why does everything have to be so mysterious and complicated? What was that about my name? Oh, it's just... Uh, how do you spell that? K-E-R-W-A-N See? That doesn't sound like a local name. Not at all. Has it been altered in the last few generations? You know, I really have no idea. Wait, altered from what? Istvan, let it go. It's the gentleman's business. But Cor... Shush! Cor what? Enjoy your stay in scenic Transylvania, my friend. I'm looking for a girl. This is not that kind of thing. No, no, a particular girl. Her name is Peace. Is this some kind of uh, social commentary metaphor you're trying to pull? Pretty beautiful if it is. Uh, no, I mean it in the most literal way. Look, we have to be very skeptical to strangers around here. Especially foreigners. Don't ask, we just do. Foreigner, stranger... No one ever seems to be welcoming anymore. I'm starting to think it's me. Oh, it's uh, not you. We have to... Istvan, you should stop talking now. Now I'm even more curious. Curiosity is a very healthy thing. Up to a certain point. Then, it can start to become extremely unhealthy. I love when you put complicated things into concise sentences. Even simple people can understand, Rodi. Oh, stop it, you charmer. I'm still curious about your unwelcoming attitude. I mean, this is an inn, right? We are, um... We have to be skeptical toward foreigners. Have to? And I'm half Transylvanian. Half Transylvanian, huh? Okay, okay. Let's say you need to earn our trust. Here then. How would one go about earning your trust then? Suika! Gesundheit. You said you're half Transylvanian. Suika is our local drink. 60% alcohol. 60? And you expect me to ingest that? I can't trust a man unless he drinks with me. What century is this again? It's our tradition. So, we drink? Hit me. Nurok! There you go! Now, ask me anything. I don't understand! Come back when you're sober, eh? <laughs> Talk to you guys later. Servus. A quite voluminous guy unlit pipe in his mouth. Hey, 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 hey. Greetings, my skinny friend. Oh, my. Hey, hey there. Good to meet someone friendly. <laughs> Have you been talking to these grams around here? Uh, don't judge them too harshly. That's standard foreigner procedure. Standard procedure? This must be a cultural barrier thing, I'm baffled. I am afraid it's not for me to explain. 
So, let's just leave it at that. So, what is it you wanted to talk to me about, Sonny? My name's Buzz, Buzz Kerwin. Luca, the coachman, at your service. How's the coach business going, Luca? It really depends on where you want to go. It's been several days now that we have no GPS signal. Strange times indeed. You need GPS for your coach? Well, again, it depends on where you want to go. Some places are very difficult to access, even to an experimented coachman like me. So, me and Rosie have to relay on technology, you know? But everything is so traditional around here. Ah, uh, don't let appearances fool you. We have some of the fastest internet in the world, friend. It just sort of went away locally, along with the GPS signal. just went away? You didn't look into it? Everyone who was good at computers moved away years ago, sadly. Tech support should be on its way. Unfortunately, with no GPS and the treacherous terrain, plus this weather, who knows when they'll arrive. What if I told you I'm tech support? Well, uh, you'd make Luca a very happy man. See, my love life... <sighs> yes? <sighs> Why am I about to pour my heart out to a stranger? Because I'm incredibly well versed in matters of the heart. Oh, look, my friend. See that beautiful waitress over there. Her name's Anna. The prettiest name in the world. Just listen to it. Anna. Anna. Luca is so in love with her. Uh, sorry, but what does this have to do with the GPS and Internet being down? Well, this isn't the Middle Ages, Buzz. I can't just walk up and talk to her like some troglodyte. You can't? <laughs> no, no, no. Of course not. Not in this digital day and age. Oh, I can't rest until I see which way she swipes for me on garlic. Is that some kind of a dating app? The best there is in Transylvania. Well, what if she's just not into you? Oh. Luca will just look for another girl, I guess. But I need to know first. Can't make any moves before that. Huh, that's a very mature way to see things. Nice. Eh, life is too short to cry over spilled milk, friend. <laughs> Plenty of pretty girls in Transylvania. Don't you worry about that. I just hope she doesn't fall for that hipster Vasile. With his trimmed beard and his fancy haircut. Huh? What if I go ask her for you? What is this? Fort grained in the 18th century? Huh? I'd be left out of the inn. <sighs> what are you eating there, Luca? Oh, 
just had my mamaliga. But I'm afraid it's all gone. Do you think I could have the little cauldron? I'll bring it back. Well, uh, sure. As long as Rodica doesn't notice. Help yourself. Luca, help me out with this Tsuika thing. No, 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 no. Thank you. Got to keep a clear head when steering the couch. <laughs> I meant, do you have any idea what I can do so it doesn't hit me like a freight train? Um, I remember reading about that on a forum recently. But my memory isn't what it used to be. If only the internet was working. Nice pipe. Thanks. <laughs> Tell you the truth, I haven't smoked in 24 years, but I feel it gives me some facial balance. Okay. See you later, Luca. Talk to you soon, Buzz. Okay, this should stop it from burning my fingertips. Wait, what do you think you're doing? What? I'm... I need this bulb. My folks are from around these parts. Oh, sure. Silly me. Why don't you grab the statue while you're at it? Hey, I'll, I'll bring it back, okay? I, I need this. For such a goody two-shoes, you sure do borrow things a lot. Shut up, cat. A single, solitary, lit window. Who's in there and why? Why am I even asking these questions? Don Imagos. Artist, creator, director, actor, visionary, modern-day Viking. Brought important contributions to the art of indie game making to Transylvania from the distant lands of the New World. It's a local kid playing on his phone. Hello, young man. What's up? Playing on my phone. Do I know you? Just being friendly, that's all. Uh-huh. So, what are you playing? Call of Beauty 6. I thought shooters sucked on mobile. <sighs> Call of Beauty is not a first-person shooter. It's a survival game. Survival game? Really? Yeah, really. You roleplay the supermodel, and every once in a while, you have to survive on no food before a show for like three or four days. That's terrible! Games have changed since your days, old man. Everything is realistic now. Disturbingly so. Nice place, this town. Nothing ever happens here, and I can't even get data on my phone anymore. But yeah, great place. Well, if you looked up from that screen every once in a while, you'd see that it is. Oh, jeez, you're one of those, aren't you? We get it. You grew up hitting a ball against the wall, not glued to the screen. You were so much better off. Thanks for the insight. Bye. Well, no, that's, uh, that's not really what I meant. I was a nerd just like you. Oh yeah, you're totally hip to geekdom and down with the youth, pups. 
Have you seen a girl called Peace around? No, I haven't, because I'm one of those losers who won't look up from their screens at the real world. Right? <sighs> Later. Uh huh. I think it's this kid's slingshot just lying in the grass. That's a cool slingshot you got there, kid. Yes, isn't it crazy that I know about more than just computer screens and video games? Mind blowing. I know. Oh, come on. Mind if I take a look at it? Yeah, cuz I'm just giving my deadly slingshot away to a stranger. Sure. Isn't it cooler and more realistic than a video game? I don't know, but it can realistically take your eye out. So which of these two is worse? You tell me. Well, if you put it that way... I made it way too deadly. The world's not ready for it. Right. That thing does not look deadly. It's only made from the toughest wood you'll find around these parts and a virtually unbreakable rubber band. And I've used industrial grade glue to put the thing together. Not only is it deadly, it's indestructible. Okay, okay, I believe you. Good. Now leave me alone, please. Thank you. That slingshot of yours. <laughs> I'll bet I can take it apart. Easy. <laughs> really, dude? You're on. What are we wagering? Just the satisfaction of being right and in the other guy's face, kid. <laughs> okay, then. It's on. Later. Uh huh. Ha! In your face, kid. Man, that stuff was powerful. Hey, what do you know? An X slingshot. You must have cheated or something. Just admit defeat, Junior. Fine, who cares? I was bored of that thing anyways. So, can I keep the parts? Whatever. Later. Uh-huh. Oh no, not another tourist info point. Thankfully, this one seems to be abandoned. I've had enough of tourist information stuff for a while. This lady is really interested in that mural up there. Hi there, I couldn't help but notice you're examining that mural up there. Pardon me? Oh, yes, indeed I am, yes. Can you tell me anything about it? Why, of course. You see, there is a certain ambiguity in regard to the vivacious and decidedly histrionic undertones of the disjunctive perturbation present within the artist's essentially transitional brushwork. Wouldn't you say? Uh... Of course, you must not let this hint of overspecificity on my part overshadow the obviously resonant spatial relationships between the reductive quality of the lines and the commitment to a rigorously formal approach on the artist's behalf. Actually... What you must understand is that the work echoes its own edges with its obsequious interior dialogue, and even replicates itself, paradoxically denying any allusion to a juxtaposed mythopoetical reality.
Yeah, but what does it all mean? Are you paying attention, young man? It signifies that the structuralist paradigm under which the creator diligently operated is flush with interpolated post-dialectic musings that cannot be rightfully ignored. Uh, that's oversimplifying it a bit, but yeah, okay. What is the significance of the divided heart? It is clearly a corollary of the coronary metaphors which permeate the opacity and quintessential divergence of pervasive aesthetic hierarchies in the artist's oeuvre. Uh, I agree. What can you tell me about this bus ticket? An incisive voyagerial metaphor, rectangularly encased in an obviously sarcastic homage to utter futility and cavalcading materialism. I'll leave you to your critique. Indeed, indeed. A spotlight that's supposed to be lighting that heart thing on the wall, I think. It's not working. No light bulb. Perfectly functional light bulb seeking healthy, compatible socket. Could you please not say that? Perfectly. F Could you please? I think it requires a light bulb. Actually, I'm positive. And it fits. Nice. Symmetry, I am really into you. Oh man, what a neat looking balcony. I'd love to have one just like that. Indeed. This is your brain on walls. It's a withered portrait of a man with a fiercely intense stare. There's... there's something about him, something strange but familiar. Huh, a heart-shaped mural. It's got like a circle in the middle and... Uh... Yeah, I have no idea what this is. It's the city's ancient walls. You can almost feel hundreds of years of history, um, leaking from them? I'm not good at this. An intricate monochrome mural in stark contrast with the intense colors all around it. It seems to tell a pretty convoluted story. An intricate monochrome, it seems to... My word, that's... that's gorgeous! This is my homeland, kitty. She doesn't care. A senior citizen enjoying his time on that bench. Good evening. A good evening to you, young man. 
Such a pretty town for Umaris. Yes, and an old and storied one too. Oh, if these walls could speak. The birds, the deaths, the wars. Maybe it's better that they can't speak. Boy, what a sight, huh? Yes, yes, it is superb. The rolling hills with their scents of hay and white flowers. The gently grazing herds. Sometimes I wish they placed this bench the other way around. But um, I guess this way you can admire the mural. Is the painting old? <laughs> old? Yes. Older than most things in this town. How old exactly though, I cannot tell you. Is there a story behind it? Yes, there is. But do you have the time to listen to it? Yes, I do. Now, legend has it that a long, long time ago, on top of a mountain overlooking Forumaris, a Solomonar, that's an ancient wizard, was conjuring thunder and rain when, below, a terrifying Balaur, that's a dragon, attacked the town. The masks, sworn defenders of the town, could not defeat the dragon, but could not live either, so they sent an innocent young shepherd girl by the name of Miwara and her dog Azor to beg for the Solomonar's assistance. Miwara and Azor's journey up the mountain was not without peril. See, the Solomonar had laid many traps and cunning magical obstacles to stop anyone from disturbing his ritual. But Miwara and Azor were smart and agile and resilient, so they made it to the mountain top and told of the dragon's attack. But the Solomonar was red with anger and could not see beyond the fact that a girl and her dog had conquered his defenses. And since they had proven to be smart and agile and resilient, he transformed Miwara and Azor into a black and a white cat, forever cursed to roam the hills and mountains without ever resting again. Then he did make his way down to Forum Maris and found it in smoldering ruins, and the masks all but defeated, making their last stand against the beast. He fought the dragon for three days and three nights, and finally crushed it down into the mountain, burying it in the bowels of the earth. Afterwards, he cried tears of remorse for foolishly cursing the shepherd girl and her dog and erected a monastery in their remembrance. That castle above the town that everyone fears, its steeple is all that remains of the monastery the Solomonar built ages and ages ago. It became corrupted and some folks say that it's from the evil that the remains of the dragon still hold. I hear the masks are once again guarding the castle now that its rightful heir has returned. But who would risk going all the way there to see if it's true? Not many, dear. Not many. Wow, that was fascinating. I'm glad to hear you say that, young man. I'm still here to tell the story, but for how long? No one really knows or cares about it other than me and the masks themselves. Maybe once I'm gone, so it shall disappear into oblivion. Let's hope not. I'll be off now. Have a nice evening. You too, young man. Goodbye.
Behave, kid A. I know, I know, you haven't said or done anything. Just saying. It's a girl with a cat on a leash. Hello, little girl. Hi. My name's Buzz, and this is my cat, Kitty. Nice to meet you. I'm Maria, and this is Xx. What in the name of all that is sacred and holy? <gasps> Your kitty can't talk. Yes, she can. For some reason, people don't usually notice. Oh my god. Is she magical? As magical as they come. Cool! That's a unique looking doggy. He's not a doggy, silly. Can't you see he's a kitty cat? We're really stretching the definition here. But how come he barks? Well, he was raised by a doggy. Duh. His adoptive mommy was a Carpathian sheepdog. Oh. Nice! An actual son of a- That's a very cool and unique story. So, his name is, uh, Kiskus? Uh-huh. That's how you get his attention. I want to name him something else, but I haven't come up with anything better yet. I understand. Kiskus! I am now the second most embarrassed cat around. What are you up to, Maria? Oh, just walking. He gets real antsy if I don't walk him at least twice a day. He likes that, huh? Yeah, he's the happiest kitty when he's in nature. I'd love to take him on a walk in the hills or in the mountains, but mom and dad won't let me. It's too far away. I see. Did you happen to see a black girl around? No. I would have remembered that. Almost everyone around here is basically white. It's so boring. Well, it hasn't been sunny in a while either, has it? No, and weather's been crazy lately. Thunderstorms out of the blue. That's why I can't walk in the hills anymore. Uh-huh. I'm a tourist. What can you tell me about Formaris? Well... Everyone says nothing ever happens here, so... God, I hope that's true. Catch you later, Maria. See you! I've got the letter! Alright, you'll need the illuminator. What? What's an illuminator? Thingamajig! Makes light. What? You know what to do with it, right? Sure! Alright then, you're set. What was that? Thanks, bye! There we go. It will now project a Y on that heart shape. It's neatly divided into nine parts. I guess that's my password right there. It's neatly divided into nine parts. I guess that's my password right there.
Nine pieces. That's right, Chiclet. Go on in, then. Wait, wait! I look at you now in this light and... Oh! oh. Corvinus! I... I... Forgive me for doubting. You know, you know, of course you know. You are back, Corvinus! I'm sorry, is this like some Max's granted ritual I'm not completely understanding? Corvinus! Corvinus Redivivus! She's gone. Well, someone got really excited about you for some reason. There's that. She was also married and more than a century old. There's that, too. Let's just go in and figure out this blackout. Corvinus! Corvinus! Shut up, kitty! A severely battered bust. I think it's supposed to be the guy in the portrait. It's unmovable, and I'm frankly afraid to touch it. There's like swords sticking out of it. Holy wow, someone really doesn't want anyone to get past that door. That's by far the most secured ancient Transylvanian door I've ever come across. There is no way in heaven, earth, or purgatory I'm getting past that door. I mean, I I'm curious, but no way we're ever opening this. It's a withered portrait of a man with a fiercely intense stare. There's... there's something about him, something strange but familiar. Now they protrude out of the wall like little fragile bones, bathed in the red disturbing light cast from that sinister window. Easy there, Lovecraft. Had they still been a ladder? Yeah, definitely. Yep, that's our internet cable, all right. Looks like it's going up into the ceiling there. Can't reach it. Aha! Uh -huh. So that's where the cable goes. Oh, I can sense it coming. I'm not exactly short, but that hatch is way out of reach. Go get that hatch, girl! Fine. Ouch! What do you know? Got myself a cute little makeshift helmet. The things I do for you, Kerwin. I think I found the source of the problem. It's some kind of internet GPS jammer thing. And now it's history. You're awesome, Kid A. Tell me something I don't know. Luca! The internet's back on! Oh yes, yes. I was just getting on garlic. Let's see here. Oh. Oh. Oh man, what is it? I is it bad? Well, uh, kind of, but uh, in a way, not really. Did she go for you or Vasile? Um, neither. She's into girls. Huh. Who knew? <laughs> oh man, sorry about that. Hey, don't worry about it. 
plenty of fish in the sea. At least that hipster Vasile doesn't stand the chance either, right? <laughs> <laughs> right, but could you look up that thing about Suica now? Oh, sure thing. Let's see... All right, here it is. Buzz says here that swallowing a spoonful of vegetable oil before drinking coats your inside so that alcohol doesn't absorb. That might actually work, but don't try this at home and all that. Never underestimate your audience's intelligence trend. Here, have some of mine. Norok. Uh, that was almost worse than Tsuika. Uh, all right, it would seem I'm oiled up and ready to go. I'll have that drink with you. All right, here you go. Norok! Okay, friend. Ask me anything. All right, what's with the nasty attitude? Rodi looks like he's one of ours. That's what I was afraid of, Ishti. Look, it's nothing personal. There are certain expectations people have from townsfolk living next to ancient castles in Transylvania. Yes, it was either this or perpetually scared and covering in the dark corners. But there's no need to be scared. Not anymore. So, we're just nested to foreigners since they kind of expect it. <laughs> just a recommendation from the Transylvanian Tourist Board. Not tourist boards again! Anything else expected of you regarding foreigners? Oh, you know, silently frowning when asked anything, running out of the room all of a sudden, the classics. We used to do the whole torches and pitchfork thing every once in a while. Ah, that was fun. Until these numbskulls almost burned down an entire street. We've been holding on to that for really special occasions. I still say Vasily poked me in the butt intentionally last February. He's always envied my mustache. Always. Oh, shut up, Istvan. What can you tell me about Luca, the coachman? Good guy, Luca. Very nice man. And Rose is a great girl too. His wife? His horse. Oh, okay. What did you mean by nothing to be afraid of anymore? The ancient castle up on the craggy hill. It's got a pretty bad reputation. Actually, so bad that no one ever even claimed it for hundreds of years. Until... Baron Ferenczi came, that is. Him and his strange sounds and experiments. Well, that all lasted until one night there was a big boom. And no one ever saw the Baron or his men again. Hmm, weird. How does this Ferenczi look? No one ever saw his face. Always huddled up in a huge trench coat and his face hidden. We're all glad to be rid of him. If rid we are. Curse him for messing with our superior Transylvanian broadband. This is all fascinating, but I'm here looking for a girl named Peace. Yes, she was here. She got some supplies and left 
for the castle. Then I need to get to the castle. Talk to Luca. He'll probably take you there if there's GPS again. Is the castle abandoned now that Ferenci is apparently gone? Oh no! Its rightful heir, Vlad, has since returned. Vlad, huh? Indeed! Tell me something about this Vlad. He loves... Yes? To battle! Oh boy. What else can you tell me about the castle? Well, it actually was an old monastery. Hundreds of years ago. It somehow got corrupted sometime in the past. And they tore it down. Yes, nothing but the steeple remained. And they built the castle around it. Interesting. Well, thanks for everything, Rodika and Istvan. You're welcome. We're just glad to be able to be our own hospitable selves again. Isn't that right, Isti? It is! And the sooner you get the heck out of our town, region and country, the better for everyone. Enjoy your stay in a beautiful scenic Transylvania. Thanks, I will. Hey, Luca, could you take me to the castle? To be honest, I'd rather not. But what the heck? You're my friend now. Meet me outside when you're ready. See you later, Luca. Talk to you soon, Buzz. Well, Kitty, I guess it's off to the castle. Yep. Vlad's castle. Let's do it. So you were apprehensive around the town folk, but a guy called Vlad in a dark castle on a craggy hill that's actually a desecrated monastery just gets a, uh, sure, let's do this? Don't take this personally, Buzz, but the fewer humans, the better. Well, maybe except Luca. He seems marginally better. Good guy, Luca. group of fierce, intimidating masks are blocking our way to the castle. I say you let us through. Do my eyes and ears deceive me? It... it spoke! Yes, it did, and it wants to get to the castle, so step off, clowns! Let us not be hasty here. But it's just like in the tale! It is not just like in the tale. I only see one talking cat. Must be just clever trickery. It's not. She can actually speak. Silence, deceiver! But... It is not just like in the tale. It is some kind of trick. Be gone! Walk no further. Turn away and leave. Hi, it's imperative that I make it to the castle. We are under strict orders not to let anyone through. Turn around, leave, do not return. Strict orders from who? From he who rightfully owns the place. Turn around, leave. Nice evening, huh? Turn around, leave. That was a little rude of you. Come on, I really need to get through. Not without word from the master. He's expecting me. No one is expected. 
We know nothing of you. Leave and do not return. I need to talk to Vlad right away. Truly, you mock us. Leave! I think I'll return to town. Bye. Hey, Maria, here's an idea. Why don't I walk in the mountains for you? I'm headed that way. I don't know about that. <sighs> look, I normally would tell you never to give your pet away to a stranger, but... Look, I'm on a magical quest, and I need Kiskis's help. What do you say? I'll bring him right back. Hmm... I would say no, but... You do have a magical talking cat, and you don't seem like a bad person. I guess I can make one exception. I would not ask if it wasn't super important, and Kiskis will enjoy the mountain air. All right, bye bye. Hold on right there. I may be young, but I'm not dumb. I hold on your passport until you bring my kitty back. Thank you. You're all right, kid. Come on, Buzz, fork it over. Okay, everyone know their roles, right? Yeah, I'll do my best. I say you let us through. Whoever you are, be... Be gone with your trickery. Who I am? I am Miwara, and this is my trusty sheepdog, Azor. Now step aside and let us through. It is them! It is them! You have returned. You truly have returned. Forgiveness! Forgiveness! I had no way of knowing. You are forgiven. Your path to the castle is open any time. Here he is as promised, safe and sound. Yay! Did he help you on your magical journey? Him and Kitty defeated an army of scary masked people all by themselves. Wow, really? How did they do that? Well, we're cats, so we did what we do best. We outsmarted them. And I think I have the perfect name for your kitty. How's Azor sound? OMG, it's perfect! Azor! Excellent! Well, we must be on our way. Thanks for all your help, Maria and Azor. Take care, Buzz and Kitty. I love you, buddy, but you are one confused feline. All right, I'll admit it. My knees are trembling just a tad. It's a long way down to the bottom. Funny thing, the closer we got to the castle, the redder the sky became. I wonder if it's some kind of local weather phenomenon or... Uh, let's stick with the weather theory.
That was one visual impressive and otherwise terrifying ride. I'd rather not experience it again soon. Pretty standard model as gargoyles go. Man, Steve the gargoyle over at the library is way creepier than this one. A very conspicuous pile of rocks right next to the gate. Aha! The key to the gate was hidden under one of these rocks. Who but Buzz Kerwin could defeat such a display of excellence and security? Get over yourself and let's just get in. See, Kitty? Solve the problem, kept you safe. Yeah, yeah, this damsel in potential distress is overflowing with gratefulness. Let's move. The entire place is lit by flickering candlelight. A total fire hazard, but very atmospheric. Nice and warm, but I don't need them. This place is plastered with depictions of what I can only assume are ancient Romanian rulers. What is it with this movie and rappers, seriously? Well, what is the fascination here? It's I, I, <laughs> I don't know, man. No time for movie watching now. I'm pretty much convinced I need to get myself in there. Uh, uh, uh. No one walks further into the castle unless... Unless what? Chill, I was getting to that. Unless they defeat Vlad in battle. Oh man. This place is plastered. That is the ruler of the castle. He has a very, um, urban vibe around him. He's ignoring me. I'll let you handle this one, gladly. Some kind of family crest, maybe? Cool dragon design on it. Man, if I ever get a family crest, dragon it is. That's a very, very familiar looking guy. Not the same as the one in Foto Maris, but still, where do I know him from? It's a DJ Bald Beard? I don't know. He's way too focused for me to disturb him with chit chat. A very gothic looking chest. Nice. 
As shoddy as it looks, there's a lock here. Looks like I could take it down easily with the right tool. Yay! Unlocked! Let's see what's inside here. Some vinyls? And a gauntlet? Ooh, I like gauntlets. Whoa, that's quite the sight. That's the old monastery's bell tower surrounded by the castle on all sides. Awesome. First, I need to get inside the castle. He's way too focused for me to disturb him with chit-chat. He's ignoring me. I formally challenge you to battle, Vlad. Yeah. Here's the thing I'm telling all contenders all the time First of all, you gotta have a throne before you go for mine You just need my cellar for replacement Ever since back in the days when your mama kicked you off the basement Nice castle! Please excuse me if I'm laughing still I've only seen more cobwebs on the shelf Where you keep your rapping skills old and forgotten Much like your grandeur is Ancestors on the wall so they can mock you over centuries Nah, centuries is how long I'll actually be laughing at just how wrong You look with that women's shirt that you got on Yo, it's like I've seen it in my crystal ball And can't forget it's evident Your cat's the only that you'll ever get With the outfit, dude, eyesight playing tricks Hell, your clothes are like booze and decisions They don't mix well Your looks all over the place I call him like I see him Let me just channel Indy He belongs in a museum You can channel Mr. Jones Till you ain't even close And it shows the only dope stuff You're saying are quotes So now what's next? You're gonna try the two-headed monkey trick? Kid, I could just say grandfather's name And then they'll bow quick battle with you, not with your family name. Your only claim to fame is who your grandpa was? Lame. Highborn, don't make you high-skilled automatically. I don't give a fluffy cat's butt about your pedigree. Uh, yeah. It's not my fault you weak can accept your defeat Your name won't ring any bells, there's no buzz on the street Return to the library where your kind belong This ain't a game, nerd. You're better off reading the Necronomicon. Born librarian, but check the skills I've gotten I've dealt with black magic and cultists This is nothing, it's like easy mode Not even trying, having fun Kitty, cover up this fool with some litter Cause he's done I can't, I can't stop rhyming 
There's something wrong with me, I can't stop rhyming Yo, my words are lethal, syntax too sick for your feeble comebacks Give me any tracks to spit on, I'm sicker than fish with people I'm even sicker than their vicar Seen too much craziness, dark, come to Transylvania Man, it's all a hazy mess, I'm even harder to impress There's cultists coming after me, compared to what I've been through This rap battle's been a laugh to me, ever read the Necronomicon? Please get back to me, now I got a crazy cat that's talking smack to me Sound like fun? Nah, it's one of those raw deals like it feels like a superpower but it only works when she feels like it I'm going nuts, that's what's cracking Hey, this talk of crazy huge monsters in the crack and bay Who knows what's next? One problem at a time, that's how I'm at it I'm turning alcoholics into caffeine addicts Getting bombed by cultists, dodging their dark lords Dreading esoteric orders, hating tourist boards I'm never bored, never a dull moment since this started When your cat freaking remembers every single time you farted I just roll with it There's stuff that I don't get, kind of amazing How do I carry so much crap without a backpack? Man, it's crazy, I stop and stare at everything, not even blinking Then rubbing everything on everything, what am I thinking? Whether in Darkham, Fishmouth or Romania Just stop and talk to random people, it's a mania the crap I have to pull just to get some answers Like dividing hearts, counting pieces for some crazy passwords If it ain't one thing, then it's another Like drinking vegetable oil and fire water? Uh, this world is crazy, surreal, freaking foul and dark Solomon Ars, masks and cats that growl and bark Anyway, I'm out of here, gotta find my cat a remedy Peace, I'm on my way to more insanity Cat? Let's dig deeper into the bowels of the castle and find peace. Roger that. I'll scout ahead and... Not so fast, kitty. I'm going in first. I need to make sure it's safe. I can take care of myself, Kerwin. Plus, I'm stealthy, so... Nonsense. You're a girl, after all. It is my solemn masculine duty to keep us both out of harm's way. Oh, God. Fine, you dingus. Go ahead. Lead. Watch closely. You might learn a thing or two. Death from above! Ah! Whoa, wait! What the? Peace, Busara. Whoa. Y yes. Wh who's asking? What is this? Who's making it talk? It. Tread carefully, human. We're here to. I don't know what tricks you're pulling, Butcher, but I'm not going down without a fight. No Butcher here. I'm a real, bona fide talking cat. Stop struggling and listen. Never! <sighs> I tried. Listen, peace. How do you do this? Talk? A little book called the Necronomicon? Ever heard of it? No. Are you kidding me? No way. Way. Oh, this... this is... this is crazy. Calmed it down yet? Ugh! Listen, me and Buzz over there have come here looking for you. Your dad sent us. Oh, yeah, sure. If that's so, why haven't you untied him? Think of it as an educational pursuit. He's currently learning to stop underestimating me. <laughs> well, if we're on the same side, just set me free. In due time, got some planetary mess to take care of first. Why did you tie up my friend? He's completely harmless. Why don't you set him free, then? Not yet. He is learning something valuable. Uh huh. Got anything out of your weird buddy over there? As a matter of fact, I did. Like the whereabouts of Baron Ferenzi? Mm, maybe. I'm listening. Again, we're on the same side. As soon as you untie me, kitty.
Greetings, biped. Up to the left, then. Up to the right, then. Up to the middle, and back up to the right. Hello, kitty. What was that singing about? Oh, just directions to Grandma's house. I have bad, bad memory, but strong legs. <laughs> right. Tell me about your grandma. Grandma has very bad varicose veins. She does. All the doggies snap at them. They think they're sausages. <laughs> Lovely. What's your name, buddy? Hey, kitty cat. I'm Nelu. I have strong legs. You sure do. What's with all the planet stuff, Nelu? Ooh, I love my planets. You used to be an astromo. Astrono. Astronomer? That's it. Then one day, big metal tube you look at stars to hit me. Right in the head it did. Bonk! Baron, let me move in here and play with planets if I guard the gate. Hatches! Everywhere we go! Hatches! Now I guard the gate? Now I play with planets! Now I play with planets! Now I guard the gate. Up to the left! Hello! So, how do I open this gate, Nelu? Oh, I'm not allowed to tell little kitty cat. Baron says uh, no one allowed. <laughs> Only they look for it down there. Look for what? I don't know for sure. Big, big bat, I think. Big, big bat. Sure. I can't reach it from here. Jumping conditions not adequate. Jumping condition. Jumping conditions. I can't reach it from here.
Jumping condition. your face, humans. I've been enjoying this, but I guess I'll be untying you two now. Please tell me what is going on here. All right, let's take it from the top. So this bozo walks in one night with a weird book and starts reading from it. Thus realizing he was singing the sequence to push the capstones in, thus yet again proving feline superiority. Anything you want to say, Buzz? <sighs> I'm sorry for doubting you. Also, glad we finally found you, Peace. <sighs> well, if Father trusted you two, I guess I should too. So, where is this Baron? It seems like him and his goons are about done with what they came to do here. And they're heading over to Fishmouth. Ugh, not again. Let's head down that hatch right now. And we might still catch him before they're off. Uh, after you, ladies. Looks like we're too late. The Baron's left already. And it seems he got what he was looking for. Who's this Baron? Why were you looking for him? What is he after? Baron Frenzy. Just one of the many names the Butcher goes by. We're both looking at the same thing here. What do you think it is they've dug out of that rock there? I don't dare venture a guess. A huge pair of dragon wings. That's what they got away with. Nothing we can do about it now, Carrier. No end to the work. Dragon wings? Just like in the legend, but hey, I'm, I'm prepared to believe anything at this point. What does this guy need them for? They do call him the Butcher, so I can only assume the worst. Oh, right. No end to the work? What does that mean, Peace? How much of the book have you read? I read a bit of it once. It made Kitty start to talk. I was frankly too terrified to examine it since. Open it at the very last page. It's... it's writing itself. The work is just another name for the Necronomicon. 
And it literally has no end. Yet. Yet? Nothing lasts forever, right? One can hope. So wait a minute, does this mean... I don't know exactly what it means to be truthful. No one really does. What we do know is that it can change reality around it. And it might be controlled while doing so. Not by Buzz. Did you just call me Carrier? That seems to be your role, yes. Again with this deterministic nonsense. That's a mighty big word there, buddy. The book shows you to carry it, and there's nothing you can do about it. What does that make you? I'm a hunter of evils. <laughs> like your dad, huh? He's more of a protector of the other. So everyone has their little role in this production, huh? What's Kitty's then? I, uh... I don't want to speculate on that. Smart girl. The other. Almstein is not like us. You think or you know? Neither. I believe. Uh, never mind. Was it you who installed the communications jammer? I was trying to sabotage the Baron. Much good did that do. You gave us quite the headache. Literally. Sorry, I guess? How did you get past Vlad and his DJ friend? Did you have to bust out some dope rhymes? <laughs> what? No, I'm stealthy. I don't think they even suspect what happened going on underneath them. So what's her next... Wait a minute. My, my phone's ringing. But we're deep underground. Everything's upside down around here. Don, is that you? Finally. Where the heck were you guys? I've been calling forever. Long story. The butcher was here, but he gave us the slip. We did find peace. She's here with us. Hold on, I I'm putting you on speaker. Hello. Uh, yeah, hi. So I found what was hidden in Flamel's abode. The stabilizing element! Yeah, a piece of paper with one phrase written on it. What phrase? I have it right here. One sec. A terrible storm and three bells ringing throughout it shall awaken the beast. A terrible storm. This freak temp is a Hurricane Herbert if it's to be taken literally. I seem to just nearly miss it every time I get somewhere. Until one day you won't. Three bells. There's a bell in this castle. I wonder if it has anything to do with this. And there was a bell above Flamel's place where I found this. So we look for a third one, huh? If Awakening the Beast really is what we want. Good point. <laughs> well, is it? Oh, that sounds exciting at least. I have enough excitement in my life already. Shall Awaken the Beast? Yeah, that part is a little unnerving. It is a little, true. Yeah, I feel the same. It probably still needs to happen, right? Most likely, yes. It probably does. Whatever that means. So this was the constant Barnabas told me about. The stabilizing element. If only we actually knew what that meant. The Necronomicon is ever-changing chaos. If Olmstein wrote it down, whatever this phrase describes, will probably happen, for better or worse. This is all fine and dandy, but what do we do next? I'm convinced the Butcher's left for Fishmouth, with a pair of dragon wings in tow. Fishmouth! Their evil festival should be in full swing by now. Ugh. You and Kitty shouldn't be showing your faces here again. It's my turn to follow this butcher deep into fish with stinking guts. Not without looking like one of them creepy cultists, you're not. You need to see the voodoo gentleman about a disguise, Mr. Katype. The password is Fidelio. Tell him Kitty says hi. All right, kids. Head on over to my office. I'll meet you there once I'm done with the butcher.
I'd made my way to the part of town Buzz lived in, just as wretched and unappealing as the rest of Darkham. But it was dawn, and that seemed to raise my spirits a little. It was time to look for the voodoo gentleman. I think that's a dormitory. Nothing resonates. I don't have the time to be traipsing through dorms. Why am I looking at all this irrelevant stuff? That is one horrible way of advertising your merchandise. Fishmouth's own. Doesn't say so, but it's uh, obviously a fishery. It's a whole lot of fish in there. It's closed. It should open pretty soon, though. Yeesh. Christopher Valiant. Oh yeah, I think I heard of him. I got no interest in this kind of art. It's a right glimmering dame sat down at that bench there. Nah, I shouldn't use that on her. Hey there, what's a nice girl like you doing in this part of town? Charmer, huh? Not really. I try, but I get called out on it a lot. I'm Don. I'm Margot. It's nice to meet you, Don. Yeah, likewise. Got uh, business with the voodoo gentleman? Why do you ask? Oh, I'm sorry. I'm a private investigator. I ask questions for a living. Sometimes I do it without even noticing. Just stop by to thank VG for, um, turning me on to a better path, I guess. Extra straight? No, just talk some sense into me. Let's just say I no longer want to murder my husband. Well, ex-husband now. And I got rid of my toxic lover. Ugh. Oh, well... I'm sure you deserve a good guy for a change. I'm sure I do. So, what are you doing these days? I, uh, roll with a librarian kid with a magic evil book and a talking cat. Just trying to nab this psycho who wants to bring the world to its knees. You're friends with Buzz? Did he pull a fast one on me? Well, it was for the best in the end, so tell him I said thanks. You get around, Margo. Uh, things just happen. Hey, Don. What do you say once you're done with all that? You and me get a coffee. I'd like that, Margo. Then it's a date. Catch you later, Don. Wait, uh, how do we get in touch? I thought you said you were a detective. Smooth. See you when the world is saved, kid. Hey, it's the very voodoo Baron Samedi. Don't mess with the Baron. Cute little voodoo dolls. No resonance whatsoever. Those dolls are best left where they are. Yeah, it's an eye. Pretty popular as symbols go. It's a bust of some tentacle mugged thing. This is what the taxpayer's money goes to. This. Okay. I 
That's my ride to Fishmouth. It's a small, half-open window in the door. Morning. Password? Fidelio. Hello there. Greetings, traveler. Was that password part really necessary? Ah, oh, not this again. The voodoo gentleman, I presume. You presume correctly, sir. And you are? Katype. Don R. Katype. Friend of Buzz's. He was here a while ago. Oh, yeah, yeah. He's all right, I hope. Is the cat in the same predicament? Still a wisecracking nightmare. Yeah. That's unfortunate. Interesting interior design choices. Why, thanks for noticing. A little eclectic, to be sure, but clients seem to appreciate it. You travel a lot, don't you? I can see you've been hitting a lot of the gift shops. Oh, no. I avoid those like the plague. Only authentic stuff for me. Shipping is a pain, though, believe you me. So, uh, what about this Olmstein character? Buzz tells me you says he's a good friend of yours. Yes. Yes, I did say that, didn't I? It's a... Weird, weird thing about Bob. What is? Well, everything. I understand he is some kind of authority in occultism. The extent of his knowledge is splendiferous. He knows a lot of stuff about a lot of stuff, right? But it's all... I can't put it into words. He's different, Bob is. Well, that went nowhere. What does he look like? What's his deal? You probably won't believe me, but see here, it's strange. I've been friends with him for decades now, or at least I'm convinced I have. And yet, it's like one of those dreams where you see the person clearly in front of you, but yet when you wake, you can't for the life of you describe them. Oh, come on. I'm serious, Bob is, well, he's something else. He's the one person I can really say has changed me. I mean, in his presence, I always feel, um, Volatile? Uh, inconsistent? Vibrantly fluctuating? Inevitably equivocal? So we're just listing fancy words now. Do you have a picture of him? Is he on, uh, what you call it, the, the social, uh... Media? I don't think I've ever seen Bob in a picture, and he's... He's undescribable. A uh, true mystery. Not that you'd care, but none of that helped. Like, at all. What can I tell you, Mr. Katype? Some people are just hermetical like that. Has Bob ever gone by the nickname The Butcher? Oh, no, no. The Butcher? The Butcher's a horrible person, whoever he or she is. Care to uh, expand on that subject? Not much is known about The Butcher, even in my circle. He's rumored to be into god-awful, unnatural experiments with the dead. Ugh, horrible, horrible stuff. Bob can't be the butcher, or at least I don't think so. Getting on to something else. Wait, before that, there's something about you. I get this feeling that you are somehow marked. All right, I'm impressed. Yeah, I, uh, I touched something called the, uh, Shining tra Trapeze... Tra trapeze... The Shining Trapezohedron! Yet, yet you stand here before me. So it's true. You have the Haunter's Mark. Forgive me to throw such a cliché at you, but you truly are chosen. Why, uh, thanks for noticing. Mom always said one day I'd show them all who Don Katype is. Of course, you know, with great dark powers come great dark responsibilities. Oh, yeah. Tenebrous forces consuming and corrupting the mortal soul and all that. Not really a surprise, to be quite honest with you. So, how's the voodoo business going these days? You know, can't really complain. A possession here, a curse there. It's really picked up with all the weird cults running around lately. Yeah, gonna be digging into a lot of that soon. About the Haunter's Mark, what exactly does it do? 
It is supposed to turn its bearer into a receptor of sorts. Great, now I'm a receptor. A way of channeling past events that involved said object. The things we could learn about the world by employing its power. It boggles the mind. Hmm, yeah, it does sound kind of useful. Kind of like a superpower, so I'm not complaining. Not exactly a superpower. It's a dark gift, and it may come with great personal costs. Dark or not, I uh, like gifts. I can uh, make my hand glow on command, too. Yeah, that's pretty rad. I'm in the need of some robes to attend the Fishmouth Festival. Think you can help out? The Fest? Whatever would possess you to want to go there? Word of dispassionate advice. Don't. Those are bad, bad people, if people they be. I'm up to my neck in it. Can't really back out now. So, can you help with the robes? I sure can. You're going to need a fine piece of silk, a miniaturized sewing machine, three tufts of recently shed koala fur, Anything else? A cemetery caretaker's liver, voluntarily donated. What else? Uh, you know those fish that kind of blow up into like spiky spheres every once in a while? Uh, what are they called? Puffer fish? Yeah, well, one of those. Well, not for the robes. I just really always wanted one. Anything else? Male alligators baby teeth, but they have to be in pristine condition, otherwise they're useless. Oh, and any kind of indie game developer DNA. Tears have historically proven to be the easiest to procure. Okay, I've heard enough. Don't you happen to have the actual article laying around somewhere? As a matter of fact, I do. Can I just, uh, have it? No, uh, fetch quests or anything? Hmm. Yeah, sure, why not? It was really appreciated at last year's Supernatural Society costume ball, but I doubt it would hit as hard this year. It's in the chest over there. Let me unlock it for you. Thanks, voodoo gentlemen. You're, you're all right. No probs, Donatello. Please don't call me that. So, how do I look? Appropriately stupid and scary, simultaneously. Alrighty then, thanks again. I'll be on my way. Whoa, whoa, hold on a minute. That's not enough to get you into the festival, dude. It isn't. What's wrong? Well, don't take this the wrong way, but... Your smell. Uh, I, I've been traveling a lot. No, no, I mean, you don't stink. Oh, yeah, I knew that. But you need to stink to be let inside Fishmouth during that unholy festival. Like a couple of skunks getting frisky in a garlic patch? quite the vivid imagery, but no, it's more specific than that. More in the vein of, I've had hundreds of rotting fish rubbed against these robes I'm wearing. The festival seems to be a very fish-themed thing. The locals are very particular with their social gatherings. So, rub a dead fish on it, huh? Shouldn't be too hard. I'm afraid that won't cut it, Don. It really needs to be a lot of rotten fish. All right, Mr. Voodoo. Good looking out. I'll try to think of something. Later. Take care now, and take care of Buzz too while you're at it. Oh, that is foul. Oh my. Oh, you god. An assortment of fish and other sea life. Well, X life now.
poor devils. How undignified. It's some kind of refrigerating unit. There's a pipe leading up into the ceiling. Probably something needs to be real chilly like up there, but this unit doesn't seem to cut the mustard. There's a hatch in the ceiling, apparently holding back something incredibly gross. There's a foul-smelling liquid dripping from it. Ugh. I guess it's a fish scale. <laughs> Sorry. Looks like where the fishmonger lives. It's the owner of this fine place of business. I'm reluctant to use it on him. Okay, scared to use it on him. Morning. Brother. 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 Okay. Yeah, I need fish. Sure thing, brother. What type and how much? Type doesn't really matter. Need hundreds of them. Rotten. Oh, that's suspicious. What you need them for? What do you care? I got the milk. I can cover it. Can't sell your rotten fish, sir. Sir? What happened to brother? Anyone can wear a robe. And when they start making dubious demands, how do I know you ain't one of them health inspectors? Do I look like a health inspector? Maybe you're undercover. Yeah, undercover health inspectors. That, that's a thing. I ain't risking my license revoked. Brother. I don't know about that. What's uh, the deal with the hanging chain? All due respect, sir. That's none of your business. I detect a pretty strong smell coming from up there. Could it, perchance, be where you keep all the merch that's gone bad? Now that's presuming a whole lot, sir. Not exactly a refrigerated environment if we go by old factory clues. What old factory? There's a smell, Brother Fishmonger. And nasty stuff dripping from the ceiling. That's my damn business, if you don't mind. Aw, oh, come on, we, uh, we, we bros, you know it. I straight up and down don't. Say, you look familiar. What? We all look the same to you, Darkamites, don't we? Racist. Racist? <laughs> not at all. There's just something about your, uh, your features. Your eyes, maybe. You think I don't know the stereotypes y'all throwing round about us? Fish face, bug eye, and all that sort. Well, I'll have you know, before you make any kind of ignorant comment about my eyes, I've got a sleeping condition, all right? Well, I'm, I'm sorry to hear that, bro. Is that bad, are you? You taking anything for that? Yeah, it's bad, and no, Drugs don't work. It's a smart man what stays away from drugs. Gee, thanks for the insight. Huh. Do you, uh, take sleeping pills? Ain't working for me. I can take a fistful and it'll be like chugging some Joe. Yeah, dog. Life ain't at ease if he ain't got those Z's. Yeah, like you give a rotten fin about my problems. Just trying to empathize here. Do you happen to have sleeping pills around? Yeah, got mine right here. They're yours if you want them. They're no use to me. So what do you do about your sleeping problem? You sure curious. Well... It can't hurt to tell you. Been experimenting with hypnosis and suggestion lately. Hypnosis? Really? Does it work? Well, it ain't been long, so I don't really know as yet. Doc been suggesting stuff to me for some sessions, and the payoff's still to come. What's the payoff? He calls it the K-1. 
catalyst. It's a secret spoken command. Supposed to make one fall asleep instantly. So, did you get yours? Sure did. But I'm scared to use it, to be honest. Doc says I might sleep for three days straight. So, out of curiosity, what's your secret command? Doc says I ain't supposed to share that with anyone. Why? It'd cause chaos in my personal and professional life, it would. Yeah, I suppose it would, wouldn't it? Plus, if I told you, I'd just fall asleep instantly. And then it'd be all awkward, wouldn't it? I suppose it would be, yeah. So, how do you find Darkham? It's alright, I guess. But her smell just... Ugh. That's why I mostly keep to my shop. Smells like home in here. Oh, yeah. Fish mist is gonna be a blast. I bet I know what your command is. I'll bet you you don't. Baby butt. Cute, but it ain't that one. Fuzzy cushion. Huh, that ain't it. Angel tummy. Why, was, was this? I was all sleepy all of a sudden. But wait, could it be just cause of you boring me to sleep with your cutesy guessing game? Ugh, you had me there for a second. <laughs> Never mind. Still need them fish, bro. I ain't selling you rotten fish, and that's final. Catch you later. That's the fishmonger's medication. Picking it up won't do anything, but there might be some use for it. Your secret command is bubble wrap. I bet I know what your command is. I'll bet you you don't. Bubble wrap. How'd you? Huh, it worked. I have to admit I had serious doubts, but it, uh, it actually did. And it was time to get my robes dirty, so to speak. So, this was it. Stinky old fish meth. Smell-wise, it was probably the fishery I'd just come from times a thousand. I was blending in like a professional and itching to sink my teeth into whatever Fishmouth had to offer. Except the local food. Hey! It's a door blocking my access to who knows where. Hello there. Go away. So I uh, take it you don't participate in the festival? Go away. That's that, I guess. <laughs> I don't even want to know what's going on inside there. Oh, an open barrel. Whoever could resist the primal urge to peek into its dark recess. Don't eat it, fool! It's rotten! Throw it away! I've got... a rotten egg? Well, I can't smell it anyway. I, I guess I'll keep it. And... a name tag. Randolph. A 
couple of these lunatics pushing and shoving each other. Why am I not surprised? I don't want to know. Not interested. I have no idea why she's doing that, but it's uh, kind of fun to watch. I don't want to break her concentration. That's uh, one way of approaching literature, I guess. You will learn the rituals in time for the festival, or else! He's way too focused for me to disturb him with chit-chat. Well, this is just... I don't even want to know. I'm pretty sure I would regret doing that. Really, really not interested in what he has to say. A welcoming looking couple of local residents, I'm sure. No need. I can just talk to him. Greetings, uh, uh, brother and sister. Hello and welcome to the festival, fellow believer. Forget all your worries and pray they're gone. But I compliment you on your smell, brother. Oh, uh, thanks. Just a uh, curiosity. Is it the socks? Uh, yeah, okay. It's the socks. That's what I thought. Enjoy the festival. This chick doesn't seem phased by the regurgitation onslaught going on behind her. Greetings, sister. Are you not bothered by the, uh, the adjacent vomiting? Zishta zidaraku zibelurduk kanpa yashta kanpa ya. Yeah, it is a shame about the economy, but what are you gonna do? Other than the expected seafood, I detect a nice, healthy addition of carrots to his diet. Uh, one more isn't gonna kill me. Everything okay up there? All right then. Someone's really enjoying themselves up there. I don't care enough to find out. I got nothing to say. An incredibly beat up car, desolately leaning on the sidewalk. She's dead, Milton! Just leave her here! This thing isn't starting anytime soon. It's another voodoo guy by the looks of it. Moko Lua, you garu. Hello there, brother. Uwangba, Papa Lengba. Oh, sorry, I, uh, I had no idea. That crowbar is just resting against the truck, minding its own business. You're mine. These guys are whispering to each other in some language that's completely alien to me. Excuse me, brothers. Get away! Can't you see who we're talking here? Rude. Oil's leaked out of the abandoned truck into a 
big slimy puddle. I think I need a container. These fellas here are really into their dubious book. I'll just not bother them this time. Nemo Curious, Lord of the Subtle Arts, open the gate to the sphere of thy spirit! Nemo Curious, Master of the Chemical Science, open the gate to the sphere of thy workings! Oh, hey, it's a lady cultist. Evening, madam. Mashrita nanazia kampa. Yamag. Yagamag. Yazagastena kia. Ashtakaralyosh. Couldn't have said it better myself. You have yourself a peaceful night now. It's a bearded cultist hanging out by that trash can. Never a good boy, Randolph, is you? Is you? Uh, evening, brother. Hello. Anything else? Guess not. Later. That guy's really passionate about Father Dagon. Dagon, judge me! Dagon, judge me! You say, uh, Father Dagon and uh, Mother Hydra are our. Uh, biggest problem. They are our biggest problem. And it has never been uh, uh, clearer that uh, w w with their help, uh, we shall never... Uh... Achieve anything! We shall never achieve anything! Or oh, no, any other uh, gods! L look around, brothers! Cast your your eyes on the person next to you. What do you see? Well, I see a group of. Uh... Losers! A group of losers! Like I've never uh, seen before! And our uh, numbers are always uh, rising! Make no mistake, our um, uh, en en endeavor is a. Uh, uh, waste of time! Our endeavor is a waste of time! Fear us, uh, world! Take a good, uh, hard look at us, for we shall bring. Uh, uh, nothing, but, um, um, but, um... Lemon cake and cotton candy! Lemon cake and cotton candy to your doorstep! Uh, we are, uh, uh the, the next in, in, in line, uh, uh, for, um... Alright, that got him a little riled up. Brothers! Brothers! Wait! It's a misunderstanding! I didn't mean... He's also got a problem with ending his sentences. They gon' ju- Nah.
they're a bit more excited now. This weirdo is really interested in what's going on in the distance. You ain't ready for the water yet, Eustace! Don't want nothing to do with him. The creepy, horn-shaped reef is giving me the chills. <laughs> and what are... He looks like he's guarding whatever insanity's going down in the water. Jeez. Say it, God, and watch him take to the water. Yeah, yeah. Father Dagon, take them in his arms. I'm leaving him alone. Some kind of. I don't even know how to describe it. It's going on far in the water, next to the reef. It is time, brothers! It is time! It's a non-festive looking dude, just chilling over there. Man, I love Azanath! Man, I love her! Evening, sir. No offense, but you don't really look like you belong here. Oh, hey there, Padre. Yeah, no, I'm kind of visiting only. I thought they didn't let visitors in during the festival. Depends on who you're with, bro. My wife's a regular. We're here on our honeymoon. Interesting choice for a honeymoon. Yeah, well, sort of a goodbye to the old way of living on her part. As an elf, I mean. Then we're totally changing our lives around. Oh? Is she around? She's in there, getting some fish and chips for us. Ugh, not partial to fish myself. Then what the heck are you here for, dude? <laughs> but yeah, I ain't crazy about him either. But hey... When in Fishmouth, you know, we're splashing out into like a debauchery sort of deal while we're here. And then, we're totally changing our lives around. You mentioned changing your lives around. Yup, we're going vegan, baby. Oh, that's uh, nice, I guess. Concerned about uh, animal welfare and the environment, huh? Oh, uh, yeah, that too, kind of. It's just... It's the end thing to be, you know. But we'll see how that goes. You never know. We might just go back to steaks afterwards. I guess it's up to you, but uh, how does that make sense? Going from vegan to meat eater? You just go from being a preachy jerk who judges everyone for what they eat to being a preachy jerk who judges everyone for what they eat. Works both ways. The beauty of symmetry, bro. Although... Yeah? Makes you think, you know. Sometimes I just sit and wonder, what gives us the right to kill and eat other beings? Just because they ain't human, you know? Because they can't reason like we do. So what? Doesn't take reasoning to know you don't feel like being gutted and eaten. Know what I'm saying? That went dark all of a sudden. You telling me you never consider these things? An almost lifelong diet of steaks and cold hot dogs is a hard thing to leave behind, I guess, but, uh... Yeah, you know, you sort of make an interesting point there. Yeah, I think it's absolutely worth discussing these issues, you know? But discussing takes a lot of energy, and me myself, I'm famished. Now where's Azanath with those fish and chips, though? You know anything about a guy called the Butcher? Butcher? Unless he's in there preparing my fish and chips. Nah, dude. 
Nice to see someone happily married. Didn't get to experience that yourself, bro? Me? Happily? Huh. No. But, uh, I'm glad it worked for you. Yeah, man, me too. You know what I love about Azanath? She's not one of those all-up-in-your-business wives, you know? She ain't about, I don't know, taking my life over. That's nice. Yeah, I love that she gives me my personal space. What else do you like about your wife? She just lets me be me. That's major. Anything, uh, anything else you like about your wife? She's not possessive. I'd hate that. What else do you like about your wife? She loves being herself and leaving my life in my time to myself. Tell me another thing you like about her. You know what? This conversation's getting a bit weird, and I'm too hungry for it. Ah, right. Sorry. Hey, what's with the passed out guy with the eggs? I don't know, dude. It's sort of gross, but at the same time, it's kind of ruining my appetite. Which is cool, though, because I've been waiting on my fish and chips forever. Yeah, he's out cold. Guess his eggs are free for the taking. I guess so, man, if that's your kind of thing. It's cool, bro, seriously. I'm not judging. Yeah, thanks. It means a lot. All right, man. I'll, uh, I'll let you wait for your meal in peace. Enjoy the festival, Brosif. And don't indulge too much, you hear? Ha ha ha! I'm pretty sure that's Gustav. Gustav! Hey up there. Gustav! This baby ain't sailing anywhere ever again. This bozo's out cold, feet in the air, underwear flying in the wind. Disgraceful. He also dropped all his eggs. And don't drink like a fish again. The eggs need to be there in time for the ritual. Ew. And I thought I knew rotten eggs. This one takes it to the next level. I'm picking it up. Oh, God, I'm actually doing it. Oh. That is the definition of rear window. I don't think I want to. We're full. Go somewhere else. Stop pushing. Even more mad. We're getting there. That's Brother Jan. He joined our elite gatekeeping squad recently. Just like these other brothers, he's taken a vow of silence. But as you can see, he's still rocking out. Internally, as it were. Let's not and say we did. That's Brother David, a member of my elite squad of gatekeepers. Not much is known about him. This guy truly is a mystery. That's Brother Matthew, one of our elite gatekeepers. He joined after searching for a way to unlock the secrets of influence in the universe. Crazy stuff. Anyway, it led him to Fishman, and now, ha, well, he holds a secret of his own. 
No point in that. Brother Matthew's taking the oath of silence too. Part of the elite squad deal. That right there is Brother Aylin. He hails from Transylvania, Romania. Came a long way to join our elite forces, that's for sure. Seems to be the guy in charge of these guards. Let's not and say we did. Evening, uh, brothers. Yeah, yeah, what do you want? Just seeking passage into the uh, derelict industrial premises you're currently eclipsing. Don't come here wasting my time, you hear? I want to get inside of the abandoned factory behind you, brother. Just say so, huh? So are you, Malusco? You're darn tootin' I'm Malusco. Oh yeah? Good! Chief Piovera specifically said don't let Malusco in. Forget about it! Wait, 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 wait. Me? Malusco? Huh. Mr. Confused Identity over here! Well, who are you then? Pescatori? Yep, in the flesh. Oh, good! You're finally here! I tell you, they say the worst that could have happened probably happened. I always knew we shouldn't trust that psycho with the meal. The meal? Are you serious? Oh, I see what's going on. You're questioning my clearance level, huh? Yes. Yeah, I thought so. Don't worry. These guys are hardcore, but they took a vow of silence, so... I'm level 3 clearance. I pretty much know most of it. Oh yeah? Tell me what the meal is then. May Father Dagon forgive our naivete. Is that how you pronounce that? How should I know? Pulling the wool over our eyes with talk of raising the meal, the ultimate feast for the dreamer. Damn butcher, cobbling flesh together and raising that thing in Kraken Bay, that half goofa. It ain't natural. We talking GMOs here or uh... I ain't in the mood for joking. He played us good, Pescatori. The dreamer yet hungers, brother. Yeah, yeah, Cthulhu for Dagon. For Dagon indeed. We've let him down, brother. We raised that thing for the dreamer to feast on, and now we just might have to face it. Ooh, that flesh digger and lunatic ran away with it. Oh, wow. We know that for sure? <laughs> Ain't that why you're here? To find out for sure? The elders won't let us regulars in the factory. Personally, I think he's long gone. But go ahead and find out. Thanks. Wait, wait. I got specific instructions, though. You can go in, but only in the presence of Chief Piovra. Well, this couldn't be that easy, could it? So, where's Piovra? You're asking the wrong person, Fra. He's probably out boozing himself to death like he always do, right guys? Why do I keep talking to these mooks? Ugh, drinks like a fish, that Piovra. <sighs> Alright, I'll return with Piovra. See you guys. Salute! It was a lonely trash can on a badly lit portion of road, and for some reason, it really caught my eye. I guess stinking horribly yourself negates the downsides of rummaging through trash, so here I go. Oh, got a really rotten egg. Oh yeah, squishy goodness. 
and uh, a boot. Okay. I took a long, hard look at Finman and could instantly feel my skin creep. This guy was shady, to say the least. I'm frankly afraid to. Is that crazy guy outside gone, friend? Yeah, he's gone. I made sure of that. Whew. Well, I guess things are in order. Forgive me if I sound reluctant. I've just come to trust you cultists less lately. Completely understandable. We got our fair share of dummies. The kind of dummies what sucker punch you no warning. Happened recently, right where we stand, mister. <sighs> yeah, no more respect for small businesses. Yeah, not to mention the big franchises moving in and cannibalizing us little guys. Right, cannibalism. Ugh. I mean, I, I'm just trying to eat here, you know? Oh yeah, absolutely. So, uh, what could I do you for, friend? Did a guy named Piavra happen to drop by your fine establishment? No offense, brother, but I'm smart enough to know I ain't supposed to be saying who's who and who ain't who, especially in these tense times, you know? Oh, I completely understand, and I appreciate the honesty. I wouldn't call the atmosphere tense exactly, more like completely insane. Oh, uh, you're just too trustworthy for me to keep my guard up, ain't you? Yeah, that's Piavra passed out in the armchair over there. I meant the ugly rumors about the meal. Strange... Oh, uh, never mind. Just my big mouth get me in trouble again. The meal, huh? Yeah, I keep hearing troubles afoot. Trouble? Huh? Ura knew that psycho butcher was trouble from the get-go. But oh no, elders know best. Too much talk of double-crossing down the abandoned factory the last few hours, you know what I'm saying? Where there's smoke, there's fire, huh? Dagon, forgive me for talking out of school. But if that good-for-nothing meat cobbler really denies the dream of his meal, well, there just ain't no point to nothing anymore. Wouldn't want the dreamer to go hungry, would we? Not after all the blood, sweat, and tears went into raising that thing. Cthulhu for Targon. The dreamer. Brother. You're trustworthy and all, and I like you on a personal level, but this thing's too big for us to be yapping about. Yeah, makes sense. Sorry for insisting. For talking. Are there any rooms available? Ugh, they're filled to capacity. You don't seem happy about that. Well, well, let's just say business ain't been as uh, satiating as it could be. So, uh, you're full, but uh, not really, huh? Yeah, that, that's a good way to be putting it, to be sure. Uh. What are your thoughts on the festival? i tell you the truth, it's kind of a disappointment so far. Scrawny cultists, most of them, and always roaming the streets and don't seem to ever go to sleep in their rooms like they're supposed to. I mean, it's a festival. People hardly sleep during these things. Uh. Oh, they don't, do they? I'll be on my way. It's a conspicuously empty glass just left there, all by itself. Come to Papa, little glass. A classy classic. It doesn't work and I have no uh, time to look into it. This is all your fault, Bernard. Well, 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 Chief Piovra, sleeping off some booze. One more, damn it! 
It seems Chief Piovra's leathery outfit is stuck to the armchair. I think the chief's outfit could use some lubrication first. Got myself a glass of oil. Neat. seems to have loosened the armchair's grip on Piovra's rotund frame. Sure, I can pop him out, but how do I carry him? It's a teenage girl just hanging out near that wheelbarrow. You don't wear that t-shirt in my house, Joey. Hey, kid. Hey yourself, you stupid cultist. Dagon judge you, child. Yeah, yeah, take your Dagon and... Let's, uh, maybe not go there. You dare disrespect the cult? What cult? Um, the, the, uh, the, the fish cult. Don't you mean the order, you dum-dum? Gosh, they'll just let any mouth breather in your little Girl Scouts club. Yeah, um, we've been uh, lowering our standards uh, lately. And there you stand, living proof. So, how's things? What's with the wheelbarrow? What's with the wheelbarrow? Nice conversational spark up, square. A square? Me? Yeah, man. You're like... Like... Square squared. Sick burn, dude. I know, right? Well, you do have a wheelbarrow. Yeah, so? Can't be cool next to a wheelbarrow, cause you said so, Pops? Sheesh. Huh. I guess I really am a square now. Man, I used to be one of the cool kids. You don't say. Huh, <laughs> yeah, alright. I never was a cool kid. I guess I never really fit in, you know? What? Seriously? Yeah. Must be why I'm walking around in these ridiculous pajamas. Just trying to be accepted somewhere, you know? Oh man, I... I feel you. Yeah, well, at least I got this. What? These stupid robes? Do they make you feel special, dude? I'm the same man underneath, but they like me more in these dumb rags, sister. Sister? It ain't the 70s anymore, Daddy-o. Anyway, man, whatever flies here dirigible, you know what I mean? Yeah, I dig. Far out, bruv. Why are you, uh, hating on the order, though? <laughs> He's all street now. Your nomenclature's all over the place, buds. You guys are a bunch of fish brains for worshipping that imaginary tadpole dad of yours. Uh, he's alright. Yeah, right. Dream on, pops. Can I let you in on a little secret? Wait, maybe I shouldn't. Your, your parents are probably in the esoteric order. Nah, man, they're not. My dad's a fisherman and that's it. 
All we do is deliver seafood to these wackos. What's the secret? Come on, tell me. In a minute, how come your dad's not in the order? I don't know, he's not into that mumbo jumbo. I mean, he's cool with the festival. Cause we get to sell a lot of fish to you loonies. Not me, I've come to hate fish. Yeah, ooh, tell me about it. But, we're depopulating these waters, man. What the hell do you people need so much fish for? You should just get as much as you need and stop making such a waste. Can't disagree with that. Look, I have no idea what all the fish are for, honest. All right, the, uh, the secret is... I'm not really a cultist. I'm a private investigator. I snuck in here because I'm working a case. Whoa, are you serious? That is so cool, oh my god! Yep, it's true. Name's Don. Don Katype. Awesome. I'm Joey. Nice to meet you, Joey. Yeah, man. Joey, you think I could borrow that wheelbarrow for a minute? Oh man, I would, but I'd really avoid getting on my dad's nerves right now. You know, I want to get a tattoo or a piercing soon. Something to express myself, right? And he's like so against it. Like, all he knows and cares about is fishing stuff. Says, I'm gonna be a fisherman, just like he is. Right, I gotcha. Hmm, let me think for a minute. Hey, Joey, what if you somehow got to express yourself and keep your dad happy too? How would I do that? I have this name tag. Yeah? Never mind, bad idea. I've got this boot. Uh-huh. Nah, forget it. I have this fish hook. Think about it, fish hook lip piercing. Your dad can't hate on that, it just screams fisherman. What do you say? That is so gnarly, dude. Awesome. Whew, all right then. You think I could get that uh, wheelbarrow for a couple of minutes? Sure, dude. Knock yourself out. Man, this is going to look so sick. Woot woot! Yeah, uh, maybe clean it a bit before sticking it in your lip. I don't think it's entirely sanitary as is. Uh-huh. Thanks, Don. Sure thing. Hey, before I go... What do you know about the meal? Look, man, I shouldn't either know or be telling you this, but a lot of the fish that my dad and most fishermen in town catch go straight into the meal. The fish are the meal? No, you square. The meal is what they've been raising over in Kraken Bay. Duh. Oh, oh, so uh, what is it? Don't know, don't care, and I wouldn't look too closely into it if I were you, just saying. Do you know anything about the, uh, the Dreamer? Oh, man, don't say that out loud. They don't like that. Well, paradoxically, they speak his name out loud all the time, but geez, careful. You mean Dagon? Bigger than Dagon, Broham. Much bigger. Anyway, it's just a dumb delusion like everything else the Order worships. But it keeps him a pop in business, so, you know... Uh-huh. You ever heard of someone called the Butcher? Psh, who hasn't? But officially, I have no idea what you're talking about. There's a lot of whispers of betrayal and all kinds of crazy stuff, and everybody in the EOD is a lot more on edge than usual, but none of them are right in the head, so who knows, really? Yeah, this place is crazy, no doubt. Later, Joey. Don't blow my cover, all right? Watch your back, Donnie boy. Time to pop a cultist out of an armchair.
Well, here we are in the presence of Chief Piavra. Porca vaca! But hard to tell how present he really is, but it's him all right. Ain't no discussion about that. All right, go right ahead. And Pescatori? Yeah? Well, I'm convinced he's long gone. But if by some dark miracle you do get a hold of him, show him what the EOD does to traitors. Ooh, show him good! You betcha. See you later, Pesce. Let him through, boys! Cthulhu for Targan! All right, I was in. A cold, bluish-green light revealed parts of rusty machinery here and there. Everything else was drowned in inky black. Probably as black as the Butcher's deeds, but that remained to be seen. I was in. Just one regret. I'll never know who Randolph really was. You gas up that huge engine through this. No resonance. Can't use it by itself. It's the lever what puts the huge engine in motion. Mm, nothing happened. I think it needs fuel. Huge, huge, huge engine. Some kind of container, apparently. Ugh, the lid's all stuck with some disgusting crud. Let's pop this baby open. All right, got myself a power tool. It's a hatch in this, uh, this thing, but it's dark as night inside. Can't reach it. Nah, can't. No need to mess with it. It can unscrew and put holes in things. It's a keeper. No need to mess with it. Nah. Nah. Can't reach it. Freeze, you ugly cultist! Isn't that assuming a bit too much given how dark it is in here? Don't push your luck when there's an angry little kid pointing a hand cannon at you, batty! See, now that is concerning. I don't know that I want to live in a society where an innocent child can easily get her hands on a- Would you like for mice to really appreciate you? Uh, uh, what? Um... Unless you really do, don't make me turn you into Swiss cheese! I'm not moving. Good, good. Okay. Now what? Now you get to explain just what you're creeping around in the dark here for, cultist. I... I'm really not a cultist. Honest. Mm, okay, let me see here. Cultist ropes? Check. Lurking around in an abandoned factory? Check. I'm a private investigator, in deep cover. That's not the only thing you're deep in, creep. What are you up to here? Don't lie. I can tell. Ugh. 
Uh, I'm, I'm a flooring inspector. Don't you know how hazardous even just standing here is? So this is standard inspector attire? Uh, no, but they, they won't let me in without it. Put it back on the shelf and step away from the shopping cart, because I'm not buying that. I was just looking for you. Someone said a kid got lost in this abandoned factory, so... So here I am, your savior. Look, I'm not firing any warning shots because the noise will alert your buddies. So rely on me making all my bullets count. Read that loud and clear. I'm investigating. I'm looking for a... Uh, well, at this point, I might call him a criminal mastermind, really. The Butcher. And how do I know you're not one of his henchmen, trying to lie your way out? Oof, can't think of anything, really. There's just been so much going on lately, it's hard to wrap my head around everything. Let alone explain myself to a kid with a huge gun pointing at my noggin. I've got time. Ugh, to make an uh, extremely long and convoluted story short, I'm helping a friend unhumanize his cat, I think. Turns out, uh, when they can talk, they're real grouches. So... I'm trying to find out. Wait, what's this friend's name? Buzz. Oh, we'll talk about a coincidence. Is he a librarian? Only librarian I know what's got a talking cat, yeah. Wait, you're not shooting me now, are you? Whatever way they wronged you, I had nothing to do with it. Kitty can be a real... They actually got Mr. Gillsby back for me. I hate to say it, but they're kind of all right in my book. I, I, I mean, I hate them less than you cultists. Wait, you know Buzz and Kitty? Yeah, we swapped dolls a while ago, back in Darkham. Well, that sounds perfectly normal. Unlike what you are doing to the fishies, you, you bad, bad people! I don't even like fish. I, I mean, I don't like eating them. I've got nothing against them. So then why are you killing so many of them? Again, not a cultist, but it might have something to do with whatever the butcher was working on in this very building. Yeah, well... We'll shed some light on that situation soon enough. You really shouldn't be in here alone. What'll your parents think? They think I'm still in my bedroom. I made sure of that. Can I ask where you got that huge gun from? Mm, not got some cultist leader in my way in here. Anything else? Uh, maybe later. I'm really not a cultist. My name's Don. Don Archetype. Hmm, Don doesn't sound like what a cultist name would be. I figured they'd all have names like... Jebediah? A bit too biblical, but yeah, I can see that. Do you believe I'm not a cultist now? Not entirely. You'd better actually prove it. Alright, uh, I'm game, I guess. What are you thinking? If you're really here for the reasons you say you are, we're both looking for the same thing. The Butcher's Laboratory. Chop chop! I'll be supervising from up here. Sounds like a plan, uh, Miss... Priscilla. Are you sure? I'm sure! Get to it! Nice big lever over here. It ain't working. Strange. There's a discontinuity in the pattern here. I know Kung Fu. Aha! It's a heavy sliding door. Huge, sturdy sliding door. Riveted shut on its right side. A bunch of annoying rivets keeping the door shut in place. Thank God for technology. That's one impressive, gigantic door. Lock it! Lock it! 
Leave the shot! Locked from the inside. Didn't really expect to see mattresses and pillows lying around in here, but there they are. Sleep more, work more, raise more. Sleep more, work more, raise more. I don't want to touch any of them. I stepped inside and felt my teeth instantly chatter. This was some kind of cryo room and I didn't bring thicker underwear. <sighs> A portable Instaphrase. Neat. Some kind of strange display with cycling buttons on both sides. I'm telling you, what got away? Huh, one's missing. Good day to you, sir and young miss, if day it indeed be. You'll forgive my disorientation, I trust. I've been holed up in here for quite a while. I suppose thanks are in order for opening that blasted door. Truly appreciate it. No offense, but uh, who or uh, what are you? Oh, do forgive my rudeness. Allow me to introduce myself. I'm quite sure that my name is Otis, but I'm afraid much of my biography is as much a question mark to myself as it is to you. I'm not wrong in surmising that this is the first time you're engaging in conversation with a human-octopus hybrid, correct? Yeah, I'm, uh, I'm kind of at a loss for words here. Don't worry, Mr. Octopus Person. I like you. You're kind of a fishy, so you're okay. Haha, <laughs> well, yes, young miss. I assume I am. Aren't I? Please, call me Otis. Nice to meet you, Otis. I'm Priscilla. And this guy over here is Dawn. He's a private detective. Yes, she believes me. But anyway. So Otis, how'd you become an octopus hybrid? I mean, of course, if that's not too painful to discuss. Oh, not at all! Details, I'm afraid, are pretty sparse and amnesia seems to be a side effect of the process. I do remember my name was Otis and I, well, I died. I'm afraid I can't remember the circumstances. I did wake up at the hands of these persons that were operating on me. Strange sensation, to be sure, but I was alive again. Quite a blessing, sir, I assure you. You have uh, quite the positive outlook on life for a, a talking head. How could I not? I was dead, and now I live! Is there a greater joy imaginable? I think not! That's a refreshingly positive attitude. Thank you! I was always an optimist, and as you can see, good things have happened to me! Indeed. Did you see the butcher? Yeah, did you? I'm afraid I don't know what butcher you speak of. Well, everything's a bit foggy, you understand. All I can remember are masked men rushing about with all kinds of strange instruments. Their speech was muffled, so it was pretty hard to make anything out, I'm afraid. Dang it. I do remember them referring to me as a dry, if that helps at all. A uh, dry? Any idea what that means? One can only assume it has some negative implications, but that's pure speculation on my part. Do you know where the laboratory is? Yes, I do. You, you don't want to go in there, do you? Indeed, we're chatting away when we should be getting out of here at this very instant. No one's going anywhere until we reach the lab. Oh dear, I must be frank with you, young miss. I intend to leave the premises as soon as possible and suggest you do the same. Come on, Otis, work with us. You ain't gotta go back in there, just help us get in. Oh, heavens, well, all right. I suppose I owe you a debt of gratitude. The laboratory is right outside this chamber and to the right.
Not sure I want to do that. It's, uh, well, it's Otis. I'll get back to you, Otis. As you wish, dear sir. That's real cool. Not exactly ready to carry. There's a blue liquid inside this tube. Liquid nitrogen, perhaps? No resonance. Nah, can't reach it. I don't think any. All kinds of junk. The industrial flavor. Hurry, hurry, hurry! It's just junk. I don't need any of it. Hey, it's a gas canister. Come to Papa, sweet gasoline. Wouldn't do anything. No, I won't freeze that. Drink up, big buddy. There you go. I'd gotten the engine to run. At least now, any loud noises would be covered by the engine's humming. I'm gonna call it Alice. Severely out of range. Hey kid. I think I thought of a way to get us past those huge doors, but I need you to trust me, okay? What do you mean? I'm gonna need that gun of yours. Fine, I trust you. Do not let me down! That's a promise, Priscilla. It's been a while, but here goes. I got rid of the glass above the door to the lab. Seeing as you're the only one with suction cups, think you could do us a solid and get inside the lab through there? Oh dear! I suppose I can. To be perfectly honest, I'm shaking in my non-existent boots just at the thought of going back in there. Come on, you can do it, Otis. 
Yeah, you go, Otis. I appreciate your support, dear friends. <sighs> All right, here I go. Oh dear! Oh Lord! Oh, it's it's all coming back now. The pits, the horrible pits, the non-dries, their horrible gnashing and gnawing, and oh, this is too much to bear. Oh God, what is that? Oh, oh, what do you know? It's a coin. <laughs> oh, and of, of course, n no pockets to put it in. Great. Oh God, the abominations! Focus, Otis. Focus. <laughs> all right, it's open. Wow. Thanks, Otis. You are incredibly brave. She... Yes, C uh, could I please go now? There are horrible things in there, and I don't wish to spend another second in their vicinity. Where are you headed to, Otis? I, uh... Oh! It appears I really have no place to go, do I? <sighs> yeah, I thought that might be the case. Look, here's my office back in Darkham. The key's under the doormat. Make yourself at home until you, uh, think things through, all right? How exactly is he going to make it there without attracting attention? You're right. Hey, I have an idea. Priscilla, you should mail him to my address. You know, like a, like a pet or something. But I want to see the laboratory and save the fishies! You said it yourself. Otis is sort of a fishy, and he needs your help. Once you mail him, you can come back and we'll explore together. What do you say? I guess you're right, but don't explore too much without me, you hear? You can count on me, partner. Don't get ahead of yourself. See ya! Many thanks again! All the best! Oh, it's jolly good to get a second chance, isn't it? So many opportunities! Mike? Hmm, let's see here. Why, why I could be on telly, my dear. The one true talking head out there. <laughs> Yeah, I guess that's true. Haha, <laughs> see, little one? Always keep a positive outlook. Ew, ow! T just a second. Stepped in some oily thing here. Ew. Well, I guess it's slithered, actually, isn't it? <laughs> You're funny, Otis. Well, that was surreal. <sighs> Alright, let's see what secrets this place holds. It's a dark, deep pit, but down there I can just make out something wrong, squirming around. Another pit, another unseen creature writhing at the bottom. Its only feature is a big red button. Press this button, worm, and we all die. A plain, scratched metal panel of sorts. Don't touch unless one escapes, worms. It's stuck. Nothing to remove or perforate. Could types got lever It seems to control some kind of security apparatus. Looks like a view of this room from above. And there's a cage hanging overhead. Huh, so the button opens both the door and the monster's pits. Devious. That's all the creeps loose, but at least I'm safe once I press this button. <sighs> I don't see a better option.
And I don't know what that is, but it wants me dead. No time for that. I hate to admit it, but I was shaken. Experiments are not scientific reality or abhorrent supernatural nightmare. These horrible blobs of flesh, limb, and rot existed. I could still smell their indescribable presence, even though they were all gone. God knows where. It really takes a lot to shake me, but I... I was shaken. Ah. Uh. Slightly charred piece of wood. Who knows where it came from? A bunch of pebbles. Must have fallen from the ceiling when the cage descended. Yeah, I might need these. I was in. I was inside the butcher's inner sanctum and I'd expected this place to be lousy with guts and gore and parts and pieces, but, but this wasn't that. This was, well, colorful. Colorful in a way that makes a Joe uneasy and it set me to wondering what this guy had for triangles. So many triangles. I've noticed these dust mounds everywhere around here. Ugh, no. Who knows what this stuff actually is? It's a stylized painting of a human head. My contribution. I don't feel good about this. Of all the things in here, those alone seem to justify this nutter's nickname. I'm not touching them. This won't hurt a bit, little worm. Couple of vertical openings. Something's missing here. You have been lied to. Been lied to. It's an uneducated guess, but judging by the number of cables coming out of this thing, it might be what powers everything in here. doesn't fit. Some kind of control panel looks embedded in this area of the wall, along with the shelves. Right! right. Point right! This must be the butcher's desk. Worms! Worms! Flies! Only I control the passage of the eye. It's definitely a control panel. Controlling what? That remains to be seen. Worms and flies! A 
strange, strange device. No idea how to use this. And there it was, a loose handle hanging conspicuously from the door of an empty oh, cabinet. Yeah, this fits, but if this is a power generator, it might make for a shocking experience. I've put a nice round hole in it. Got myself a shock-free switch. Yes! Power's back on. quickly cycles through some biological imagery. No idea how to use this. Do as father tells you, little one. As tempting as it is, I'll pass. I gotta say, I find the aesthetic pleasing. Nothing on the cover but a triangle. This better not be written in gibberish. Rest, friend. Step out from the tongue of story's lines. Some kind of control panel looks embedded in this area of the wall, along with the shelves.
It's a small piece of ripped cloth caught on the edge here. I really don't need it. Maybe just its story. Idiot! Left toward the bay, right toward the EOD! Get it through your thick skull! And what did we do? Trusted the Butcher, put our faith in the Carnifex, double-crossed by that... that freak! Denying the Dreamer his meal, running away with it. That was his payment for our stupid, misplaced loyalty. How do you think this looks like in the eyes of Father Dagon, huh? And I tell you right now, it is as clear as pure seawater to me that the starry knowledge was always behind that lunatic. I know some of you do not see the starry fools as a threat. Ha! You think me mad? You think I am making this up? This very night, a false preacher was spouting blasphemies about Mother Hydra and Father Dagon right outside the Finman house. Good thing a true believer cast the first stone. Well, egg. And the crowd swiftly dealt with the poisonous snake. B -b but it happened. Truly it has happened in our fishmouth during our festival. Those mounds of food we threw into the Kraken's gaping maw. Why, we could have feasted on them for months and praised Dagon's name to the skies and to the green abysses. Kooky, freakish cultists. I can't throw the Haunter's Mark that far. I don't want them to know I'm here. Butcher. Barracuda How did we even trust him with a moniker like that? Son of a nebula. Huh? That's strange. He did butcher us, didn't he? In the face of Dagon, praise his dark name. What will Father Dagon feed the dreamer now? Stars, huh? I thought these guys were all about fish. I am shaking, shaking with fear, brothers. Stinking stingrays. Hunter kiss you. Huh? Hunter. Enough of this masquerade! I knew it! Treason! There is but one true god, you fish-loving heathens! And his name is the Haunter! How dare you speak that name in the house of Dagon! You broke into our temple and stole the drop of the Now you're going to pay! We'll feed you to the fish! You must stop! 
book! Now you give us the book! Oh my god, little kid! Wh what are you doing? As Rome burned and Nero watched and fiddled, so too we witnessed the fish take vengeance on the fishermen. Not sure it's the right comparison, Mr. Bizarra. I'm just worried about the kid. No need, Gramps. I'm well and happy. No one's hurting the fishies anymore. And their bellies are nice and full now. You really shouldn't have witnessed that. Except you sort of made it happen. Well, it's all over now, Grandpa. Look. Water's draining, and the fishies are returning home! A perfect ending of the festival for everyone. Hooray! <sighs> Don't call me Grandpa. <laughs> Okie doke, I'll be on my way. Before Mom and Dad and Grandma notice that I'm missing. It's been fun. See you around. Take care, kid. Crazy world we live in, huh, Mr. Basara? Thank you for your business, by the way. I sincerely don't know whether thanks are in order. I... I'm more confused with each passing hour, but my resolve grows stronger. So, what are you doing in this building of all places? Keeping tabs on the esoteric order? Looking for Olmstein? Sightseeing? You might joke about the sightseeing, but that is part of why I'm here. All across this accursed world, the storm rages ever more powerful, and I strongly expect some kind of... some kind of sign soon. What sign? And why here of all places? Maybe a reason for a bell to ring through a terrible storm. News sure does travel fast. This is the highest steeple in Fishmouth with the grandest, most resonant bell in miles. This is where I'll wait for a sign, for as long as it takes. And awaken the beast? How do we know that's a good thing? We don't, but it is written, so it shall come to be. This could be the start of a fascinating philosophical debate, if only we had time. I need answers. I need to know what the hell's going on here. Ask. Help us find and stop this butcher, Barnabas. Carnifex Terribilis. What did you find out from scouring Fishmoth in its festival hours, Seeker? The butcher was definitely in cahoots with. The Esoteric Order of Dagon. I'm convinced he used them to raise some kind of sea creature, codenamed MCHK. The half Gufa. And what of its purpose? The meal. That's what they called it. These EOD kooks thought they were raising the sea monster as an edible tribute to Dagon. They trusted the butcher. Huh. He obviously took his meal, this MCHK, whatever it is, and, and escaped. Question is, where'd he go? Any ideas? Not exactly, but keep this in mind. Olmstein always watches, and always leaves something behind to push you in the right direction. Well, ain't that nice of him. There is this sign that's associated with Olmstein. Tell me what you think it means. Could be the visual representation of a formula, a constellation. Could be a map. Hmm, thanks. I'll give it some thought. I've come across terrible things in the butcher's pits. What were they? 
It is clear to me that Fishmouth holds more secrets than can be dug at in this small window of time we have, and time is not on our side. Not since we found that damn Necronomicon. Some use it to spawn horrible monsters. Some to make cats speak. Some might say it's the same thing. How do we fix that? What Ormstein allowed, Ormstein can undo. Find the enemy, thwart his plans, and Ormstein will reward you. I wish I had your confidence, Barnabas. I don't have time for this. Just a few more. I don't... I've gotta go. I gotta meet Buzz in peace and try to put the pieces together. The other guide you. Do your best to find out where the Butcher is headed and put an end to his plans, whatever they are. I will stay here and... Wait for a sign. See ya, Barney. Don't call me that. Hey, kids. He's back! Nice place you've got here, Don! Glad to see you made it all right, buddy. Scared the living daylights out of us. No offense, dude. None taken! Yeah, Fishmouth was interesting. Met your dad finally, peace. Oh yeah? Is he all right? He's good. He's in a steeple, waiting for a sign. Sounds like dad. Can we please skip the niceties and put our heads together? Right. I made my way into the butcher's laboratory. Ah! Sorry! Bad flashback! Would you please excuse me? Sure thing, Otis. Go get some rest. The butcher. He wasn't still there, was he? I just missed him. What did you find that could be relevant? MCHK seemed to be an important acronym. What's that about? I've got a theory. MC might stand for... Mind control. There was all kind of brain-related imagery in his lab. How else do you control a huge sea creature? As for HK... Hyperkraken. Mind-controlled Hyperkraken. There was a picture of a Kraken, one of a human, and one of a pair of dragon wings in his lab. That's gotta be it. That's what we're dealing with here. Sounds really scary, Don. Either way, he apparently used the cult to get the monster bred and fed, and then ran away with it to who knows where. The half goofa. What, what will he do with it? Huge biological weapon under your control. I can think of a number of things. Oh boy. We need to get this guy. That's great and all, but, you know, my problem? Remember what this is really all about? The Butcher and Olmstein? There's a connection there. We gotta stop always being one step behind them. The festival. Fishmouth really knows how to party. What I can say for sure is that the Esoteric Order's been brought down a few notches. And so is the Starry Knowledge Cult. Nice going, man! Wasn't me who did it. It was a short, weird little girl who really loves her fishies. That actually makes a lot of sense. Yeah, other than that, I'm afraid Fishmouth and its creepy inhabitants remain a mystery. For now. The stabilizing element, Olmstein's constant. What did that say again? A terrible storm and three bells ringing throughout its shell. Awaken the beast. What are your thoughts on it? The end of all this. What Peace said when I called you guys. It makes sense. I just don't know that I want all this to end with a beast awakening. None of us really do. I stand by my conviction. Just like the Necronomicon, this is all just ever-changing chaos. So Olmstein wrote the ending down and set it in stone. Wrote the ending? What does that even mean? He is not like us. Can't you grasp the concept of divinity? 
If he wrote it down, it will happen. Oh, man. Where are we on Olmstein's sign? I'm stumped. What do you think it could be? Uh, constellation? See, that was the first thing we thought of, but it doesn't match any known stars. Still feels like something viewed from above. Wait, I have an idea. Hand over that mouse buzz. Maybe it's a map. There was a bell in Paris. There was a bell in Fort Maris. Don, you said my dad's in a steeple in Fishmouth. There's a bell there, too. What do you know? It's Point Nemo! Point what? Earth's pole of inaccessibility. It's the one point in the ocean that's farthest from any land. There should be nothing there. Hmm. Maybe look it up in uh, recent news on that, uh, uh, the, th the thing there. Looking it up on the thing. Okay, what I'm finding are crazy conspiracy theories about expeditions to Point Nemo going back more than a century. Anything remotely recent? Decades ago, a ship called the Alert, rumored to be carrying a huge cargo of explosives, never returned apparently. Sounds uh, encouraging. So we've got three bells, plus Point Nemo. That's got to be it. We're going, right? Hold your horses, buddy. Say we go there. What do we do about the bells? I can get a hold of Vlad. I can find a way to reach Dad. I got Serge eating out of my palm, so I'm sure we can coordinate. Ring them all at once. We can awaken the beast, but do we want to? Or does that help the butcher? Think about it. If he ran away with it, it means that the butcher's in control of this monster. This beast, right? Just a theory, but these bells might snap the creature out of it. Yeah, three bells ringing thousands of miles away. Completely realistic. No, it makes a lot of sense, and it fits the constant. Let's get in touch with all three of them and tell them to, uh, wait for a sign. We're a creative bunch. We'll come up with something should we need to, right? Preparedness has always been our forte. What do I really have to lose at this point? The end of the world it is. It's just the farthest point from land. Doesn't really end there. It doesn't, huh? Tell me more. This is going to be one long trip. Ladies and gents, it's kind of crazy, but we're really here. As far away from civilization as humanly possible. Not just humanly. Oh, right. Three months worth of rent money says what we're looking for is on the top of that mountain over there. I don't know. Did you see that crazy looking beach? I think our best bet is to split up and- Search for clues? Well, yeah, actually. It might increase our chances of finding this butcher. Peace, how about we take the mountain? Well, Cat, I hope you brought sunblock, cause it's time to hit the beach. Buzz, don't make this worse than it has to be. I'm sorry, I'm... I'm... I'm, I'm nervous. Nervous? Okay, scared. I'm really, really freaking scared. Let's do this. And whoever finds the butcher first? Actually, I, I don't know. Uh, fingers crossed.
Point Nemo. Hopefully, it all ends here, once and for all. Is it me, or does this place seem off somehow? And for some reason, that huge, not-quite-full moon up there is particularly bothersome. Gibbous. What? Gibbous. Almost, but not quite fully revealed. It's what you call that kind of moon. Whatever you say, Madam Scientist. Let's just... Whoa! What? What is this? I don't know, but you look repulsive. What is this? What have I turned into? You sort of look like discarded deli meat slapped together. No, what? This is not me. You just got transformed, against your will, into something you despise. Sucks, huh? I'm an abomination, kitty. But I didn't even do anything. Oh, God. Oh, no. Do you think this is permanent? Apparently not. Oh! Oh, what now? What do I look like now? Um, basic? Blocky? Everything is squares! I'm squares! Ah! Whoa. Yeah, I kind of prefer the previous look, to be honest. What fresh hell? What even am I? Some kind of... Um... Uh, you're like, um... Uh, I give up. I feel a panic attack coming. This place is really doing a number on you. Wait! I'm back! Oh, praise the infinite universe, I am back! That was scary as... I hate to be the ever-cynical one, but I have a bad feeling. I think it's... What? Yep, it's cyclical. No, no, no! The bad news is, you seem to keep transforming. The good news, it's only happening to you. What can we do, Kid A? Suck it up and press on, Kerwin. <sighs> You're right. Let's keep going. Apparently, that's what they call a gibbous moon. Almost completely visible, but not quite. Bizarre, moss-covered monoliths are strewn all over this beach. Huh! Made it through. Come on, kid, eh? I can't pass through for some reason. Whoa! What the heck did you do, Kerwin? It worked! The Necronomicon actually worked on you! Did you think I wasn't going through enough already? Look at me! I know, I know, but this might be helpful. Uh... I hate you, Buzz. Good to know you stay the same, regardless of definition. Oh no, this is insulting. I don't know, you actually look kind of cute. Shut up, you monster.
Well, at least you can turn me back to normal. So at least we're putting this insanity to use somehow. Just keep going, please. That's where we need to make it to. Man, I hope Dawn and Peace have it easier than us. It's like a... like this stone thing with holes in it. It's called a steel. How do you know these things? I can't reach that high up. Hey, can you try and see if that thing activates? I don't think I have enough limbs. Hey, can you... I do Hey, can you Impulsive, but pretty darn useful. Looks like a statue of two strange looking beings. They're creeping me out, I don't want to. A pretty badly damaged statue of a humanoid holding a sword. Uh, I don't know how. I think she's helped enough in here. Half of a carved out globe on some kind of pedestal. I have no use for it. Where have I seen this branch before? Ugh, it's killing me. It looks pretty firmly attached to the spheroid. Oh, what the heck is this now? Much like myself, everything is shifting between these four states. I'm cool with one of them. Uh, 
A magic looking circle. It's on that disgusting, throbbing island there. Doesn't seem to do anything by itself. I think we'll have to work together on this one, Kidae. All right, I trust you. I'm officially in full collab mode. Oh, I think I got it. I think I got it. I still don't get it. It's the states. The states need to fit. Come on, we got this. <sighs> Great. A massive slab of stone is blocking my progress. I don't stand a chance of even budging it. Wait, that's right! Painted on the wall right across from the dorm! What the heck? I'll just pick it up.
Jide! Are you dead? Are you alive in there? Still kicking, Schrodinger. Oh, God! Are you okay? Can you breathe? What do we do? Yeah, I can breathe all right. There are mechanisms inside this thing. Well, that's good to hear, because I see nothing on my end here. We can't let this slow us down, Buzz. Try and figure out your way forward while I work on this. On it. Someone's earthly remains. Someone who never made it These out of here. These are the final words of Captain Johansson of the Alert. I don't have any kind of recording device. I only hope this ungodly place with all its strained magic will somehow retain my last utterances. Whoever you are, if you can hear this, know that this wretched place you've made your way to must be wiped off the face of the earth. That is what me and my shipmates on the Alert came here to do. Once we deciphered the sign, we left Oslo for Point Nemo with a ship full of explosives and fuses hell-bent on destroying this island where the evil book is at its most powerful. I won't waste my breath on my exploits concerning the Necronomicon. If you are here, you must be aware of the generations it has tricked into playing its awful roles and then led here to be made to disappear. When we embarked on this journey, we knew full well of the dozens that have failed before us. However, we have accomplished more than any of them. This horrible island is surrounded by active underwater volcanoes, and I can only hope that we've managed to rig them all to explode to trigger their eruption. We have started with the detonator on the highest mountain peak and worked our way down. It did not come without sacrifices. The crew was driven crazy by the monstrosity of what they kept transforming into. By the time we were setting charges underwater, myself and first mate Green were the only sane men left. That's when we saw it. My god, we had found more than we had bargained for. The thing that should not be. We were driven mad with fear. I fled in terror and somehow clawed my way into this hall. I am probably on the side of the island we had not explored and I see no way out of this hall where my bones will find their final resting place. I can only hope that Green set all the fuses before he lost his mind. Or his life. If someone ever hears this, the detonator on the highest peak, bury this place and the horror that slumbers beneath. Oh, no. Some kind of knot inside this big stone slab. I've rearranged it. Nothing changed. I've rearranged it. Nothing changed. Desperate times call for desperate measures. Kitty, can you hear me? I've opened this door, we can keep going now. You can keep going. This contraption is way more complicated than I had anticipated. Go on ahead without me, Buzz. What do you mean? I can't just leave you behind trapped like this. Didn't you hear that ghost thing? All the volcanoes around here are rigged to blow up. Just go, Buzz. Find the Butcher. Don and Peace might need you. I'll be okay. I'll try to make my way out of this trap. Kitty, I can't just go already and be careful numbskull kitty i love you get the f out of here kerwin whoa i did not expect this here what in heaven's name is this place? How can all this be here? It's a book about ancient folk tales. It's open at Transylvania, Romania. Huh. 
This page describes the Muara and Azor myth. Weird. Looks like there used to be pictures in these, but they're gone. I'm leaving everything as it is. This is straight up bizarre. There are framed pictures of some objects I've come across ever since this whole adventure began, like the exploding package and Priscilla's doll, but also of others that I don't recognize. I'm leaving everything as it is. A framed picture of an unusual crystal. I don't recall ever seeing this before. I'm leaving everything as it is. This looks just like Olmstein's sign, except there's a crazy amount of lines connecting tens and tens of dots all over the place. I know what that is. Why it's framed and on display, that's a different story. Huge porthole looking out into a greenish abyss. There's something off about it, though. Whoa, the title of the book is A Storm Over Fishmouth. What? Should I look deeper into this? While on an antiquarian tour of an isolated fishing village called Fishmouth, a man called Robert Olmstein has an unexpected revelation. Olmstein? Robert Olmstein? What does this mean? Let's see what this page says. It had all started with the strange fishiness of the local populace, but now it was clear. There was more, so much more to this. It was as if whispers of dark ancient legends, revelations of unfathomable ancestry, madcap globetrotting adventures, and the ever-present threat of slumbering horror, were all coming together into one blood-red line under the watchful eye of the Necronomicon. Holy hardcover hermetical history, I've stumbled onto something big! I'll just keep reading, I guess. These stories are too dark and beautiful not to come to life, uttered Olmstein with an enigmatic smile. Even the one ending with this world's complete destruction? There is no story if there is nothing at stake, came Olmstein's answer. The roles are set, the actors will come and go, and we will be here, watching. And controlling it? Sometimes, when the time is right. Why not make it always? Always? Where is the fun in that? And he let go of the book, watching it drop in slow motion into the crowd below. The end. Whoa, the title of the book is A Storm Over Fishmouth. What? Should I look deep? It's the Earth, with a moon on a rotating arm attached to it. Wait a minute, what the... There's long red string hanging from the moon like it was cut or something. And I'm seeing dozens of shorter threads hanging from places all over the globe. The greenish light coming in from the portal is only illuminating three quarters of the moon. I'm leaving everything as it is. This book is called The Case of Basil Dexter Kerwin. Basil Kerwin, a bookish nobody counting the days away behind his office desk, unveils a century-spanning relationship between himself and a wizard named Corvinus, and tries to avoid slowly transforming into something he detests. The pages are all crossed out and scratched over. It's hard to make out anything more. Cor Corvinus. Oh no, I'm starting to feel faint. I've had enough. I'd better move on. This book is called The Case of Basil Kerwin, a bookish nobody, unveils a scent and tr the page. Do I really want to go already? I haven't looked at everything in here, and who knows if I'll ever get a second chance. 
I'm out of here. Dawn and Peace need me. Goodbye, strange room. Like a moth to the flame, you finally made it! The carrier. Right on time. Buzz, turn around! Run! No, no, no. That is where you are wrong, little zealous fly. It is not him carrying the book. It was always the book carrying him here. Nonsense! We were always right on your tail, butcher. Oh, because you chose to, right? Adorable. But enough about that. Hand over the book, carrier. Or what? Or I constrict those electricity fields and zap your friends just like the bugs that they are. Not until you tell me what you want it for. Oh, come on. What difference does it make to you? This will all play out as it must, regardless. Let us stop wasting time. I can just read a spell and end you. We both know it does not work that way. It already worked once. Do I have to spell everything out for you? It worked once because it was written that it would. You had no say in this. The book chose the role, and now it returns to me for its final performance. You're insane. Bob Olmstein, or whatever he's calling himself. We're all just actors in his little production. Until you hand the Necronomicon over, that is. Production? Like a play? You have not caught on yet? Tough. I have no time to lay it out for you dimwits. Book. Now. You owe us an explanation. I owe you nothing. But it really is simple, little fly. You are all prisoners in Olmstein's web of fiction. While I will claw my way out of it. So what's the book for? A fine seeker you turned out to be. It is the magic wand in the illusionist's toolkit. This thing called Olmstein likes his stories. He simply set loose the magic wand into our boring world and watched it turn myth into reality. So many possible storylines he planted seeds for. The carrier, the seeker, the protector, the beast. Same roles, different actors. So much more fun when you defy all laws of nature and existence! Give me the book! Planted seeds? I need to know. Is he divine in nature? <laughs> Forgive the cliché laugh, but the idiotic question warranted it. What difference does it make? What will you use the book for? The crowning achievement of my life's work with flesh and blood and metal. Breathing life into one of Olmstein's favorite characters. The half kufa The meal those esoteric order idiots thought they'd sacrifice to Dagon? It goes by a much simpler name. Ya Cthulhu! He who dreams at the bottom of the sea. Awaiting his awakening. The perfect triangle. The huge pair of wings you dug up in Foreign Maris. The first angle. Wings of the dragon. The oversized kraken you raised in Fishmouth. The second angle. Head of the kraken. You. The third angle. Iron will of man. You're just mind-controlling some poor Frankenstein creature, you psycho! Part man, part kraken, part dragon. Made one by the Necronomicon. And now, the moon is right!
Why here? Why is this place special? If the Necronomicon's really related to the moon, it must be where the book is at its most powerful right now. This is where all his possible realities converge. Where I step out from between them. The moon is right? Oh, Olmstein. Fine bunch of actors you were dealt this time. They have seen all and understood nothing. No, no, wait. Olmstein, the moon, the Necronomicon, the Kraken. I think I'm starting to understand. Are you now? Olmstein is plain evil. Wrong. No, wait! Olmstein wanted the monster here. And why is that? Because every good story needs a monster. A monster that the heroes can smite using the awesome power of the Necronomicon! There is just one little detail that is off. We're early, aren't we? Indeed. Only when the moon is full does Olmstein regain control over the Necronomicon. He set it up that way, and it is beautiful. Until then, the book is useless to you, while I... Long have I studied its wicked pages. I know how to rein its chaotic majesty in. Oh no. His eye in the sky, not yet fully open to our doings. Praise the gibbous moon. My time to strike. You played us. Not quite. The story would have gathered us all here nonetheless. Just a while later. Congratulations on overcoming all those obstacles so quickly. You should have taken your time. So Olmstein is un... Uh... Impress me. What is Olmstein? He's an alien. And the last person who'd believe in this mumbo-jumbo, but even I know. What looks like magic to us is most probably just technology we don't understand. I have really had enough talk now. Last warning before they die. Okay, okay, here. Welcome back, old friend. So now what? You'll just become... C Cthulhu! Devourer of souls! An end to this wretched joke of a world! Destroy the world, that's it? You either haven't thought this through or you're just bad crap nuts! Negotiating terms, little fly. Yes, they're in control right now, up there in the moon, but once I stamp this world out, when just me and them are the ones left standing... What? What happens? Appreciation for a mortal that became a god! For the pawn that broke the rules and checkmated the king! I have created life before! And I will destroy and then repopulate this world the way I see fit! Omsin will never allow it! Start over from scratch, with an invincible god of death ruling over darkness? Breeding my own ruthless kind! Stamping out the weak! Nothing but chaos for years and years to come? That is not his kind of story. Him and his kind will just abandon this wretched earth. Move on to the next toy and leave this one to me. Time to become Cthulhu. Kitty! Shh, shut up, dummy. How do I stop those force fields? Forget those! All the underground volcanoes around this peak are rigged to explode! The detonators got to be around here somewhere, look for that! Blow up volcanoes, awaken beasts for mind control. Got it! On it! This whole place is wired! 
I'll bet it's wired to blow stuff up. Quickly, hook up the detonator. It dies tonight. That's it. That's the detonator. Set up. What? No! No! The... The detonator! That's it. There's the detonator. Kidda, right below you. All right. Let's hope it makes a big enough splash. Not so fast, you verbose vermin. Unless you want to fry, you are not touching that detonator. No, no, no! Feel that energy crackling in the air? I've reached the final three phases of the incantation! World, prepare to meet Cthulhu! We gotta do something! Yeah! Yeah! Cthulhu Fatigan! Damn it! Damn it! Go come and Yore Bithikasiyaha! Omsin! Where are you? Taranak Shog! Taranak Sia! Yeah! Yeah! Cthulhu Fatiga! It's the detonator! Our one chance to send a signal to Vlad and Serge and Barnabas. But it's engulfed in deadly electricity. Go can't reach it! She's the only one that can move, but... No, there's gotta be another way. That's the one way out of here. I can't do that. I'm pinned down. Go back the way you came, kitty. It's the only way out. I've failed you. I've dragged you along all over the place and achieved nothing. I ruined your life. I couldn't change you back. I lost the Necronomicon. And now this lunatic might turn into a god of death and destruction. You're innocent. Just run. Run as fast as you can. Now, Buzz, it isn't easy to admit this, but I've discovered some surprising things about myself since this all started. Run away? Sorry, but that's... Not my style. Time for... Well, no time left. Bye.
not the soulless beast she wanted us to think she was. We're all gonna miss her, buddy. It's as if time stood still for her.